There is a demon immortal pavilion in the mountains and three men are standing and there is a table and two are standing together while one is standing behind the table, one of them asks him that Sohan, must you leave, he replies with yes, his name is Jean Sohan, one of the four great demons, Venom Demon says to Sohan that it's been ten years since you came here, do you think the sword dance troupe you were in still exists? Venom Demon's twin immortal physician is also standing beside him and he says to Sohan that like the Venom Demon said, the sword dance troupe is probably no longer around because the unorthodox sex won't leave them be, he replies, there's a high chance that that's what happened, Venom Demon asks him that if you already know that, then why would you bother looking for a group that might not exist, Sohan replies that the sword dance troupe took me in as an orphan and I spent 14 years with them, I'll repay their kindness and all grudges if there are any, Venom smirks and asks repay grudges, he also says that I remember telling you that your martial arts aren't complete yet, are you sure you want to do that in your current state, he replies that just as you've said, my martial arts aren't complete yet but I'm still a disciple of the Venom Demon and Immortal Physician, so what do I have to fear, Venom Demon smiles and says that you sure are good at talking, Venom Demon asks to Immortal Physician that isn't that so, he replies that that's not surprising, this kid has always been good with words, we expected this too, didn't we, let's not stop him anymore, Placing a covered blade on the table, Venom Demon says to Sohan that take this with you, he looks at him and is surprised to see and says that this is, isn't this the dual crescent blade that you used, I can't accept this, he replies that take it, I've got no use for it anymore and it's been a long time since it was used. Immortal Physician then offers him a white hand fan saying that I'll give you this then, take this with you and it'll definitely be of help to you on your journey, he is looking at those two things that are lying on the table, Immortal says to him that Sohan, the Jianghu is a dangerous place, it's one where even the strong can fall and bear in mind that you need to always be careful and plan your moves carefully, Sohan replies that yes master, I'll make sure to do that, Immortal says go on, we won't be sending you off, we'll wait to hear of your great deeds when rumors of it spread within the Jianghu, both of them leave and now he is standing alone in the pavilion and a cool breeze is blowing, his hair and clothes are also moving in the air, he has beautiful blue eyes, he is standing in the pavilion, looking at the sky, he moves his fingers in a specific pattern and makes a punch with one hand holding it in the other and bows down saying thank you for everything. The blade and white fan are lying on the table before him, cool breeze is blowing throughout the village, Sohan reaches Eastern Dark Street, he is wearing a hat, he is standing at the door of the Lunar Dusk Pavilion, he is also wearing a backpack, looking at the door, he says to himself that this was where the sword dance troupe was at, he remembers about his childhood memories when he was with her mother he can hear the giggles and laughs and when his mother asked her that what do you want to eat, and when she said to him that stope right there, Sohan. When she asked him that Sohan, how's my sword dance and he replied that it's really cool, when father asked him that are you hungry and he replied yes, while remembering about those beautiful memories, he's thinking about those people that I wonder if everyone's fine, where did they all go, looking at the surroundings he's wondering that the surroundings have changed too, he looks at a place and is trying to figure out that Crest Inn is the only place that's still here, I'll go ask around in that inn for now, he goes to that place, everyone is busy gossiping and talking, different tables and chairs are present, people are sitting, busy talking, glancing at the interior of the place, he is wondering that the interior hasn't changed at all, I wonder if the owner is still the same one, he goes inside but everyone is watching at him with strange eyes, he is walking between the rows of the people with his head down, he sits on one chair and removes his hat, he feels that everyone is watching him, they all look strange, he looks at them, looking at those people he smiles a little wondering that the intense atmosphere is still the same, he places his hat on the table, a waiter comes to him and welcomes him warmly and says that welcome, what may I serve you, hearing his voice, he is wondering that he knows him, he's thinking that Dogon, I'm sure his name is Dogon, the waiter is confused at his judgment and Sohan is thinking that judging by his expressions, it seems like he doesn't recognize me, Sohan orders one chicken comb noodles, the waiter replies understood meanwhile in his head, he's thinking that judging by his clothes, he seems to be an outsider, the waiter is worried because of the situation and thinking that looks like there'll be a big fight soon and I hope they'd take it outside though, a group of three people is sitting at a table, one of them calls him saying that a black outfit with a black sheath, do you know what that means, the other says that, there's no way that you don't know that black means challenging others in this place though, Sohan is wondering that what's going on here and replies politely that I forgot about that, I don't mean anything by wearing this and it's the only set of clothes that I have so I hope you will be understanding, they are all angry and one of them says to him that arrogant bastard, look us in the eyes while replying, the other with the brown eyes says forget it, he asks Sohan so that means you wore black. Here despite knowing what it meant, what are you doing here, 
while holding a glass in his hand. Sohan replies that I don't particularly have a reason, I'm simply visiting my hometown after a long time, one of them asks your hometown, he also says that I've never seen you here before though, where did you live? Sohan replies that I grew up opposite Crest Inn, he asks that you mean the Lunar Dusk Pavilion, what, you were born in brothel. He smirks and says you don't look like it though, the other man. With him says that arrogant prick, how dare you act that way despite coming from a brothel, they are making fun of him but he replies politely that while the Lunar Dusk Pavilion is in that place right now, it used to be where the Mystic Lunar Dance Troupe was, that brown-eyed man replies that the Mystic Lunar Dance Troupe, are you talking about the Mystic Lunar Entertainment Troupe, Sohan replies it's not an entertainment troupe, it's the Mystic Lunar Dance Troupe, they are all looking at him. One of them says that the Sword Dance Troupe is basically an entertainment troupe so why make such a big fuss, in any case it's been a while since I heard that name, the other man with him replies that yeah, I still think about them from time to time, Sohan asks from them that do you know the Sword Dance Troupe, that man smiles and says that of course, I don't just know them, I even miss them, now that you've mentioned them. Sohan looks at him and says that's great, I'll treat you to a drink. That man asks that you wanna buy me a drink, pointing at a chair near him, Sohan says yes please take a seat, offering him a seat, he gives order saying one bottle of dew wine here please, meanwhile on their table, the one guy says to him that brother there's no need to do this, leave it be, that brown eyed guy takes his weapon with him and gets up from his chair saying that he wants to buy me a drink, it's not right of me to reject it since we're of the Jianghu, he goes and sits with Sohan. Placing his weapon at the side, Sohan casts a look at his weapon while looking at him that man is wondering that he's unfazed despite seeing my weapon, what's with this confidence he has, is he someone who has a backer, in that case robbing him would make things complicated, he is sitting cross-armed and asks a question from Sohan that where are you from, it seems like you're a disciple from a pretty well-established sect. Sohan replies that I don't belong to any sects and I don't really belong to any groups either, touching his beard, he smiles mockingly and wonders that he doesn't belong to any sects or groups, is he just a mere vagrant, this is awesome, he is sitting with his one leg over the other and says loudly to Dogon that Dogon, what are you doing, bring the wine over quickly. Dogon replies that yes sir I'm on my way, Sohan is thinking that he really is Dogon, Dogon brings drink and two glasses in a try and serves them, pouring a drink in his glass Sohan says to that man have a drink please, think of this as the price for talking with me, he asks price for talking, what do you want to talk about, Sohan replies I'd like to hear about the sword dance troupe, he is holding a glass of wine in his hand and takes a sip from it, drinking wine, he asks sword dance troupe, why do you want to hear about them, pouring the drink in his glass, he says that after all we were famous on the eastern dark street, naturally I am curious since they are not here anymore, the man smashes the glass on the table and says that seeing as how you know about stuff like that you really must be from here, the mystic lunar dance troupe, it's really been a while since I've heard that name and do you know about the revolving blood clan too? Sohan replies that yes I do, Sohan's thinking. That the revolving blood clan was one of the sects that acted up in this region, the man tells him that ten years ago the revolving blood clan tried to lay their hands upon the sword dance troupe. You know about how the women of the sword dance troupe were known to be beautiful right, right, the revolving blood clan rules over the eastern dark street now but this wasn't the case back then, the sword dance troupe hung on doggedly but the revolving blood clan created an excuse to attack the sword dance troupe. They tried to frame the sword dance troupe for poisoning one of their own to death that's how they started fighting and the sword dance troupe fell in the end, Sohan replies that if. So what about the people of the sword dance troupe, did they all die back then, the man replies that no the revolving blood clan's leader dragged the woman that he had his eyes on over, to the revolving blood clan, although I don't know if they are still alive now, Sohan is thinking deeply about the revolving blood clan, that man is trying to figure out that what happened to that boy suddenly and says to himself that this fellow. Something about him just changed, I think it's best for me to leave him alone, thinking this he says to him that I've finished my drink it's time for me take my leave, he stands up from his chair and was about to leave when he said to him that wait a minute, he asks him that are you from the revolving blood clan, three of them looked at him with shock, the one with the grey hair and brown eyes asks what, that man with brown eyes is thinking that this punk, is he related to that incident, he gets confused and starts to sweat and says to him that I don't know what you're talking about, none of us here are from the revolving blood clan, that brown-eyed man's fellow gets up from their chairs and that brown-haired one says to him that brother what are you doing right now, he replies that Jegwang you don't have the right to speak here, Jegwang is infuriated at Sohun's behavior and asks that how can I not interfere when that arrogant bastard is acting up, he is confused at his behavior while Jegwang says to Sohun that look here I know some stuff, about the sword dance troupe too, hearing this, 
that man is shocked and worried that he was about to reveal the truth but he does not listen to him and Sohan asks him a question that do you know who Duyang is? That man is angry and shouts saying shut that mouth of yours but he doesn't stop and continues saying to Sohan that she didn't get caught up in that incident because she was out that day and thanks to that we were able to bring her to a quiet place, the brown-eyed man is extremely angry at him and gets up from his chair in such anger that his chair falls down on the floor and says with anger that I said shut that mouth of yours. His bald fellow asks him big brother why have you been acting like this and the other asks him that don't tell me you're scared of that guy, he replies to them that just keep your mouth shut you bastards, let's talk later for now, Sohan calls that girl's name while he was pouring a wine in his glass and says that Duyang, she was really a beautiful older sister of mine. He looks at Sohan with confused expressions while Jiegwang smiles and says to him that you know here she's quite beautiful. Just like you said and that bald man with him says that the women that the revolving blood clan's leader dragged away were more beautiful though, Sohan is pouring a wine in a glass and that man is looking at the drop of wine dripping from the bottle into the glass and as soon as drop is about to fall into the cup that man is thinking that something's ominous about that guy and says to him hey and ponders that he is too ominous. As the drop fells into the wine in the glass few drops come out of wine in the air and that man says to Sohan that these guys are just drunk and talking nonsense, one of them replies that big brother what are you talking about we haven't drunk any alcohol today, he feels that something bad is going to happen and his eyes are full of fear and worry. He is standing at his place while something suddenly hits both of them in their heads and their blood drops falls on his back so he looks behind him and is stunned to see them lying on the floor half dead with the chopsticks in their heads and their mouth opened and Sohan is sitting at his place on his chair in the dark, that man looks at his friends and says chopsticks meanwhile he was worried about them he feels something in his belly as he looks at it, it was his weapon which Sohan threw at him and blood is coming out from that and he immediately falls on the ground. Sohan is holding a glass of wine while remembering about the past memory when Venom Demon said to him that Sohan do you think that the sword dance troupe you were previously in still exists, while remembering this Sohan closes his hand and hits with his fist on the table, he is infuriated and his eye color changes from blue to purple and he says damn unorthodox bastard. All of them are lying dead on the floor and the blood is coming out from their bodies while Sohan is sitting peacefully on the chair meanwhile Dogon comes and looks at their bodies, standing there he is sad and thinking that Jechiel and his clique simply died helplessly and he looks at Sohan assuming that he would have died and says to himself that I thought he would have lost. Sohan looks at him and calls his name Dogon while Dogon is shocked to hear his name and asks pardon, do you need anything? Dogon is standing before him in full confusion and fear. Sohan smiles a little and his eyes have transformed to their normal color and Dogon says to him that come on you still don't recognize me? Dogon is confused at his question and asks sorry meanwhile in his head he's thinking about him that I don't recognize him, do I know him and I doubt I'd forget someone who looks so eye-catching though. Sohan smiles and telling him to wait he shows him his childhood's face and as Dogon sees his face, he asks that are you sleepyhead? Sohan replies that yeah that's what people used to call me because I was sleeping all the time. Dogon is happy to see him and says that I can't believe you've changed so much where were you all this time? We thought you had died because you suddenly disappeared why did you disappear without a word and what have you been doing? Sohan is bit confused at his questions and thinking about Venom Demon and his twin he says to himself that I suffered hell I was kidnapped by my two masters they were fascinated with my body which is immune to poisons and they experimented on me in various ways. He thinks about his masters that how they tested his body's immune system against the poisons by letting him sit in the poison pot and by placing poisons on his different body parts. Thinking about all this he says to Dogon that well I did various thing and Dogon replies that is that so whatever it was I'm glad you're alive the sword dance troupe looked all over for you all over when you suddenly disappeared and Sohan asks that the sword dance troupe looked for me? Dogon replies that of course they searched high and low for you and they looked for you whenever they could before the sword dance troop was destroyed, they worried about you. Looking at his facial expressions Dogon assumed that he is angry and his eye color is changing so he hurriedly said sorry and Sohan looks at Jechiel's body that is lying on the floor and asks him that Dogon was what they said true? The things about the sword dance troop. Dogon replies yeah, they're all true and hearing this Sohan closes his eyes with utter sadness and he puts his hand in the pocket of his coat and takes out money and says to Dogon that I need to get going now this is for the food. Dogon is stunned to see that huge amount and asks him what why are you giving me so much money? Looking at the bodies of Jechiel and his friend Sohan says that please help to clean up this place and Dogon replies with bit worry that alright don't worry as you already know this is pretty common in this place and Sohan replies with thanks see you around. He was about to leave when Dogon asks him that it's already late though you're leaving now where are you going to sleep? 
So Hun replies that at the Lunar Dusk Pavilion while Dogon is shocked to hear that he asks what, the Revolving Blood Clan looks after that place. So Hun replies that all the more reason I have to go there then and I need to pat them back for what they did to the Sword Dance Troop. Dogon is worried about him after he comes to know about his intentions and says that it's impossible for you to do it alone the Revolving Blood Clan is untouched on the Eastern Dark Street. Sohan asks him that Dogon do you remember the sword dance I used to practice a lot because of performances. Dogon starts remembering about that and says of course I do it's because you were so young but you never missed out on a day of training why are you asking so suddenly? Placing his hand at the door of the hotel he looks at him and says that I'll show you that sword dance after I've taken care of the revolving blood clan thanks for worrying about me let's meet again and Dogon smiles and says that alright come back anytime, I'll always be here and Sohan replies with okay and leaves that place. The two people are standing at the door of the Lunar Dusk Pavilion meanwhile Sohan comes to them in full white clothes and has a white fan in his hand. He is looking very handsome and one of them welcomes him saying welcome may I know if there's anyone that you're looking for specifically? Sohan replies that I heard Chaol Yakran and Wunhai are all quite decent but the man is confused at his answer and says pardon none of the ladies go by those names though. Hearing his answer Sohan is wondering that seeing as how he doesn't know their names are they not here and thinking this, he says to him that I'll just get other ladies if they aren't here and he welcomes him saying that please head inside first the performance is just about to get interesting. Sohan asks about performance and he replies yes. The man takes him to inside where people are performing and producing the music with different musical instruments and the audience is clapping and enjoying the performance. The man tells him about the Lunar Dusk Pavilion's famous dance Lunar Dusk Dance Troupe while Sohan is hearing unattentively but when he hears about the Lunar Dusk Dance Troupe, he becomes attentive and is trying to figure out his words. The two beautiful women are performing a dance and they are wearing beautiful clothes. One is wearing pink clothes and other is wearing light blue dress and they have swords in their hands. They are performing a specific type of dance and are performing together on the stage. Sohan looks at their dance and wondering that are they imitating the performance of the sword dance troupe with those lousy abilities of theirs? A man comes and says to him that sir that person is the Lunar Dusk Pavilion's owner please refrain from staring at him like that hearing this Sohan asks that guy is the Lunar Dusk Pavilion's owner and he replies that yes so please refrain from staring at him so openly. Hearing this he stares at the Lunar Dusk Pavilion's owner once again and starts heading toward some place while that man looks at him and says that sir that's not where you're supposed to go. The two guards are standing there and as they see him heading towards them one of them stops him with his hand and says that stop right here you can't go up here but Sohan replies that I came to meet with the pavilion owner. That man asks that the pavilion owner did you make an appointment with him, Sohan replies with no and the man is shocked at this and asks that do you think he's someone that anyone can just meet as they please? Lunar Dusk Pavilion's Phantom Sword Squad Captain Chu Sayek is coming downstairs and asks what's the commotion about. He is holding a little weapon in his hand and is wearing brown clothes. The man says to him that this person wants to meet with the pavilion owner but he hasn't made an appointment. The man is little bit confused and asks rudely that he wants to meet the pavilion owner. Sohan is looking at him with full confidence and that man is also looking at him and after a while he says to him that just go back home if you're drunk if you don't want to die from creating a commotion that is but Sohan replies to him that is it's so hard to meet with the pavilion owner for a while. That man looks at him with anger and calls him bastard while the pavilion owner was looking at them standing there and says to captain that forget it there's no need to kick up a fuss, let him meet me since he's here to do that and orders that send him to my room so that man replies with yes sir. Passing through the corridor Sohan is walking behind that captain and the long rows of men are standing on each side of the corridor and they are standing in still positions as statues. That man takes him to the owner's room where owner is sitting with two girls by his sides and the food is served on the table and they are standing in front of him and he says to owner that I brought him here. So Hun without taking any permission goes with full arrogance and sits on a bench while the owner is wondering that just why the hell is he so arrogant I agreed to meet him since he seemed different, is he from a renowned martial sect or a renowned clan and thinking this he says to him that I'm not sure why you're here to look for me but let's have a drink while we talk. The woman with pink clothes sits by his side and serves him wine and he was taking a glass from the table when the owner says here and they start drinking wine while drinking wine he looks at Sohan and thinking about him that fool I can't believe you drank wine that's given to you without any suspicions is he just a kid that doesn't know how the world works, I guess I was worried over nothing. After drinking wine, he put the glass on the table as soon as he put that glass after finishing the drink his eyes turned into purple color so he wonders about them that these bastards they poisoned the wine. 
the poison starts to spread in his chest and his body color starts to change into purple. The pavilion owner smirks and asks him that how is it do you like it but Sohan also smiles and replies nicely that it's decent and also says that it's so good I'd like to have another cup. That man smiles cunningly and says to him that you know your wine, have one more cup but in his mind, he was thinking that he truly is a foolish one. The girl in green and white clothes serves him another glass of wine while he asks him that so you're here to look for me why are you here? He is asking questions while Sohan is busy drinking another glass of wine and after drinking he is holding a glass in his hand and replies that why else? Of course it's because I've got business with you. Looking at him the owner is thinking that how arrogant for someone who's about to die. Bowing his head down he says to him before that let's get something straight and saying this, he says to him with his poisoned purple eyes that you dare poison the wine while the owner is wondering that how did he know there's poison when it's supposed to be colorless and odorless well since he's already drank it it's too late for him even if he's realized it anyways. He laughs and asks that how did you find that and Sohan replies with full attitude that how would I not know since I've tasted it. He looks at him with full anger and calls him arrogant bastard and thinking that now that he's drank the poison, he wouldn't be able to last long. He looks at him and orders the girl to leave the room and she replies with yes pavilion owner. Both of them get up and leaves the room and now joining his hands finger together he says to him that I hope you understand I need to be careful since a stranger suddenly wants to meet me you don't need to be worried, I might give you the antidote depending on how you behave. Sohan smiles and says that I don't need the stupid antidote but he asks him that you don't need the antidote stop this useless act of yours that attitude of yours isn't helping you in this situation. Placing his one hand on his leg Sohan replies that acting my ass now then is it my turn to make a move saying this his eyes became red. The owner is confused and says what? Saying this Sohan stands up from his place and his shadow can be seen. Suddenly someone falls on the ground and owner is shocked to hear the noises coming from the outside and asks that what's this? The other man also asks that what happened outside but suddenly something starts to stuck in his throat and he holds his neck with his hand and his body turns into purple color while looking at him the owner asks that Chu Sayek what the hell just happened. Chu Sayek's eyes turns red and white liquid is coming out from his mouth and he says that it's poison and the owner is stunned to hear this and asks poison? What nonsense is that we're the ones that poisoned him saying this he also fells on the ground and the white liquid is also coming out from his mouth meanwhile Sohan is sitting peacefully with his red eyes and has a fan in his hand and says to them that I'm the one who released the poison. The owner asks what did you say? He replies please understand I too need to be careful when I'm meeting a stranger don't I? He is sitting with his one leg over the other and everyone else in the corridor in also dead. Purple light disappears and his eye color also changes, he is holding a white fan in his hand that immortal physician gave him. Meanwhile the white liquid is coming out from the mouth of the owner. And thinking that when the hell did he use poison and his eyes are turning red. Sohan closes the white fan putting it in his pocket and stands up from his place. When the owner says to him that wait a minute, what's the reason for doing this, I've never met you before so what grudge do you have against me? So Sohan replies to his question that you're the one who tried to poison me first. He is standing while the owner is on the floor looking at his feet, so Sohan bows down to talk to him and says that if you got caught trying to poison me then you need to die, am I wrong? His eyes turn to purple again and the owner is looking at him with his red eyes and says to him that if you kill me do you think the revolving blood clan will let you go? Hearing this Sohan asks him that the revolving blood clan? And he replies to him that yeah, I belong to the revolving blood clan and so does the Lunar Dusk Pavilion if you stand down now I won't tell the Revolving Blood Clan about this matter what do you think? And Sohan is thinking about his question. While looking at him the owner is thinking that he looks like he came to a foreign land to create trouble without knowing anything, I'm sure he wouldn't dare to move recklessly after hearing about the Revolving Blood Clan, as he is thinking this, Sohan says to him that the Mystic Lunar Dance Troupe. It's a name you haven't heard in a while right? The owner is wondering that why is he suddenly mentioning the Mystic Lunar Dance Troupe. But Sohan's eyes changes their color to pink and says to the owner that the Sword Dance Troupe was originally located here before the Lunar Dusk Pavilion came along. Sohan is standing before the owner but the captain is lying behind him and is looking at them and gets up holding his sword in his hand thinking that this is my chance while he's not paying attention to me, and thinking this, he points his weapon towards him but Sohan looks at him with the side eye and places his hand on his weapon which he has tied with his waist. As he touches his sword the captain cannot even move his hand and thinking that what was with that impact he didn't even pull out his weapon, I thought he wasn't paying attention to me in the first place he's a martial master that I'm no match for even if I want to attack him again if I make any reckless moves. 
And Sohan says to him that was a pretty good attack but if you attack me again it won't end the same way anymore. Chu Sayek is wondering that pretty good attack. Damn it I'm totally being looked down upon. Meanwhile Sohan is talking to him the owner finds the situation pretty favorable and takes out his sword to attack on him but seeing him Sayek is thinking about his but owner is thinking that great job Chu Sayek thanks to you I see an opening. Thinking this he points a knife towards him saying I'll finish this. The same purple light starts coming out from Sohan's body and his dress start to flip in the air and the owner's body become blue all of a sudden and blood comes out from his mouth and body and he says that how could this be. Saying this he falls on the floor in upside position and Sohan and Chu Sayek are looking at him and Sayek is both confused and worried at the same time while Sohan looks at him and asks him that did you say your name was Chu Sayek if you want to become like him then attack me again. So he replies that I won't attack you. And Sohan replies that well if you say so. Chu Sayek is standing behind him and Sohan again sits back on his place while Sayek is looking at him thinking that we should have known that we're no match for him when the poison didn't work and there's that brazen behavior and rude tone. He's more like a villain than someone of the orthodox sections. The owner of the pavilion is lying dead on the floor between both of them Sohan is sitting while Sayek is standing before him and Sohan says to him that as of this moment I'm taking over the lunar dusk pavilion I'll need your cooperation for a peaceful takeover right dot and Sayek replies to his question by saying will you spare me? He replies that depends on what you do. He asks him that what do I need to do? His eyes turn back to their normal color and he says to him that say that you'll do anything that I say. Sayek is a bit confused at this and says to him understood. And Sohan replies that but we'll have to take care of when you tried ambushing me from behind. Saying this he takes out something like a little blue ball and throws it towards him which he catches with his one hand and Sohan orders him to eat that. Sayek looks at him and asks what is this? And Sohan replies that what else of course it's a poison how am I supposed to trust you? Sayek is looking at the pill in his hand and is thinking that damn it if I don't eat this now I'll be killed on the spot. And looks at Sohan and saying damn it, he eats that pill and swallows it while Sohan looking at him says to him that the revolving blood clan won't be able to make an antidote for that poison so it'd be best if you behave. And he replies obediently that I understand. Sohan points at the table says to him that so that's that hand over the keys. Sayek replies and asks that pardon what keys? Sohan replies to him that since there's an auction place within here, I'm sure there's a storage room where you keep the item rights the vault storage place where elixirs are kept place where weapons are kept secret storage and everything that belongs to the pavilion owner, hearing this he replies with yes sir but thinking in his head that is he taking over the lunar dusk pavilion for the money? And thinking this he hands over the keys to him saying here it is. Sohan takes the keys and says to him that I'll go take a quick look clean up this place in the meantime. And he replies with yes sir. He was about to leave when Sayek asks him that excuse me but how should I address you? And Sohan replies that mystic lunar troop leader but you can just call me troop leader. He leaves that room while he is standing at the door and says yes troop leader. While he is passing through the corridor he sees that the men who were standing in the corridor who were lying on the floor are trying to get up so Sayek says to them that what are you all doing get a grip and clean this place up quickly. Since he's taken over this place make sure you treat him as the owner. And they all reply to him yes sir. Sohan goes to that room where the items for auction are kept and stored and he while looking at all those items thinking that these items are all up for the auction all this rubbish, they've messed with the auction items. And while looking at this place and items he sees something and looks at them and figures out that it is century-old tuber fleece flower. And one flower in his hand he says to himself that it's a low-grade item but it's still useful to a certain extent. It's better than nothing so I'll consume this and saying this he leaves that room. In the next morning in the lunar dusk pavilion, he is sitting in his room and is sitting cross-legged and joining hands together he is in deep meditation and his eyes are closed while someone comes at his door and says from outside that troop leader are you awake? So he replies that yes come in. Chu Sayek enters in the room but his eyes are still closed and he is meditating while Sayek is standing quietly and looking at him and Sohan asks him that how many days would it take for the revolving blood clan to realize what was happened here. Sayek replies that they'll probably know in two or three days. So Sohan says to him that two or three days, gather all the employees and tell them this all those who have a place to return to and those who want to quit can leave no strings attached. Sayek is shocked to hear this and asks pardon while he is thinking in his head that why would he disband the Lunar Dusk Pavilion after all the effort he put in to take over it. 
If he does that while he was busy in summoning up his thoughts Sohan says to him that send at least ten times of their salary to those who have a place to return to. But Sayek is stunned to hear this and says to him that ten times in order to give that much money will need to use the Revolving Blood Clan's money. Hearing this Sohan opens his eyes and asks Revolving Blood Clan's money? And he replies that yes sir the Revolving Blood Clan has placed the funds in various places and the Lunar Dusk Pavilion is taking care of quite a bit of those funds. As Sohan hears this he smiles and says that's even better if it's the Revolving Blood Clan's money then all the more it needs to be used. Send twenty times the salary instead. Sayek is shocked to hear that and asks pardon? After his orders, everyone in the Lunar Dusk Pavilion is packing their stuff and leaving that place, and they're busy in their packing when one says to the other, let's go quickly, and the other replies, all right. They all packed their stuff, and now they are leaving. While he is looking at them standing, Sayek is standing behind him. He asks him, did you get everything I asked for? He replies, yes, sir, and as you've instructed, I've asked my subordinates to escort them until they're in a safe place. Sohan is looking at the people who are leaving the pavilion while Sayek continues, saying that among them, there are probably people reporting the situation to the Revolving Blood Clan, but Sohan replies, probably so. Sayek, while looking at him, is thinking that it feels like he's waiting for them to report to the Revolving Blood Clan. He remembers last night when he was talking to the owner of the pavilion about the Mystic Dance Troupe and said to him, it's the name you haven't heard in a while, right? The owner told him that the Sword Dance Troupe was originally located here before the Lunar Dusk Pavilion came along, remembering all this, he says to Sohan, Troop Leader, the reason why you're doing this, is it related to the Mystic Lunar Dance Troupe? Sohan looks at him with a side eye and asks, how do you know that? He replies, that's because I heard your conversation with the dead pavilion owner. While looking at the dance stage, he says to Sayek, that's right, I grew up in the Sword Dance Troupe. On hearing this, Sayek asks the reason for saying that, so Sohan replies that yeah, after the Revolving Blood Clan took this place away from the Sword Dance Troop by force, they built the Lunar Dusk Pavilion. Sayek is thinking, that's why he's here, he's trying to take revenge against the Revolving Blood Clan who devoured the Mystic Lunar Dance Troop. He asks him if there's anyone else who's with him in this, and he replies, no, I'm alone. He starts thinking about him, that crazy shit, he's going to fight the Revolving Blood Clan alone. While he did win against the Lunar Dusk Pavilion owner and me, I can't believe he's thinking of doing something ridiculous. He says to him, the Revolving Blood Clan isn't something you can handle alone, but Sohan says, I can't believe they took over the Eastern Dark Streets while I was away. They're probably pretty big. While listening to this, Sayek wonders, that's why he's underestimating the Revolving Blood Clan too much. He says to him, Troop leader, the Revolving Blood Clan is managing four brothels, three martial halls, two merchant associations, and two escort establishments. The Revolving Blood Clan can mobilize at least a few hundred people. Sohan, after hearing this, says, a few hundred people? I don't need to fight against all of them, especially for the unorthodox faction. I just need to take out some of the leaders, just like how I took over the Lunar Dusk Pavilion. Hearing this, Sayek thinks, that he is going to take out some of the leaders isn't underestimating the Revolving Blood Clan's executives too much, and it looks like I might die quickly if I hang around him. Do I need to get the antidote by all means and try to escape? Sohan calls him, saying, Chu Sayek, and he replies, yes. He looks at him, but he's looking quite frightened. Sohan says to him, once your subordinates are back, you should leave too, but he is still shocked and says, pardon? Are you being serious? Sohan replies, yes, take tons of money for you and your subordinates when you guys leave. He remembers the last night when Sohan gave him poison and said to him, what else? Of course, it's poison. So he is angry at him and says to himself, this bastard, he should give me the antidote. Sohan looks at his face and asks, so what's the matter? You don't seem happy that I am letting you go. He replies, I need the antidote. Sohan is confused and asks, the antidote, and says to him, I forgot to tell you if you don't take the antidote your limbs will melt in a few days. Hearing this, he is angry at his carelessness and says to himself, how can you forget? You fed me such a vicious poison, and you dare send me away like you were being nice and all. Vicious bastard. Sohan takes out the box from his pocket, and there are two antidote pills in that box. Looking at the box, he is thinking, the antidote. I can finally get rid of the poison. 
Thinking this, he takes out a pill from the box and eats it and feels a big relief. He wonders why Sohan is looking at him like that, so he says to him, what's wrong? Sohan replies, do you know what that is, why did you just eat it? So he replies to him, what? Didn't you say this is the antidote, and Sohan asks, since when did I say that? After hearing this, he asks him, what did I just eat then, so he replies, poison. Sohan is also looking quite shocked at his behavior, and he shouts and says, what? I mean, why did you feed me poison? So he replies, I'm just showing you what the real poison looks like. What you ate first was a fake. His body starts turning blue, and while looking at him, Sohan says to him, you look like you are in your forties and are a veteran in the Jianghu. But hearing this, he is thinking, this is ridiculous. I did all sorts of shit for him, but what I ate was a fake at first and he gave me poison instead of the antidote. Sohan sits on a chair, pours a drink in his glass, and starts drinking. He is looking at him and wondering, he's now drinking wine after tricking me. He is quite angry and infuriated. He also sits on a chair before him and says to him, please pour me one cup too. Sohan is still looking at him, so he says to him, what's wrong? Are you going to kill me because you don't want to pour me a drink? Since I am going to die of poison anyways, do as you please. But Sohan smiles and says, here, have a drink, and pours a drink in his glass, and he drinks that immediately and says to him, and I'll remain here instead of leaving. Sohan is shocked at this and asks, what, and then he replies, in any case, if a fight breaks out, they will kill me for not being able to protect the Lunar Dusk Pavilion, but it's impossible, for you to win against the Revolving Blood Clan alone, if I am going to die anyways, I'll be more satisfied with my death if I get to see just how well you fight. But Sohan is looking at him quietly. So he says to him that please pour me another drink. Sohan smiles. So he asks him what? And he replies it's nothing and keeps pouring drink in his glass and says that let's just keep drinking. Also Sayak tell him that I am not in my forties I am twenty-four years old while he laughs and says what? In the revolving blood clan the people are sitting in a meeting room and there is a table and two rows are on the each side of the table and one man is sitting at one end of the table and he says to them say that again, one man managed to take over the lunar dusk pavilion alone. So one of them replies yes sir. Then he says to them that just what the hell has the Lunar Dusk Pavilion owner been doing for him to be defeated by one man is the opponent an incredible martial master? He is Revolving Blood Clan leader. One of them says to the leader that there were reports that he used poison. Then he replies that poison that makes more sense. While another fat man from among them stands up and says that clan leader, I will lead the Razor Wind squad to take care of him. He is Razor Wind squad Captain Yungildo. The clan leader asks him you want to do this yourself? Then he replies yes sir. So the clan leader says that sure I could definitely trust you with this if there's someone behind him then take care of them as well. He bows down before him and says yes I understand. Meanwhile in his head he is thinking that I have wanted to get my hands on a brothel if I take care of this incident I could ask to manage the lunar dusk pavilion. Sohan is walking through the city and enjoying eating dumplings while Sayak is walking behind him and has a bag of dumplings in his hand and is looking quite annoyed meanwhile Sohan asks him that one more. And he gives him one more dumpling. Meanwhile in his head he is thinking that I can't believe he's been enjoying himself so peacefully for a few days. Now the revolving blood clan should be making their move soon though how can he be so unprepared? While thinking this he hears someone saying get lost. And is thinking that who it is. It is the revolving blood clan. The people around are looking quite scared and Sayak says to Sohan that troop leader that's the revolving blood clan. So he replies that's the revolving blood clan. And he replies that yes they're the razor wind squad that belongs to the revolving blood clan they're known to be pretty rough within the revolving blood clan. Seeing as how the razor wind squad captain is here personally it seems they've brought only their elites. Listening this Sohan says elites. Sayek says that based on the direction they're heading towards it seems they're heading straight for the Lunar Dusk Pavilion. But at hearing this he smiles and says in that case as its owner I ought to greet my guests. Let's go. And also says to him that do you still have more Bing Tang, give me one more. Sayek is shocked and says what?
The Razor Wind Squad is moving towards the Lunar Dusk Pavilion with his group members and the leader is holding a huge weapon in his hand and places it on his shoulder and also wearing a chain around his fat belly and says to his group members that bring that bastard here you mustn't let your guard down since he's someone who's capable of killing the Lunar Dusk Pavilion owner and one of them replies that yes sir. The Razor Wind Squad's leader Jung Gildo is a huge fat man and when he enters the other people starts running and he has big feet and he reaches the Lunar Dusk Pavilion and when he reaches there, he places his huge weapon on that floor and thinks that now that I've seen this place myself it's even better than I thought if I take over this place, I'll definitely be able to earn quite a bit. He is standing wondering while his fellow members are examining the place thoroughly and after searching one of them says to him that captain no one is here and the other also says to him same here which means the pavilion is empty he's looking quite confused and asks his people that no one's here. One of them replies that exactly we've searched all over but no one's here while the other assumes that maybe he ran away. Listening to all this the captain replies that there's no way he'd hang around after messing with the revolving blood clan he must have been in such a hurry he couldn't even take the money or item with him is that so meanwhile he's thinking that it doesn't matter while it's a pity I wasn't able to kill him with my own hands what's important is the lunar dusk pavilion. The squad is standing there when two people enters and they are Sohan and Sayek. They all looks at them and one of them says that who the hell is that get lost we are not open today while the other says that count yourself lucky if we had been in a bad mood today then you'd have at least lost an arm before we chased you away but hearing this Sohan says that there's fewer than I thought. The same man asks what did you just say while the other says that didn't you hear me telling you to get lost. Jung is looking at him and says to himself that don't tell me that bastard while Sohan says to Cha Sayek who was standing behind him that close the doors and he replies obediently yes troop leader and runs quickly to close the doors. The squad leader smirks and says to him that it was you the bastard who brazenly made a mess in the lunar dusk pavilion I thought you had run away and everyone takes out their weapons then Sohan asks calmly that why would I do that I'm here to eat. The squad leader smirks and says to him that fool you're here to throw your life away you would have been better off if you had just run away and with saying this, he orders his people saying get him. The people of his group on hearing this all get their weapons ready and run towards him. One of them reaches near him but he is standing quietly with his head down when suddenly his eyes turn to purple from blue color and he looks at them with side eye and purple light is also coming out from his body. When the one person attacks on him with his sword Sohan touches his elbow and as soon as he touches the elbow becomes red and swollen and then Sohan attacks on his side and throws him away and sees him with those purple eyes while everyone else is also moving towards him and he looking at them attacks on one person's leg and using his wonderful fighting skills attacks on others neck with his elbow and also uses his foot to kick. All of them are lying on the floor and coughing while blood is coming out of their mouths and those who are left along with the captain are looking at him and one of them says damn it and orders them that charge at him from all directions but he's standing there and he again uses his amazing skills and techniques and attacks on all of them at once and throws them away while the captain is still standing there and the blood is also coming out from the mouths of those whom he fought with. The captain and the Sayek both are looking at him with sudden shock and Sayek is stunned to see his fighting skills and thinks that he defeated them easily was he that strong and he hasn't even used his weapons just how strong is he but Sohan is still standing and the captain while looking at him is thinking that I thought I'd be able to take the lunar dusk pavilion easily where the hell did such a martial master comes from. He is standing there cross-armed still pondering about what happened few moments ago when Sohan asks him that fatty not coming? Sohan is calling him for a fight but he smirks and says arrogant bastard and with this he takes his huge weapon asking that where the hell are you from you seem pretty strong what do you want then Sohan replies the revolving blood clan. The fatty is angry at his answer and asks what. Sohan continues saying that everything that the revolving blood clan has meanwhile captain at hearing this is wondering that he has a grudge with us. The captain replies with full confidence that it seems that you should really be talking to the revolving blood clan leader let's do this then I'll report this back to the clan leader and get him to come here how's that? Sohan smiles gently and asks him that do I look like I'm someone who'd listen obediently and after listening this the captain is thinking that I don't have a choice but to take care of him then. He raises his weapon and says in that case it seems the negotiations have broken down and Sohan replies that I had no intentions of negotiations with you guys anyways and after hearing his answer the captain gets extremely angry and thinking that acting relaxed. Arrogant bastard. Thinking this he runs towards him with the intentions for attacking on him and says to him that same for me then and shouts. Sohan takes a dead body that was laying near and first lifts it up in the air then throws it towards him with full force using his special technique while the captain is thinking that I'll aim for the opening after it hits him and that dead body strikes him with full force and he falls on the ground and looking at Sohan he's wondering that this bastard he disappeared. 
He was looking at him but couldn't find him but then suddenly he attacks from other side on his face and kicks with foot on his face. Blood is coming out from his mouth and his face texture has been changed because of the poison and his unique martial techniques and those who are half dead are looking at him and Sayek is also shocked to see him but he is standing there with those purple eyes. All of them are lying on the floor and some are dead while some are in miserable condition and badly injured and their leader is also lying on the floor and his large weapon is also there and the blood is coming out of his head while Sohan is standing there looking at them with his purple eyes and one of them who is injured looks around at the dead bodies and leader and says to the other who is also injured that he took the captain down easily impossible what the hell is with him and then. They looks at the Sohan who is also looking then with those bluish eyes and those who are alive are looking at him and some are confused and some are shocked and even though some are scared as well because of his powers and then Sohan says to Cha Sayek that open the doors and he obediently says that yes troop leader then immediately goes and open the doors meanwhile that purple light again starts coming out from Sohan's body and then he says to those who are injured that bring they corpses along with you and get lost and those with the injured faces and the arms gets confused to hear this but Sohan continues saying that tell this to the revolving blood clan leader that if wants to go against me he'll have to come here himself and hearing this one of them looks at him with anger while the other says to him that yes sir and then Sohan leaving them there goes to the stage while those who are injured takes the bodies of those who are dead and also those who are injured and leaves. That place saying hurry up and Cha Sayek is looking them leaving and then Sohan takes a bottle of wine from the table and start pouring the drink in his glass meanwhile Cha Sayek is looking at him and after a while says to him that troop leader please pour me a drink too and then Sohan while drinking looks at him and asks that what did you even do and his eyes get back to their normal color and Sayek smiles at his question and then replies to him that what else I closed the doors then I. Opened it again too and then Sohan also smiles and says to him that's true and then saying this he grabs a bottle of wine and starts pouring drink for him while Sayek is looking at him doing this and then he asks him that troop leader why did you spare a few of them and Sohan replies to his question that now that I've mocked them the clan leader ought to be infuriated and come looking for me and then Sayek looks at him with a little bit confusion. And then saying I see he takes a glass of drink and starts drinking it meanwhile in his head he's thinking that this means he was actually sane when he picked a fight with the revolving blood clan and then Sohan while pouring another glass of drink for himself says to him that when all of the revolving blood clan come here I'll get dangerous for you to hide somewhere else and Sayek becomes stunned after hearing this and looks at him with a shocked face but Sohan continues drinking with patience. And then Sayek becomes little bit frightened and says to him that troop leader I'll pour you a drink. The revolving blood clan leader is sitting on a chair and is holding a sword in his hand and others are standing in two rows and are facing each other and then the leader says to them that you guys handed yourselves in this state yet you don't know who did this to us and one of them replies to him that based on what we heard from the surviving Razor Wind squad members it seems he has an enmity with us then hearing this the leader gets angry and says to him that are you being serious we have. Tons of enemies everywhere but he after hearing this gets offended while the clan leaders orders him saying that gather everyone that's able to wield a sword and one of them asks that all of them and then he replies that yeah after what he did to us we need to show him who's boss if we look weak now then others will comes after us too and he obediently replies that understood then the clan leader continues saying that before we leave tie up those razor wind squad members that came back paralyzed and line them up we will cut their heads off before the depart. Those fucking useless bastards at the very least they can be used to make examples but that man looks at him with shock and says to him that clan leader but he gets infuriated and says to him that this is a warning to everyone including you and he again replies that understood and everyone else standing there obediently says yes sir and then in the eastern dark street everyone in the revolving blood clan that could wield. A sword gathers along with the leader for the purpose of fighting with the Sohan and are standing outside the Lunar Dance Pavilion and are looking at it meanwhile inside the pavilion Sohan in his room is busy doing meditation and all his body is rounded by that purple light but then suddenly Sayek appears there and opens the door of his room with a force shouting that captain and then after hearing this the purple light disappears. And he opens his blue eyes and looks at him meanwhile Sayek. Looks frightened and says with trembled voice that the revolving blood clan is here and there's a lot of them then Sohan says to him that naturally and then Sayek gets confused and says that but I mean there's too many of them and then Sohan stands up and asks him that what about the revolving blood clan leader then Sayek tells him that while I haven't seen him yet. Looking at the numbers I'm sure he's here and while Sayek and Sohan are standing there talking someone from the outsides. 
Shout saying that come on out let's see who the fearless guy messed with the revolving blood clan is and after hearing this Sohan takes out a pink outfit from the wardrobe and starts wearing it while Sayek looks at him with surprise and says to him that captain that outfit isn't that the martial performance garb then Sohan replies to him that's right and then he starts remembering about the past memory when a girl while wearing that same outfit asks him, that's Sohan how do I look and then he says to her that wow you're so pretty and then remembering this he says to Sayek that this is something I heard when I was young, it's made to make one's curve stand out when they're doing a sword dance then Sayek asks him that yes but why are you wearing this and then Sohan tells him that because I was from the mystic lunar sword dance troupe I need to let them know who killed them and then he leaves that place saying that I'll be right back while Sayek says to him that I'll go along. With you Sohan gets shocked at hearing this and asks what then he replies to him that well if you die I'm dead meat anyways and then Sohan smiles and says to him that wait here this isn't something you shouldn't get involved in and Sayek is shocked to hear this and replies with yes troop leader and then Sohan opens the doors of his room and is about to leave the room when Sayek says from behind that troop leader please don't die and then Sohan smiles saying sure and then he leaves the room. There is a huge crowd of the people of the Revolving Blood clan along with the leader and they are all standing outside the Lunar Dance Pavilion and some are also holding flambeaux in their hands and then Sohan comes out and is standing upstairs while all of them are standing downstairs and is looking at all of them while the clan leader along with his special people is standing cross-armed and is looking at the Sohan's outfit and shoes. And while someone from the crowd looks at him and asks. Martial performance while the other says that what the hell is that? Isn't that what the ladies who do sword dance wear while someone says is he a lunatic and some of them smirk saying that he must be nuts and someone even says that kneel down right away you lunatic and then the clan leader raises his hand saying stop and then everyone stops talking and then he looks at Sohan and smiles saying that you must be sleepyhead while Sohan is looking at him he holds his two-faced sword and says with pink eyes that yeah. And then saying this he takes out his sword and. Pink light is coming out of his body and eyes and then he says that the sleepyhead of the mystic lunar sword dance troupe is back. The revolving blood clan leader is looking at Sohan while he is also looking at him with his blue eyes and then he remembers about his past memory of childhood when he was practicing the sword dance and then the sword falls from his hand on the floor and he gets injured and was looking at his palm when the women around runs towards him and asks him that sleepyhead are you alright and then he while looking at his hand with his teary eyes says yeah. And then he gets up and the, the women sits near. Him and one of them asks are you cut anywhere while the other is holding him from shoulder and arm and he replies that no then she takes that sword from the floor and says to him that's not how you should do it do it like this instead, I'll show you how and then he starts smiling and asks really? And then she starts dancing and he is looking at her with his big blue eyes and is fascinated because of her dance while she is doing that with perfection and then few years later he also starts doing that dance with that much perfection in front of those ladies and they are all looking at him and clapping and one of them says you are doing great while the other says you have gotten so much better sleepyhead and then the third one says you were born for this you have got innate talent for it. And then he smiles and asks really. Sohan is standing there with those pink eyes and then he closes his eyes and remembers about that waiter who said to him that after you disappear the sword dance troupe looked everywhere for you. They would look for you whenever they could and they were always worried for you before they were no longer around and then he suddenly opens his eyes and says to them that I will kill all of you and then after saying this he suddenly disappears from there while looking at him the clan leader is. Thinking that he's fast then he runs fast towards them and then goes and stands between those people meanwhile all of them start looking at him with the confusion and then the sword starts glowing with pink color and then all of them gets poison and falls on the ground and the blood is coming out of their bodies. While those who are standing around looking at this are stunned to see that and one of them says what the hell while the other says that what just happened at the front and the blood is also present on the Sohan's face and he is looking at them and then he again moves his sword in the circle and he is performing some special martial arts techniques while all of them standing there looking at him are shocked to see his skills meanwhile the clan leader is also standing there quarterly looking at his activity while the person next to him says to the others that don't panic there is only one enemy and then he orders everyone that charge at him together meanwhile Sohan is busy at attacking on them and then one of them says to others that's right we have the upper hand while the other says kill him and then saying this they all moves towards him holding their weapons in their hands but Sohan looks with the side eye at them and then he smirks saying that's great all of you bring it on and then he turns towards them. And then the purple lights of greater intensity and all of them are. Looking at that quietly while he is dealing with those with his wonderful skills meanwhile the clan leader is thinking that I wanted to take him in because he looked promising when he was younger I never imagined him to come back so differently but those movements are the sword dances of the mystic lunar sword dance troupe. Can he even take care of something of that level meanwhile thinking this he gets infuriated meanwhile Sayek is standing there looking at him and is thinking that I can't. 
Believe that he's that strong and I don't know what kind of martial arts he's using but it's beautiful and then while looking at Sohun who's using his skills he realizes that he is not only using martial arts but also using a special kind of poison and then he says to himself that it's not just martial arts he's using poison and then that poison is roaming around Sohun's body and his eyes are also pink colored and then. He moves that poison towards the legs of those people and because of that, one of them bows down over his knees and holding his neck he says that I can't breathe and then Sohan attacks on his neck with his sword and then also others who are poisoned are holding their necks with their hands and some are sitting while few are lying on the floor while Sohan using his swords is creating the pink lines of poison over the injured and they are shocked to see that and one of them says that it's impossible while the other says that I can't move my body. And when most of them starts dying and getting injured then one of them says to the leader that captain please help us we're no match for but he couldn't complete his sentence when that pink line touches his neck and his neck cuts off from his body and falls on the ground while one of them also says that captain please save us and other says that it's poison meanwhile the leader is standing there. Looking quietly and hearing all their voices but doing nothing and then that man who is standing near him says to him. That clan leader the battle line has been broken but the leader is standing there looking at the Sohan and the dead bodies of the injured lying on the floor and then he is thinking that I can't believe that he became such a strong martial arts master and then that man who was standing near leader holds his sword in his head on which blood is also present and he says to Sohan that sleepyhead you have come back as the ghost of the sword dance troupe but Sohan is standing between those dead bodies with his pink eyes and is looking dangerous and there is also blood on his face and then he says to the leader that anything else while the people standing there start saying that he's a monster and why aren't the captain and the clan leader making any moves. Do our lives not matter to them and then Sohan looks at them and says to them that stand down if you don't want to die I only want the revolving blood clan leader and after hearing this all of them starts giving him the way and. They all stands in two rows and then he walks between them and then the clan leader says to him that my dear sleepyhead you are all grown up yeah now that I know that you are capable of, tell me what you want then Sohan asks what and he replies to him that I doubt that you made such a fucking mess for the sake of revenge for the sword dance troupe. You have something else you want right? Do you want the assets of the revolving blood clan meanwhile Sohan is standing in front of him and says to him that what kind of fucking bullshit is that then the leader says to him that if you wanted revenge you could have just come straight for me with your abilities do you expect me to believe that you did all of this just for revenge? Sleepyhead if you kill me here you won't be able to get the revolving blood clan's assets because the business that only I know of make quite a lot of money therefore tell me what you want and then Sohan after a while says to him that revolving blood clan leader then saying this he comes near him and looks into his eyes and says to him that are you done with your fucking bullshit. Sohan is standing in front of the revolving blood clan's leader and then looking at him with those pink eyes, he says to him that, are you done with your fucking bullshit. The clan leader while looking at him with his thinking in his head that, this bastard, is he for real? He doesn't want anything but revenge? The eye color of Sohan changes to blue and then he says to him with anger that, if you're done talking then, I'll kill you. The clan leader also looks at him with anger and is trying to figure out how to stop him and then says to Sohan that, wait a minute. Don't you want to know the whereabouts of the sword dance troop members? Sohan is standing there listening to him and then he asks with a little confusion that, sword dance troop members? And the leader replies that, yes, the sword dance troop that raised you when you were young. While saying this, the leader takes out his sword which he was hiding at the back and then attacks on him, but Sohan dodges him efficiently even while standing there and then he suddenly disappears, and the leader is shocked to see that and is thinking that, he dodged that at this distance. So Hun then comes from behind with pink eye and is infuriated and says to him that, right, this was the kind of bastard you were. Then he holds his sword in his hand and attacks on him but the leader looks at him with anger and steps away from him while protecting himself from the attack and then he looks at the Sohan with anger but then suddenly he starts coughing blood and places his hand on his chest and is thinking that, I was simply touched but it distorted the blood and energy circulation within me meanwhile Sohan is looking at him and thinking that, he blocked my attack. Then Sohan smiles and says to him that, I guess you haven't been fooling around this whole time? The clan leader gets infuriated at this and says to the other captains that, what are you all doing? Hearing this, all the captains get their sword ready and are all looking at the leader then the leader orders them that, kill him. The big man heads toward Sohan and attacks on him with his sword along with the other three but Sohan is standing there with patience and then they all attacks at once, then Sohan uses his martial arts technique along with the poison while they all pounced on him and start attacking one by one. Sohan looks at them with those purple eyes and while looking at him, the leader smirks and is thinking that, he's strong but I guess dealing with all the captains isn't easy for him. 
They are all surrounding him and attacking on him but he uses his master's sword from which the poison releases while the leader is looking at him with full concentration and then the Sohan spreads that poison all around him and releases it towards the captains and while looking at this, when he comes to know that it's poison and then he laughs and says to him that, sleepyhead, we have taken the antidote so your poison doesn't affect us. Sohan looks at him with side eye and is somehow confused and then he uses his martial arts technique, back flips in the air and then again stands on the ground and the poison is coming out of his outfit and then he with those dark eyes, says to the leader that, I wondered why you guys were acting so confident. It was just because you guys consumed the antidote. Hearing this, the leader laughs and replies to him that, yeah, we heard that you use poison, so we bought quite an expensive one. Now that poison doesn't work against us, you won't be able to act big anymore. Then Sohan says to him that, you say poison doesn't work against you, are you sure? Sohan releases the poison towards him but he is stubborn, standing there and says to him that, of course do you intend to act big and see that the antidote doesn't work? But then suddenly the leader's eyes start turning to red and he is confused at what's happening and then he sits on the ground and all the other captains also start feeling that they can't breathe properly and one of them holds high neck while the other felt unconscious and then they all fall on the ground one by one and looking at all this, the leader says to himself that, what's this? And then he looks at the Sohan and realizes that it's poison and then says, poison. We definitely took the antidote though. Sohan says to him that, there's no way that the stupid antidote you found would block my master's poison. Then the leader looks at him with poisoned eyes while Sohan looking at them, says that, seeing as how these people have taken the antidote, I guess they are the pillars of the revolving blood clan. Then saying this, he moves towards the clan leader and then while walking, he takes out his swords and attacks the captains with those pink eyes and cuts them off. Their blood comes out and touches his face and then he says to himself that, pathetic. All the captains falls on the ground and the leader is looking at them with shock and after that Sohan starts moving towards him with his sword drenched in blood and then the leader immediately says to him that, wait a minute, with your abilities we could definitely expand our power together. I'll fund you. My money will definitely be of great help to you. We could possess way more than just the eastern dark street. Sohan is standing there listening to him and then says to him that, you're still going on with that fucking bullshit, how unsightly. Then he says to Sohan that, unsightly, me? The person who rules the eastern dark street? Sleepyhead aren't you curious regarding where the bitches of the sword dance troupe are? Then he laughs and says to Sohan that, no one will be able to tell you where those bitches are because I killed them myself. I kill one bitch when I'm sick of her and another when I'm sick of her too. Then saying this, he laughs loudly. Sohan gets angry and holding his sword tightly, he attacks him with all his might and tears his body into small pieces and the blood splashes here and there. The leader falls on the ground meanwhile Sohan and other people around are looking at him then one of them from the crowd says that, the clan leader is dead. While the other asks that, are all the captains dead too? One of them also asks that, what? The clan leader is dead? Sohan looks at them with side eyes and loudly says that, the revolving blood clan leader is dead. Those who'd like to join him in hell come at me. All the people there are shocked and confused at this. The dead bodies of the captains and the leader are lying on the floor in miserable condition and Sohan is standing between them on the stage while the others are standing downstairs looking at this scene meanwhile Sayek is standing on the roof and then he looks at Sohan and then revolving blood clan and then is thinking that, troop leader, he really defeated the revolving blood clan. Sohan is standing there quietly and remembering the leader's words when he said that, because I killed them myself. He is now wondering that, all of them are dead. The sign board for the Lunar Dusk Pavilion is being put on at the entrance of the pavilion and people are standing there, looking at the sign board on which, Mystic Lunar Troop, is written. Inside the pavilion, Sohan is sitting in his room and enjoying the tea when Chu Sayek comes to him and says to him that, the Mystic Lunar Troop signboard you've ordered has arrived and is being put up. Sohan is drinking his tea while listening to him and Sayek continues saying that, we've passed the message around to ask anyone who knows of any mystic lunar dance troupe survivors or have met them by chance to come to us. Sohan replies to him without looking at him that, good job. Saying this, he looks at the cut and is thinking that, although he said everyone's dead, I'm sure those who weren't caught up in that incident are probably alive somewhere. Then Sohan looks at the Sayek and he says to him that everyone in the Eastern Dark Street is happy about what you did to the Revolving Blood Clan. The Sayek smiles and continues saying that they're even praising you for it. 
So Han is puzzled and asks him that they're that happy about it? Sayek replies with happiness that, yes that's just how atrocious the revolving blood clan was in the eastern dark street. Sohan is trying to figure out his words and is looking at him quietly and because of that Sayek becomes confused and asks him, what's the matter? Sohan replies with slight anger that, those people who did atrocious things you were one of them. Sayek smiles with utter confusion because Sohan discussed his past and then Sohan, holding a cup in his hand says, Chu Sayek. He replies with yes and then Sohan says to him that, make sure you turn over a new leaf. He looks quite puzzled but replies that, okay. Sohan is holding a cup while placing it on the table and the steam is also blowing off from the tea in the cup and Sohan is busy thinking that, to think that people are happy about this was it a revenge that had meaning after all? Sayek informs him that, also, the Western Gold Escort Establishment's successor has requested to meet with you. Sohan asks him about the Western Gold Escort Establishment and then Sayek starts telling him that, yes, they are one of the escort establishments that the Revolving Blood Clan stole from. They went into hiding but came looking for you after they heard about what happened. They would like to thank you for it. Hearing this, Sohan closes his eyes with pain and asks him, just how many enemies did the Revolving Blood Clan leader have? And then Sayek continues saying that, there's a little problem, though. The Revolving Blood Clan stole from the Western Gold Escort Establishment to run the Western Wind Escort Establishment. System notification appears which says that they're in a similar situation with the Lunar Dusk Pavilion. After hearing this, Sohan says to him that, go find out what the Revolving Blood Clan has taken and make sure all of it is returned to the Western Gold Escort Establishment. Sayek bows down before him and says that, understood, I'll do just that. Meanwhile, in his head he's thinking that, I guess he's going to do the same thing this time around. It would have been normal if he wanted to get a little greedy, though. Sayek is standing there thinking all this, when a man comes at the door and informs that, the Creston's waiter would like to meet with the troop leader. After hearing this, Sayek looks shocked and says, what? Why would the waiter want to meet him? Sohan becomes unhappy at his words and then says to him that, Chu Sayek, let my childhood friend in. Sayek realizes his mistake and says immediately that, yes, understood. Dogon comes and brings a lot of food from him. There is a variety of dumplings present on the table and a jug and the steam is blowing off from the fresh food and while looking at that Sohan says to Dogon that, you brought so much food over. Dogon smiles and says to him that, I remember that you like dumplings. Hearing this, Sohan also smiles and says to him that, yeah I do. Then he starts pouring a drink in his glass and then while pouring the drink in Dogon's glass, he says to him that, I had forgotten about things like that. Is Uncle Pung doing well? Dogon replies to him that, he has a bad back, so he's mainly lying in bed at home. After hearing this, he looks quite upset and feels pity on Uncle Pung and then asks him that, is that so, is he very hurt? Dogon replies with seriousness that, no, he's just feigning illness because he doesn't want to work. And while pouring another glass of drink, Sohan says to him that, he's still the same as usual. Then holding a glass in his hand, he offers him that, Dogon, join the mystic lunar troop and help me with the kitchen. You can also bring Uncle Pung later on. While stuffing his mouth with that dumpling, he asks that, what about the inn? Then Sohan looks at him and replies to him that, the mystic lunar troop has more people now, and it's hard for us to get food outside all the time. The kitchen here is as good as your inn, so you can be in charge of all the cooking. Dogon is looking at him with confusion and Sohan feels that then he asks him that, what's wrong, do you not like the idea? Dogon is looking at him with his brown eyes and is looking quite frightened then he replies to him that, that's not it but I feel like if I cook here, I might get slashed eventually. Sohan looks at his face and asks, what do you mean? Then Dogon while putting that dumpling in the plate, tells him that, I saw all your fights. Then Sohan asks him that, what are you worried about if you have seen them all? It seems like Dogon is feeling difficulty while explaining and then, after a while, he says to Sohan that, it feels like you'll fight again even if you don't, there are others who still won't leave you be. Sohan is looking at him quietly while he continues saying that, I'll ask you this question. Just how strong are you? I'll listen to what you have to say before I decide to continue to live as a lowly chef in the inn or be your head chef. Then Sohan sighs and asks, how would I know how strong I am? It hasn't been that long since I've been out and about. Then Dogon asks him a question that, wouldn't you know based on the sect you're from? 
Then Sohan says to him that, my sect, I see. I don't know how strong I am but Jiang Hu knows how strong my master is. After hearing this, Dogon looks quite happy and asks him that, who is he? I think he's from a reputable sect. Sohan is looking at him and then tells him about Jiang Hu that, the four great demons, he's one of them. Dogon is stunned to hear this and his mouth opens because of the shock and then says, the four great demons? Sohan while pouring a drink in his glass, smiles, and replies to him that, yeah, he's a lord among the unorthodox factions. Madness, lust, demon, and poison, the four great public enemies of the orthodox faction? After hearing this, Dogon becomes more frightened and then he takes a glass of drink from the table immediately and drinks it one gulp, sighs and then says to him that, Sohan. Sohan is drinking while looking at him with side eye and is pondering about him, then Dogon smiles a little and then says to him that, I'm glad you're still alive. Please let me know in advance if your master's going to come here. It's so I can go far away from this place. Then Sohan removes the glass from his mouth and then looks at him while smiling and then says to him that, that wouldn't happen so you don't need to worry about that, he's a very busy person. Then Dogon asks him that, do you want to let others know about this? If you do that, people wouldn't dare to come at you recklessly. Sohan replies to him that, I don't intend to let others know about this for now. It would probably have a reverse effect if I do so. Then Dogon smiles and says to him that, oh, right. It'll be a headache if the orthodox faction finds out. There will be people who'll charge at you while claiming to be chivalrous. It's better to be careful. After all the unorthodox territory has numerous guys like the revolving blood clan. Now that you've taken down the revolving blood clan, won't they try to take over the eastern dark street? While listening to him carefully, Sohan asks him that, is there any group that I need to be wary of? Then Dogon tells him about those groups that, the North Wind Sword Wolves in the north and the Sun Dragon Association in the south are the most active ones. If anyone could have killed the revolving blood clan leader, it would have been the leaders of those two groups. Sohan looks quite shocked and says to him, the North Wind Sword Wolves and the Sun Dragon Association. Dogon completes his sentence and says to him that, if the two of them join hands and attack the Eastern Dark Street what would happen to us? Would you be able to handle them alone? Sohan slightly smiles and says, Dogon. And he replies with confused tone, yeah. Then suddenly Sohan gets serious and says to him that, the Eastern Dark Street isn't the one that needs to be worried, it's them. Then Dogon while scratching his head, says really and Sohan replies with yeah and then both of them laughs while holding drinks in their hands and then Dogon says to him, that's great. They ought to be worried and we should just enjoy our drinks. At night, in the Sun Dragon Association the green flags are waving in the air and there is a big hall and the pink light bulbs are present. There are different pillars on both sides and curtains are also tied to those pillars and at the end of the hall, a man is sitting on a chair and one man is standing in front of him and then he asks him that, a man who learned martial arts came back to his hometown to take revenge? What a cliché this is. He is the Sun Dragon Association leader, Tim Hazung, and he is looking angry and then he asks from the other man, isn't that so? The man who is standing in front of the Hazung is the military advisor, Ji Nong. The military advisor is looking at him quietly then the leader gives awful expressions and says to him that, it's so cliché that I'm cringing right now. So, who killed the revolving blood clan leader? Then the advisor replies that, we have yet to find that out but the eastern dark street that was ruled by the revolving blood clan no longer has an owner. Hearing this, the leader smiles and asks him that, yeah, what do you suggest we do? The advisor gives him suggestion that, let's send assassins even though he'd be costly, I think the shadowless flying dagger would be perfect for this mission. The leader smiles with confusion and asks him that, you want to send the shadowless flying dagger? Then the advisor smirks and replies that, yes, he's someone that took down the revolving blood clan alone and since he's known to be young, we ought to send a female assassin as well. One fine morning, in the mystic lunar troop Sohan is sitting in his room and is enjoying his drink peacefully when someone knocks at the door and then five unknown men along with the Chu Sayak enters in the room and all of them loudly says together that, troop leader, we pay our respects to you. Sohan stops drinking for a while and looks at them with questioning eyes and then Sayak tells him that, they are the Phantom Sword clan that was in the Merchant Association and the Black Market. Sohan asks that, Phantom Sword clan? Then Sayak tells him that, yes they were with me before the revolving blood clan took over us. 
I was wondering if I could bring them over and lead them. Sohan looks at him with side eyes and all of them are standing there quietly and then while pouring a drink in his glass, he says to him that, do as you please, and Sayek replies with, thank you. And all of them looked at Sayek at once with side eyes and Sayek also looks at them and then they all leaves the room. When the room was emptied and only Sohan and Sayek were present, then Sohan asks him that, is everything all right with Western Gold Escort Establishment? Sayek replies that, I took care of everything and as you have ordered, I put all the medicines and poisons into one room. The treasures and money are in the other room. The books and documents we got from the revolving blood clan were also placed in a separate empty room. Then Sohan says to him that, good job, I'll be using the whole third floor from now on. Sayek is shocked to hear this and asks, the whole third floor. Meanwhile in his head, he's thinking that, one room would be more than enough, though. Why would he want to use the whole floor? Then Sohan again starts drinking and while drinking, he says to him that, yeah, also make sure no one enters the room that I'll use. The same goes for the rest of the rooms on the third floor. Sayek is still puzzled and then asks that, shouldn't there be at least someone to help clean up? Suddenly, Sohan's eye color changes to pink and he looks at him and says that, it would be problematic if someone entered and died after they vomit blood, and then Sayek looks at him with confusion and is thinking that, he uses poison. Thinking this he says to him that, I'll pass that on to everyone. Even so, who will protect you from now on? Sohan looks at him and asks, protect me? Then Sayek replies to him that, yes, since the North Wind Sword Wolf or the Sun Dragon Association leader might try to get rid of you and take over the Eastern Dark Street, aren't we going to need any countermeasures? They might even send assassins. When Sohan hears the word assassin, he starts wondering that, assassins, I should prepare for that. Then he says to Sayek that, your subordinates have performed escort duties before, right? And Sayek replies, yes. Hearing this, Sohan gets up from his place and says to him that, in that case, let's see just how strong my future escorts are. Then saying this, he starts heading towards outside and Sayek is standing behind, looking at him with confusion. Sohan and Sayek are standing along with the Phantom Sword clan members in the courtyard and they are all holding the swords in their hands. Sohan is standing there, looking at them and then says to them that, charge at me with all your might. I won't overdo it, so don't worry. They are all looking at him with confusion and then one of them says to him that, will you be okay? These are real swords. Listening to this, Sohan smiles and says with full confidence that, do you guys think you're at a level where you could worry for me? They all gets infuriated at his words meanwhile when Sayek looks at their angry faces, he's thinking that, there was no need for him to say it like that. Then Sohan says to them that, who wants to go first? One of them takes out his sword from the scabbard and holding a sword in his hand, says to him that, troop leader, I'll go first. Sohan is standing there while he uses his techniques, runs towards him for the attack and starts his attack but then suddenly Sohan while standing there, uses his one hand for the counterattack and the movement of his hand is so fast and magical that it can't be beaten. Sohan stops his attacks while standing there and using his poisonous powers, he rips off his sword and he is shocked to see that meanwhile Sohan uses his poison and punches him in the face and throws him away. The smoke is coming out of his sword and that man is lying on the floor while there is a hole in his temple and smoke is emitting from that hole and all of them are scared to see that. They are all looking at him and Sayek is looking at Sohan and is thinking that, seriously, troop leader should have gone easy on him. There was no need for him to hit him. Sohan turns back and looks at them and says, next, but nobody is willing to attack him because of his power and while looking at them, Sayek is thinking that, that's the average reaction. I'm reminded of the past. He is busy dealing with his thoughts when Sohan says to him that, Chu Sayek, come and fight me. He after listening this, gets frightened and asks him that, I'm doing it too. You already know how strong I am. But Sohan is standing there, looking at him with seriousness meanwhile Sayek is wondering that, he's serious, and then holding his sword, he says, yes, troop leader. Then after a while, Sayek is also injured and is holding a sword while trembling and the other Phantom Sword clan members are also lying injured on the floor and then Sohan says to them that, this is it for today. From now on, we'll be doing spars every morning. Sayek is injured, one eye is swollen and blood is also coming out of his nose and then he asks, every day? Sohan replies to him that, yeah even if I'm not here, you guys make sure you spar with each other like we did today. 
Sayek is looking at him with confusion and pain then Sohan looks at him and asks, what? You don't want to? He asks, wouldn't we grow weak like this? Then Sohan says to him that, I'll choose from the black market items and give each of you an elixir. You'll heal from such bruises naturally. Sayek sighs and replies obediently that, yes, troop leader. Sohan was leaving that place when Sayek asks him while holding his back that, where are you going? Saying this, he moans with pain and hearing this. Sohan smiles and says, Sayek. And he replies that, yes, troop leader. Then without turning, he says to Sayek that, unorthodox faction martial artists are said to die before they're thirty years old. With your abilities, you will die before you are even thirty. If you want to live as you please and die by someone else's sword before you're thirty, I won't interfere with that. Do as you please, however if you want to survive then do as I say. It's not like you guys have mastered some incredible internal energy cultivation technique nor have you mastered an incredible blade technique. Shouldn't you at least have tons of fighting experience? After listening Sayek says to him that, I'll follow your orders. Hearing this, Sohan smiles while looking at him and then leaves that place saying, I'll be back after taking a stroll. If there are any good weapons among the things you got from the black market, give it to them. Sayek replies, yes, troop leader. Sohan is walking alone in the market and then someone appears there and all the people around are also looking at them. There is man who is wearing a hat and a dwarf man is also walking behind him and is dragging a cart along with him and Sohan stands there and looks at them because they were looking quite suspicious and that man is holding a huge sword in his arms and both of them are smiling and then Sohan makes an eye contact with that man and then he says hello to Sohan and says to him that, I heard you're the mystic lunar troop leader, is that correct? Sohan replies with, that's right, and then he smiles and says to him that, sword wolf sent us here. Have you heard of the north wind sword wolf? He looks at Sohan from underneath his cap and then Sohan looks at his eyes and replies to him that, yeah, I have heard of him. Then he says to Sohan that, the North Wind Sword Wolf who has heard of the rumors that you killed the revolving blood clan leader and took over the Eastern Dark Street has sent you a gift and a letter. After saying this, he orders that dwarf man that, give it to him, and he replies obediently, yes, sir. Then he starts heading towards Sohan with his small foot and mocking smile, holding something in his hands and then he bows down on his knees before Sohan as a gesture for respect and presents him that letter meanwhile Sohan is looking at him quietly and then he takes that letter from his hands and that man with a hat says to Sohan that, the sword wolf wishes to join hands with you. You could go look for him or if that's inconvenient, then the sword wolf could come to the eastern dark street to find you. While hearing him, Sohan opens that letter and starts reading. The man says to the dwarf that, give him the present as well. And he puts his hand in his inner pocket saying, yes, sir. Sohan is again looking at him and he take out an envelope from his pocket and then presents it to him, he says that, it's 100,000 Niang. We've prepared it in banknote paper. But instead of the banknote paper, there are two red eyes shining in that envelope and then suddenly a snake comes out from that envelope and bites Sohan's hand but Sohan is still standing there, looking at him quietly. That snake creates a wound on his hand and is still holding his hand in its teeth and while looking at this, that man as well as the dwarf man both smiles mockingly. Sohan is looking at that snake who is still biting his hand. Both of them are looking at him and smiling. Then that man says with a cap says to Sohan that, since you use poison, you know what the blue viper is, right? I'll give you the antidote if you come out quietly. But Sohan is looking at him quietly and then, after a while, he holds that little snake from its neck and removes it from his hand and looks into his eyes and says, get lost. That dwarf man is holding a small dagger in his hand and he attacks Sohan with it but he dodges it. Then the other man takes his weapon and attacks on him and seeing this, Sohan takes out his sword and defends himself from the attack. That man attacks on him from one side while the dwarf one's attacks from the other side. Sohan is dealing with both of them at the same time and blocking their attack and fighting as well and the pink light is surrounding his whole body. All of them are busy using different weapons and techniques meanwhile Sohan looks at them with his pink poisonous eyes then Sohan blocks his attack with his sword and that man is angry while on the other side, he blocks the attack of the other with a sword in his second hand. Sohan is standing there, looking down while blocking their attack simultaneously and after a while, pushes and throws them away. Then Sohan looks at that man who is standing at his one side, holding a sword in his hand. 
The man with a cap raises his weapon a little in the air and then says to Sohan that, as expected of the person who was able to kill the revolving blood clan leader. It'd be troublesome if the poison didn't affect you. Saying this, he smirks and continues saying that, however, your body will harden up soon. If you kneel down before you lose your consciousness, I'll give you the antidote. This doesn't affect Sohan and he replies to him that, stop that bullshit and tell me who sent you here. I don't think the North Wind Sword Wolves sent you, though. That dwarf man gets angry at this and calls him, arrogant bastard, it seems like you still don't have a grasp of your situation. Saying this, he throws some kind of ball towards him and as soon as that ball breaks, it produces a dense black smoke everywhere around Sohan but he is still standing there, quietly, and then that dwarf man is holding blades in his hands and moves towards him saying that, I'll end you. He starts moving around him with full speed and then attacks from the behind and the other man is standing there, looking at his fellow fighting and then smiles and says, Sayol, why did you kill him so swiftly? You shouldn't have killed him that quickly. He thought that Sayol killed Sohan because he couldn't see clearly because of the smoke and when after a while, he sees a glimpse of Sohan who is standing there with those pink poisonous eyes and that pink light is surrounding his body and is looking horrific. That man gets frightened after seeing this and when the smoke disappears a little, he sees that Sayol is lying dead on the ground and Sohan is standing there, holding swords in his hands and the blood is coming out of Sayol's mouth. Then Sohan's eye color changes to blue and then he asks from that man, who sent you? This is the second time I'm asking. That man gets angry and holds his sword in his hand saying that, who the hell are you? I'm sure the blue viper bit you, thought. But Sohan replies to him that, there's poison on the letter as well, isn't there? That man is looking at him while thinking that, the poison didn't work on him? The blue viper and the colorless poison didn't work on him and he can still take care of people at our level easily. He is busy thinking this, when Sohan asks him, if no one sent you, then did someone instigate you guys to come here? That man is still looking at Sohan and thinking and soon he realizes that he was tricked by Shadowless Dagger and is wondering that, damn it, we were tricked by the Shadowless Flying Dagger. I can't believe the Shadowless Flying Dagger has a habit of checking out his opponent before performing an assassination, were we used as bait? Then Sohan looks at him, smiles a little and says, I guess you're aware you've been tricked now. He gets angry at his smile and heads towards him for attack and says loudly that, shut up. Saying this, he jumps high in the air and attacks on Sohan but he defends himself with his sword and his eyes turn pink. That man's face turns blue because of the poison and Sohan uses his sword and cuts down his arm in which he was holding his sword and that arm falls down on the ground. He sits on the ground over his knees and then Sohan puts back his sword and that man is looking at him and thinking that, I can't move. Is there paralysis powder on his weapon? Sohan is standing there, looking at him and then says to him that, how much more famous do I need to be so there will be less fools like you who come and throw your lives away? Actually, there's no real need to do that since it will be best if I kill as many bastards like you as possible. After hearing this, that man says to him that, just kill me already. Sohan comes closer and sits before him and then looks into his eyes and says to him that, do you really need to die, though? I'm familiar with medicine, so I could easily save you from such injuries. But that man is looking at him quietly so Sohan again asks him, I'll ask you one last time, who sent you? Hearing his question, he thinks for a while and then when he realizes that his head was about to burst, he tells him that, it's an assassin known as Shadowless Flying Dagger, that sent, he couldn't complete his sentence when his head bursts and he falls on the ground. Both of them are lying dead on the ground and Sohan is looking at their dead bodies and then he says to himself that, Shadowless Flying Dagger, you are an assassin that was sent by another assassin? Then he looks around and again says to himself, in that case they must be observing what I'm capable of somewhere around here, then Sohan looks at his left side and then again looks at his right side meanwhile there is no one then he smiles and says, regardless he's sneaky as a rat, and saying this, his eyes turn to pink. Someone was keeping an eye on Sohan with the telescope and then says to himself that, he looked like he was about to spare him, but he killed him in the end. Then he smiles and says that, that bastard, sure is a mean fucker. Sohan is standing in his room and is looking outside the window while Sayek is standing behind him then Sohan says something to him and then hearing this, he asks him, a way to easily lure out the Sword Wolf and the Sun Dragon Association leader? Sohan replies to him, yeah. Sayek looks quite surprised and asks him, what happened in order for you to react like that? Then Sohan tells him that, someone sent an assassin after me. 
Hearing this, Sayek gets shocked and asks him, an assassin? Are you alright? Sohan hears his stupid question and looks at him and smiles saying that, would I still be here if I weren't alright? Then Sayek looks at him and replies that, that's true, I guess. Then after thinking for a while, he says to Sohan that, a way to get them to move, there's only one. Sohan looks at him with his questioning eyes and then Sayek continues saying that, it's the ruler's meat. Hearing this, Sohan looks at him and asks, the ruler's meat? Then Sayek tells him that, that gathering doesn't happen anymore but it used to take place annually in the past. When the ruler's meet took place, the leaders of the unorthodox factions of Chenyang would gather a few martial masters. Additionally, whether they can join that meeting or not determines if their organization is considered first or second rate. Listening this, Sohan asks him that, so, you want to host that meet again? And he replies with yes. Sohan likes his idea and says to him that, that's not a bad idea. I'll go on ahead then, alright. Saying this, he starts thinking about the ruler's meat. They are standing there when someone comes and knocks at the door, knock, knock. Sayek looks at the door while Sohan is lost in his thoughts and then Dogon enters the room with the food in his hands and then smiles and says to him that, Sohan, I brought food. Sohan hears his voice and then looks at him and asks, you're here? Then Sayek says to Sohan, I'll take my leave first, then. Then Sohan offers him that, eat before you go. Sayek is stunned to hear this and asks, pardon? Then Sohan again says to him that, let's eat together. Sayek is confused between whether to accept the offer or not and is looking quite worried and is thinking that, eating together with the leader? Then Sohan sits on the chair and Dogon is placing the food on the table when Sohan asks him, Chef Dogon, we have enough food, right? Dogon arranges all the food items on the table and then holding a jug of wine in his hand, he replies to him that, of course, I have brought enough wine to drink together as well. Hearing this, Sohan replies to him that, that's great. There is a variety of food on the table and a good fragrance is coming out of it while Dogon and Sohan are sitting on a chair but Sayek is still standing there, thinking what to do. Sayek is looking at them and they are also looking at him and then Sohan asks him, what are you doing? At last, Sayek makes up his mind and sits on a chair besides them and then Sohan says to both that, let's eat. And Sayek replies with okay. Then they all start eating and drinking wine and then after drinking, they all start gossiping and Dogon being drunk, starts talking rubbish and then they all start laughing meanwhile the shadowless flying dagger is looking at them while standing on a nearby building and is keeping an eye on Sohan. He is surprised at Sohan's calm and stress-free nature because despite of the fact that he's not safe, he is enjoying and drinking wine. While looking at them, he is thinking that, for someone who was almost assassinated, he's drinking wine like a madman. Moreover, he's doing that despite his knowledge of my existence. Foolish bastard. I will send you to the afterlife tonight, and remembers that time when Sohan called him a sneaky rat. After drinking, Sohan and Dogon comes out of the pavilion and Sohan wants to show him the sword dance but Dogon stops him saying that, hey, you might get injured so show it to me another day. You drank so much tonight. Dogon is walking behind him and then Sohan replies to him that, I'm totally sober. I need to keep my promise. Dogon is thinking about the promise and then, after a while, he remembers that time when Sohan was in his restaurant and while leaving from there, he said to Dogon that, once I take care of the revolving blood clan, I'll show you that sword dance, and when he remembers this, he smiles and is thinking that, right, he did say that. Sohan is standing in the courtyard looking at the sky full of stars and then he asks from Dogon, you remember our sword dance, right? Then Dogon replies to him saying, of course, but can you really do it while being this drunk? I think it would be better if you did it later. Sohan smiles and says to him that, it's alright. It'll just become a drunken sword dance. Saying this, he takes out his sword then he looks at his and then raises his sword up in the air and then rotates it in 360 degrees, moving his feet in a specific manner, performing a sword dance. He closes his eyes and then imagines a girl who is also dancing with him and then she says to him that, yeah, it's slow at first. Then it becomes a faster over time. He is enjoying and performing his dance with full concentration and then he puts his hand on the ground while bending over his knee. Then again starts performing the dance and imagines that beautiful girl is dancing with him and she is wearing a pink dress and holding a sword in her hand. Then she says to him that, now, change your steps. 
He is smiling while dancing with closed eyes and is performing so well. At the end of the performance, they are standing before each other and pointing their swords towards each other, Sohan's eyes are closed while she is looking at him and she has a beautiful face with pink eyes. Sohan is imagining that she is looking at him while smiling and then she says, salute. Then she smiles and says to him that, sleepyhead, you're so good at this. You're better than me now. I'm so proud of you. Suddenly, she disappears and Sohan opens his eyes and then he looks around because there was no one and then says to himself that, where did they all go? Dogon is amazed to see his dance and surprised as well then says to him that, wow. Sohan, that was amazing. It's the same as what I've seen in the past. Incredible. Sohan says nothing but looks at him while smiling then Dogon smiles and says to him that, let's go back in, it's cold out here. Putting his sword back, he says to him that, you should go back in first. I'll stay here for a while. Then Dogon goes inside saying, if that's the case, I'll go in. Dogon leaves and then Sohan lies on the floor while looking at the sky and is lost in his thoughts meanwhile the shadowless flying dagger is standing on a building, looking at him and is thinking that, damn it, why did he suddenly do that random shit? I can smell the alcohol all the way from here. It's like he's asking me to kill him quickly. If I can't kill him right now then I'm a fucking idiot. My hidden weapons would be way faster than a drunken bastard like him. Thinking this, he takes out the blades, he was holding in his fingers and throws them towards him saying, die. But in the meantime, Sohan dodges and protects himself from the attack by jumping from there. Those blades do not hit Sohan but get stuck in the floor and the shadowless dagger also jump from that building and is now standing on the ground meanwhile Sohan is now on the roof of that building, looking at him. He looks at him and is thinking that, he dodged them? Then he looks at Sohan who is standing there with closed eyes and then he smirks, thinking that, what a fool. He actually escaped by jumping. Now he takes out another powerful weapon. Its front looks like a snake's face and then he points it towards him saying that, you won't be able to dodge this. That weapon releases several fiber flying blades but Sohan opens his pink eyes and takes out his hand fan and uses the power immortal wind flash strike. That fan saves himself from those blades and then they all fall on the ground. Shadowless Flying Dagger is shocked to see that and while looking at Sohan, he's thinking that, what the hell is with this guy? He wasn't someone I'm a match for in the first place. They are standing before each other and Shadowless Flying Dagger is looking at his blades which are lying on the floor and is shocked to see his skills meanwhile Sohan is looking at him, while holding a fan in his hand and Flying Dagger is thinking that, I thought I had a rough grasp on how strong he is though, was I wrong? Thinking this, he takes out his sword and removes its cover while Sohan closes his fan and then says to him that, it's you, the rat bastard that was targeting me. Sohan's eyes turn to pink again meanwhile shadowless flying dagger is looking at him with anger and then suddenly, he heads towards for attack but Sohan dodges him efficiently. Now he is attacking Sohan by using different techniques but Sohan is blocking all his attacks with his fan and after using different techniques, he realizes that Sohan is much powerful than him and is thinking that, there's too much of a gap between our internal energies. Every time he blocks my attack, my whole body feels the impact but all he's doing is standing there and blocking it. But if I stop here, I'll die. I must kill him no matter what. Thinking this, he attacks Sohan with much force and jumps in the air while attacking on him but Sohan blocks this attack saying that, I guess that's all you have to show. He is stunned to see his skills and says, what? Meanwhile Sohan attacks back on him and throws him away. Blood is coming out of his mouth and face and is looking at him with anger while lying on the floor and is wondering that, that bastard, was he toying with me? Then Sohan again open his hand fan and is standing before him and he is also ready to attack again while thinking, damn it. Then Sohan calls him and says to him that, hey, is that all you have to show? Hearing this, he looks at Sohan and is thinking that, he's unbelievably strong. It's impossible for me to run away too, and his leg starts shivering. More blood comes out of his mouth and then he says to Sohan that, if you spare me, I'll cooperate with you. Sohan smiles and then says to him that, it's too late. Then he asks that, why didn't you just kill me at the start then? Sohan replies to him that, because I have got something I wanted to ask you. He is looking at him and is thinking that, was he curious about the details of the requester? Thinking this, he surrenders himself and throws his sword on the ground while sitting and then says to him that, I'll do anything you want. 
If you want me to become a dog, I'll be a dog. Sohan looks at him for a while and then holding his fan, he replies to him that, a dog, I don't need a dog like you, thought. He looks at Sohan in his poisonous dress and then loudly says that, the Sun Dragon Association leader, Lim Hazung, sent me. He hired me for 10,000 Niang. If I injured you, he'd give me an additional 5,000 Niang and an additional 10,000 Niang if I killed you. Meanwhile, Sohan is standing there, listening him quietly and then he says to him that, I see, the Sun Dragon Association leader. He asks Sohan that, are you going to spare me? Sohan throws his sword towards him saying that, this is your reward for giving me the answer so quickly. I'll grant you a painless death. Saying this, Sohan's eyes turn to pink and his face color becomes blue because of the poison and then he says, die. Sohan looks into his eyes and he is looking at him also and then under the influence of the poison, Shadowless Flying Dagger takes his sword and kills himself and before dying, he asks him, what's your name? Sohan replies that, Jean Sohan, and then he calls his name and falls on the ground and is dead meanwhile Sohan is standing there looking at him with poisoned eyes. The green flags are waving in the air and the leader of the Sun Dragon Association is sitting on a chair in his hall when a man comes and informs him about something and he's shocked to hear this and asks, the Crimson Troops assassin gave up on the commission? That man replies to him that, yes, sir. They've already returned the commission fee to us. They are saying that Jean Sohan doesn't care about beauties at all and he even managed to kill the shadowless flying dagger. The leader is shocked to hear this and asks that, the shadowless flying dagger is dead? Then that man tells him about the incident that, the mystic lunar troop quietly buried a body and when the crimson troop checked it out, they discovered that it was the shadowless flying dagger's corpse. Strangely, the result of investigating his wounds revealed that he committed suicide. The leader is confused to hear that he murdered himself and asks, suicide? Are you saying that he ate poison and committed suicide? Then he tells him that, that's not the case. It seems he used his own sword to and his own life. It's different from him committing society in order to maintain secrets. It's highly likely that he was forced to commit suicide. He is shocked as well as confused to hear this then that man tells him that, please bring forward the ruler's meat, fortunately, it seems like Jean Sohan has yet to contact any other forces. I'd like to suggest that we get all the other leaders to agree to get rid of Jean Sohan. After thinking for a while, he agrees and says to him that, all right, prepare for the ruler's meat, and he replies obediently, yes, sir. Then he goes away and he says to a girl who was standing beside him that, Mio, you mentioned that you knew a woman who used to be from the Mystic Lunar Sword Dance Troupe, didn't you? She looks at him and smiles while saying that, oh, come on. Have you forgotten that the great demoness took her in as her disciple? Hearing this, he remembers about the great demoness and says that, the great demoness, the disciple? Even if she was once from the mystic lunar trope, it will be impossible to get her away from the great demoness once she's under her. Sohan is standing while holding an invitation in his hand and is looking at it meanwhile Sayek is standing before him. He looks at the invitation for a while and then says to him, the Sun Dragon Association leader, Lim Hazung, sent me an invitation to the ruler's meet. Sayek is shocked to hear this and asks, invitation to the ruler's meet? Sohan puts it on the table and replies to him, yeah, it will be held in the Mystic Lunar Troop. Each organization is allowed to have ten participants. This time Sayek is confused to hear and asks, held in the Mystic Lunar Troop? I don't know what they are up to but we need to be careful. Then Sohan asks him, you said that the ruler who held the first ruler's meet died, right? And he replies with yes. Then Sohan asks another question that, then why do they host the rulers meet from time to time, despite knowing that fact? Sayek tells him that, it's because of the strong competitive spirit that the unorthodox faction has. They hate getting their egos bruised more than dying. Sohan completes his sentence, saying, which is why most of the unorthodox faction die before they are 30 years old. Sayek is standing there remembering about how Sohan fought with his enemies and Sohan is looking at him with questioning eyes. Then Sayek says, I don't think that's something you should be saying. Hearing this, Sohan closes his eyes while smiling and replies to him, Chu Sayek, what will you do if you meet someone that you can't defeat, and he replies to him that, I don't know. Shouldn't I at least try to fight him? But Sohan interrupts him saying, no, you must run away no matter what. Grow stronger and then aim for an opportunity to take that person down. 
Sayek is looking at him with confusion and asks, what should I do if I can't run away, and then he tells him, in that case, you'll have to fight. If that does happen then you need to forget about the difference in internal energy levels of martial arts prowess. Fight with the sole intention of ripping your enemy apart with your hands. Sayek looks at his serious face for a while and then replies to him, I'll be sure to remember that. There is a big conference room and six people are sitting in two rows before each other when Sohan enters the room and asks, is everyone here? All of them reply simultaneously, yes, troop leader. Sohan is standing there while looking at their faces and is hiding a bottle behind him and then he looks at their faces and is wondering dear eyes look like they have got some fighting spirit now. Then he takes out that bottle and says to them, I called you guys here to have a drink today. We are finally drinking together. You guys did well getting beaten up this whole time. All of them are looking at him with surprise and happiness then he removes the lid of the bottle and says to them, everyone, raise your bowl. They are all now standing while holding their bowls in their hands and then he pours the drink in one glass and says, as you all know tomorrow's the rulers meet. All of the Chenyang's unorthodox faction's elite martial artists will be here and they are coming after the eastern dark street. Then he pours the drink in another glass and says, however, there is only the six of you here. They are all looking nervous while holding the bowls in their hands and then Sohan asks them, are you guys nervous? Asking this, he goes to his table and then pours a drink in his bowl and then while lifting it, he says to them, the rulers meet will be done by the leaders so the numbers of fighting forces doesn't make much of a difference. Therefore, just make sure that you guys stay alive, and all of them are looking at him quietly then he ensures them that, I will take care of the rest. Now they are all looking satisfied and calm and replies simultaneously, yes, troop leader. Then they all starts drinking. Next day, the flags of different clans are being hosted for the rulers meet and different leaders are arriving at the mystic lunar troop along with their members and each one of them are holding the flag of their clan as an identity. The clan leader are standing in the front meanwhile the other members are standing behind them. The Sun Dragon Association, North Wind Sword Wolves, Five Poison Clan, Dark Spirit Clan and Eagle Clan are participating in the rulers meet. The Sun Dragon Association leader says, it seems like everyone's here, let's go in. As promised, only ten people can enter from each group. The rest will have to wait here. Sword Wolf, no complaints there, right? He looks at him with a side eye and replies, no. Then the Sun Dragon Association leader says to the Five Poison Clan's leader, Five Poison, please lead the way. The leader of the Five Poison Clan is older among them and is an old man so as a gesture of respect, they asked him to lead them and he replies to them, all right. They all enters the mystic lunar troop where Sayek is standing at the entrance for their welcome and when he sees them, he greets, saying, Sirs, I'm mystic lunar troops phantom sword squad captain, Chu Sayek. We have prepared for the meet on the second floor. There'll be six chairs in total for all the leaders. Hearing this, all of them are looking at him with surprise and are wondering, they want our subordinates to wait on the first floor then. Then Chu Sayek says to them, I'll lead you guys to the room. You guys wait here. Sayek leads them to the room where the meeting will held and they are stunned to see that the room is empty and Sohan is not present there for their welcome. All of them are looking at the round table around which six chairs are present and the room is empty. The Dark Spirit Clan leader is thinking, he is not here. Meanwhile the Five Poison Clan's leader is wondering, I thought he'd be waiting here. Then Sayek says to them, please take a seat. I'll bring our troop leader here. The Sun Dragon Association leader is looking at him with anger meanwhile the North Wind Sword Wolf Clan's leader is confused and the Sun Dragon Association leader is thinking, he's only going to get him here now? This common practice is for the highest ranking person to show up last. We got outdone by that Jean Sohun bastard. Impudent bastard. The Five Poison Clan leader laughs and says to them, ho ho ho, how interesting. Let's all take a seat first. Apparently, he looks calm but deep inside he is an evil. Then they all sits on the chairs and are waiting for Sohan. After a few moments pass, Sohan comes downstairs saying, everyone thanks for coming. The Sun Dragon Association leader is wondering, is that Jean Sohan? He's the younger than I thought. Sohan stands before them and introduces himself, I'm Jean Sohan. All of them are angry at his tone and are thinking, how dare a young brat like him speak casually to us. 
Sohan sits on a chair with an attitude that everyone is shocked at his behavior and they are all looking at him mean while he is also looking at them, then finally the five poison clan leader says to him, ho ho ho, troop leader Jean, congratulations on taking over the eastern dark street by killing the revolving blood clan leader. Sohan replies to him, that wasn't anything great. Then again that old man asks him, based on what I heard, you took everything from the revolving blood clan? And Sohan replies to him politely that, that's right. Then the five poison clan leader smiles and asks another question, do you think that you took everything? Sohan does not get his point and is looking at him quietly then he again says to him, in order to completely take over this land, you need to be both strong and also able to rule over it but most of the revolving blood clan has been dispersed all over, and Sohan replies, that's right. The five poison continues, telling him, so the supply of Nepenthe's plant that was supplied by the revolving blood clan had stopped. The five poison clan was the biggest buyer of that plant so now we have lost a lot of profits. That's not all. The revolving blood clan leader also bought various poisons from us in large quantities from time to time. I lost my customer. Hearing this, Sohan remembers about the time when the revolving blood clan leader said to him, Sleepyhead, your poison won't work on us since we ate the antidote, and is thinking that, I guess the five poison clan sold the antidote to him. All of them are listening to their conversation quietly and then again the five poison clan leader says to them, listen up. It's a fact that all the unorthodox groups gathered here fight each other a lot however when it comes to business, we could be said to be one big community. That's why we've gathered here and that brings me to this troop leader Jean. I'm thinking of starting the Nepenthes plant business here in the eastern dark street. What do you think? Saying this, he looks at the Sohan with his green evil eyes and Sohan is also looking at him. When Sohan understands his intentions, he smiles a little and replies to him, in the end you simply want to occupy a part of the eastern dark street. The dark spirit clan leader gets angry at this and punches on the table with great force and replies to him, you are being rude there. Do you think anyone here deserves to be taken talked down to by you? Sohan replies to him that, I'm rude? I doubt you guys are here to criticize how I speak. Shall we stop sitting around and talking like orthodox factions and get to the point? All of them are looking at him anger mean while he is looking at them with side eyes and then Sohan says to them, it seems like everyone is waiting to see what happens so I'll put it out there first. You guys have two choices. Each of you can take turns to come to me or you can all come at me together. Saying this, Sohan's eyes turn to pink becoming poisonous and the poison is coming out of his body in the form of pink flames and he's sitting boldly, looking at them. Sohan is sitting before them while putting his one leg over the other and says to them with quite an angry face, you can all come at me together. All of the clan leaders are looking at him with side eyes and are stunned to see his confidence. All of them are quiet I'm thinking what to do then after a while North Wind Sword Wolf clan leader asks Sohan, what are the two choices? Then Sohan tells him that, taking turns to fight me would be a one-on-one -on -one fight between martial artists. Following the traditions of the unorthodox faction, the winner will be chosen in the fight and the loser will have to serve the winner. After hearing this, there is a complete silence in the room and no one is speaking then Sword Wolf asks, in that case, everyone attacking you together means. Sohan interrupts him saying, if you guys all attack me together then I'll kill all of you. Sohan says this with quite an attitude that everyone in the room is stunned to hear this and thinking, he'll kill all of us? Suddenly the Sohan's eyes turn to pink and the pink poisonous flames starts to blow out from his body and then he says to them while smiling, honestly, I hope that you guys will all charge at me together. The leaders of Dark Spirit and Eagle Clan are wondering that, why the hell is he that confident? Meanwhile the Five Poison Clan leader and Sun Dragon Association leader is wondering that, is he saying that he's capable of killing all of us at once? The North Wind Sword Wolf laughs loudly and then he stands up while putting his one hand on the table and Sohan is looking at him with anger and then Sword Wolf takes his sword and hits it on the floor between his legs and then says to him while holding it in his hands, Troop Leader Dan, I, the Sword Wolf, would like to fight with you one on one. Hearing this, Sohan gets up from his chair and then looks at him and says, come here. Both of them are standing at the side and are ready for the fight then Sword Wolf, with his angry face, raises his sword high in the air and then attacks on him meanwhile Sohan also takes out his sword that he keeps with him every time and then there is a clash between their swords. Sword Wolf is fighting but Sohan is only defending himself while standing at a place and all the other leaders are looking at their fight. 
Then So Hun takes out his both swords and attacks on him using his martial arts skills and Sword Wolf is trying his best to stop and defense himself and while defending when So Hun's sword starts beating his sword then he gets shocked to see that and is wondering that, what just happened? My weapon is a lot heavier, it should be hard for him to receive my attacks with that light weapon. This means he's way stronger than I am. The Sword Wolf is only using his one big and heavy sword meanwhile So Hun is using two sword but are smaller in size than him. The Five Poison Clan leader is looking and their fight and is thinking that, the Sword Wolf is being pushed back. The Dark Spirit is looking at the Sword Wolf's condition and he realizes that, if he's able to push the Sword Wolf back, then I have no chance in a one-on-one -on -one at all. This is our chance while the Sword Wolf is creating the openings. Thinking this, he looks at the Five Poison and then takes out his sword as a gesture of getting ready for the attack. Sword Wolf is fighting bravely but when he realizes that he can't defeat Sohun, then says to himself that, at this rate, I won't last very long. I need to create an opening. Thinking this, he attacks on him with greater force and then also the Dark Spirit as well as five poison attacks on Sohun from the other side at the same time. Sword Wolf uses Wolf Phantom Concentrated Slash meanwhile Dark Spirit uses Dark Phantom Flying Threads and five poison uses five poison ricochet. Sword Wolf is attacking him from front meanwhile the other two are attacking him from behind using their special techniques and powers. When Sohun realizes that he is being attacked from both sides, he just smiles meanwhile the Sun Dragon Association and the Eagle Clan leader are shocked to see this and then Sohun uses his martial arts techniques to stop their attacks as well and suddenly cuts down the Dark Spirit's hat and also somehow manages to defeat Dark Spirit but five poison attacks on his side and then that that was the only attack. That injured Sohun and blood is coming out from the side of his chest and five poison is. Happy to see that and thinking, I got him. All of them are stunned at this but that old brat is laughing like an evil and then stands before Sohun and says to him, while you are pretty strong now that you have been poisoned by my five poison, you won't be able to last much longer, but Sohun is standing there quietly and then looks at him with his angry pink eyes and then says to Sun Dragon Association leader and Eagle Clan leader that, you too. Have you still not made your decisions? There is a blood on Sohun's cheek and then suddenly his eyes start to glow like an evil and pink poisonous flames starts to blow out and the Sun Dragon and Eagle Clan are wondering, he was testing us. He was testing to see what we'll do after he showed signs of being poisoned. The Eagle Clan leader looks at the situation and his power as well and then after thinking for a while, he bends down over his knees and says to Sohun, the Eagle Clan will serve under you, Mystic Lunar Troop Leader. The Sun Dragon Association leader also accepts this and says, Troop Leader Dan, the Sun Dragon Association will serve under you and we apologize for hiring assassins to go after you. We'll accept any punishment you have for us. The Sword Wolf also accepts his defeat and says, Since I lost too, I'll serve you as well. That old creep is shocked at their confessions and says to them, What are you guys doing? He's been poisoned by my five poison, but Sohun ignores his nonsense and calls them, Sun Dragon Association, Eagle Clan, North Wind Sword Wolves, and they all reply obediently, yes, troop leader. Then Sohun orders them, kill the five poison clan leader. He is shocked to hear this and says immediately, you must have gone crazy because of the five poisons. There's no way they will follow the orders of a dying person. They all reply to him with obedience that, we'll follow your orders. Suddenly, Five Poison's face turned to pale because he can see his death near and then says, what? Pull yourselves together. He'll be dying soon, moronic fools. All of them are under the influence of the Sohun's poison and takes out their swords for the purpose of killing Five Poison and at the same time, Five Poison is shocked and pondering that, how did it come to this? Sohun is looking at them quietly with those pink poisonous eyes. And then says to them, are you guys out of your mind? He's been poisoned by the five poisons and will soon die without an antidote. After hearing this, the Sun Dragon Association leader somehow agrees with him and is wondering, yeah, that could happen but how can someone who's been poisoned look like that? He looks more like a demon who's out to devour us. Thinking this, all of them are standing near him and are ready for the attack and then they are all attacking him simultaneously but again that old brat uses his five poison skills to defend himself from the attack and loudly says, stop, you fools. All of them are attacking him from three sides and the Sun Dragon is thinking, no, you're the fool for not getting a grasp of our situation right now, and then he looks at Sohun's poisonous evil eyes and says to himself that, he hasn't been poisoned. He's actually testing our abilities. 
If we can't prove our usefulness here, we'll die. If I, who sent an assassin after him, want to survive then I must defeat you with my own hands. Thinking this, Sun Dragon attacks him with greater force and uses Sun Dragon decisive strike and attacks on him and while defending himself, the five poison says, shit. And then his hand cuts off and then North Wind Sword Wolf attacks him from behind and stabs him in the chest and also the Eagle Clan's leader attacks from behind and he is being attacked from three sides. The blood comes out from his mouth and then Sun Dragon plays his last shot and attacks on him and eventually his head cuts off and is now separate from the body and the body is lying on the floor upside down. All of them are standing there looking at him mean Hei Sohan is standing at a distance and is also looking at them with pink eyes and after killing the five poison, they all greets him as the martial artists do and then Sun Dragon says to the troop leader that, I have killed the five poisons clan leader as per your orders. Sohan looks at him for a while and then moves towards him and calls his name, Sun Dragon Association Leader, and he replies obediently, yes, then Sohan tells him, you were the one supposed to die in this ruler's meet. I'm sure you know the reason for that. The Sun Dragon Association Leader is both short and frightened at the same time and immediately sits over his knees and begs for mercy saying, I know that. I apologize for that once again. Sohan replies to him, I'll be watching you. He is pleased at his generosity and bows his head down and says to the leader, Yes, sir. Then Sohan passes by him and comes to the other two and calls their names, North Wind Sword Wolf and Eagle Clan Leader, and both of them reply simultaneously, Yes, Troop Leader. Then Sohan says to them, Withdraw your troops. Have a drink with me. Both of them replies obediently, Yes, Troop Leader. Then Sohan leaves from there saying, let's go, and Sun Dragon is still sitting on his toes and is quiet while thinking that why he doesn't ask him for a drink when Sohan calls him and he replies with yes and then Sohan orders him, get up and follow us. He gets up and greets him saying, thank you, troop leader. At night, in the mystic lunar troop, Sohan along with other three clan leaders is sitting on a table and they were drinking when they all becomes unconscious meanwhile Sohan is sitting there, looking at them and drinking and thinking about them, I got them to submit to me by strength, unlike the phantom sword clan warriors. I must either kill off them or overwhelm them and rule over them. No I must choose between killing them or giving them a chance to work with me. I'll spare them for now. Suddenly, Sword Wolf and Sun Dragon wakes up and Sohan asks them, are you guys up? Both of them are shocked because they suddenly became unconscious but Sohan pours a drink in his glass and is sitting peacefully. The Sun Dragon Association leader touches his forehead and pondering, how long did I sleep for? Did the other two fall asleep as well? Poison? Did we get poisoned unknowingly? He is stunned after thinking this and both of them are shocked and they understood the situation and then while taking his glass, Sohan says to them, I didn't wake you guys up since you were sleeping so soundly. The Sun Dragon looks frightened and says, my apologies, and is thinking, if he had tried to kill us while we were asleep, and Sword Wolf is thinking, we would have died without knowing how we died. Sohan is looking at them with his blue eyes while drinking wine and both of them seems confused. Then suddenly Eagle Clan's leader wakes up and says, oh gosh. My apologies, I fell asleep unknowingly. Sohan replies to him, don't worry about it. Sohan's thinking that, they should know by now that I can take their lives at any time. All of them are busy are thinking when Sohan says to them, where did we stop? The Sun Dragon Association, didn't you say that you have got something you wanted to tell me? The Sun Dragon gets confused for a while and then replies to him that, yes, I remember it now. I was going to tell you about a mystic lunar sword dance troop survivor. Sohan gets angry and looks at him with side eyes and asks, a mystic lunar sword dance troop survivor? Then he tells him that, yes, she is the lowest ranking martial artist so no one knew her very well but she's been accepted as the great demoness disciple. Sohan is stunned to hear that and asks, the great demoness took her in as a disciple? What's her name? This time, the sun dragon stops for a while and then gets confused and says to him, I think she used a fake name, I can't remember it now. Sohan looks at him for a while and then says to him boldly, sun dragon association leader, why do you expecting me to fight with the great demoness by offering this information? He suddenly gets frightened at this and replies, of course not. I heard that you were looking for survivors. If you fight the great demoness I'll join you in fighting her as well. Then Sohan asks another question that, do you know where the great demoness is right now? Sun Dragon replies, I'll instruct my subordinates to look for her, 
while the Sword Wolf tells him that, there were rumors that she's somewhere in the Chang'an unorthodox faction territory so you will find her in no time. This time, Sohun gets a little bit angry and tells them, the great demoness only takes in beautiful woman as disciples. Of course, they must be virgins as well. It's said that she kills disciples that have lost their virginity except for her high standards of beauty, there's nowhere to know what she'll do. As to who she'll spare or kill. Even if they are extremely beautiful, she will still kill them. She will kill them if they are impolite. She basically does whatever she wants that's why she is a demon and a lunatic even though she's fucking nuts she's called the great demoness because she's strong. In the future, the unorthodox faction will not call her the great demoness. They all understands what Sohun tells them and now they are also quite angry at her cruel behavior and replies to him, yes, troop leader. Sohun punches on the table with a great force and his eyes turn pink and is thinking, they're only disciples in name. The great demoness doesn't teach them martial artists. She simply grows their internal energy to a certain extent before absorbing them to maintain her youth. I don't know who became her disciple but I must save her. The very next day, Chu Sayek along with his four soldiers is standing before Sohan in the mystic lunar dance troops courtyard and then Sohan asks them, what do you guys think after seeing the abilities of the leaders yesterday? All of them are quiet and looking confused then looking at their faces, Sohan continues saying, you now know why you need to become stronger, right? One of them replies, yes, troop leader. Sohan motivates them saying, no need to be disappointed. Unorthodox factions need to grow and not their martial arts, but their bonds with one another, to become stronger. In the process of doing that, you guys all have a role that you have to play. Sayek looks at him with weird expressions and replies, yes, troop leader. Then Sohan tells them that, and you guys are under me, not the leaders. Of course, you should still treat them with due respect since they have their positions. Remember this whenever you are doing things from now on. After listening the orders, all of them replies simultaneously, yes, troop leader. Now, this time Sohan says with a bold face that, and I'll meet with the demoness. All of them gets frightened for a while after hearing this and are looking at his face then Sayek asks, the demoness? You mean the great demoness from the four great demons, and Sohan replies with yeah. Hearing this, all of them gets more frightened and confused and looking at their faces Sohan asks them, what's wrong? This Sayek replies to him that, it's because I'm concerned. It's not that I don't trust in your abilities but the four great demons are people that even orthodox factions have trouble catching. Then Sohan replies to him, yeah, that's what the four great demons are but that nickname will soon become the three great demons. At night, in the Chang'an unorthodox faction, Riverside Azure Plum Pavilion, the moon is shining brightly and its reflection can be seen in the water and there is a beautiful pavilion near the river. Sohan is sitting there holding a glass in his hand and is lost in his thoughts. He remembers when Sayek said to him, Troop leader, the great demoness is said to have been spotted in the Chang'an unorthodox faction's territory. That's what was in the Sun Dragon Association leader's message. While remembering this, he's wondering while looking at the moon that, it's been a month since I've been here but I still can't find the great demoness. I wonder who did she take as her disciple. Based on what my master said to me, the great demoness absorbs the core energy of her disciples to maintain her youth and become stronger. I need to save them quickly before that happens. Meanwhile he is lost in his thoughts, a beautiful woman with big green eyes appears from somewhere and calls him saying, Sir, why are you sitting here alone? If you are alright with it, would you like to drink with me? Sohan replies rudely, get lost. I said get lost. Sohan looks at her with side eyes who is standing behind him and then leaves from there with a red face because of her insult, saying, seriously how absurd. Sohan's thinking that, how annoying. The two girls are sitting at a quite distance from Sohan and are looking at him then one girl says to other, senior sister, another woman has been rejected by that man. How many has it been already? The other girl which has red eyes and is holding a glass of wine in her hand, says to the junior sister, junior sister, don't bother yourself with trivial things and just focus on drinking. The junior one has gorgeous hair with beautiful big brown eyes and both of them are damn beautiful. Then she replies to her, I want to do that too but he keeps attracting my attention. Honestly, he is quite handsome, isn't he? This time, the senior sister says harshly, that's enough, and she immediately smiles and replies, alright. 
The senior one looks at her glass of wine with confusion and then suddenly drinks it while her younger sister is looking at her and says to her, you look like a little strange today. Did something happen? You suddenly said you don't want to go back and you are also drinking so much alcohol even though master told us to never drink. You look like you have a lot of worries. She is quietly listening to her and then replies, junior sister, and she replies with, yes? Then she continues saying, have you ever seen how the other senior sisters die? This time, she looks quite shocked and says, no. The master says that they are either dead because they got caught by the sex demon, one of the four great demons, or killed by the orthodox factions. She replies, yeah, that's what she said. Meanwhile in her min, she's thinking that, the truth is I've never seen how they died before. None of us have ever seen how our senior sisters died all this time. Maybe they were killed by master? Meanwhile she is lost in her thoughts, a woman who is dressed like them, appears there and says, senior sister, there you are. She looks at her and then taunts her, staying, look who this is, isn't that the second disciple that master? She couldn't complete her sentence when she interrupts her, saying, I pay my respects to you, senior sister. Master's looking for you? That second disciple has beautiful green eyes and she looks innocent then the senior sister replies to her, showing her the bottle of wine, is that so? I'll get up after finishing this. Since you are here, sit down and have a glass too, but she replies with worry that, you need to leave right away. She's very infuriated. The senior sister gets angry and smashes a bottle on the table and says, Junior sister damn, are you disregarding me right now? You want to drink this quietly or do you want to drink it after a fight? Junior sister replies obediently, I need to drink this today no matter what. What do you want to do? The second disciple finally agrees and sits on a chair while the junior one says to her, Senior sister, sit down over here. The other says to her, you should have done that from the start. The second disciple replies, I can't seem to get along with you. I wonder it's because you were saved from a nameless unorthodox sect? Junior sister, look at that expression offers. So Hun is listening to their conversation and wondering, a nameless unorthodox sect? The junior sister says to the senior sister, second senior sister's face is always the same. They are busy in their gossip when Sohun comes there and asks, can I join you guys? Sohun is standing there quietly with a bold face and all of them are looking at him then the senior sister smirks and asks, what's with that cliché way of asking? That's the most cliché thing I've heard all day. The junior one replies, master told us to not mix around with men, but the second senior sister is quietly listening to their conversation and Sohun's thinking, I came here because I thought they might be referring to the Sun Dragon Association as the nameless unorthodox sect, since her master asked them not to mix around with men, there's a high chance that they're the great demonist disciples. They look quite young. I wonder if she's an orphan that was taken in by the sword dance troupe after I was kidnapped. It doesn't matter. If she's a sword dance troops orphan then I have to save her. While thinking that, So Hun was looking at the second senior and when the senior sister notices this, she says to him while drinking, it seems you are interested in the second junior sister. If that's the case, take a seat. The second senior gets infuriated at this and shouts, senior sister. So Hun sits there with them and says to them, drinks are on me. The senior sister being naughty, says to So Hun, I have tons of money too. So Hans looks at her with side eye and smiles while saying, I'll let you treat me then, but she replies immediately, that won't do. So Hun is confused at this and wondering, what does she want then? The senior sister asks, who are you? Are you acting like this despite knowing who we are? So Hun replies, I'm here for women. This time, she frowns and asks, what? Who the hell do you think we are? So Hun realizes his mistake and replies, that's not what I meant. I'm here to look for a woman disguised as a man in the Sun Dragon Association. The second senior sister gets shocked and frightened after hearing this but the senior sister looks at her expressions and asks angrily, what? Do you know him? So Hun is also looking at her and thinking, was I right about her? Then So Hun tells them that, I'm from the Mystic Lunar Sword Dance Troupe. My nickname is Sleepyhead. I wonder if you remember that name? She is still looking at him with puzzled eyes and asks, Sleepyhead? You are Sleepyhead? So Hun is looking at her with a smiling face. So Hun looks at her with a smiling face and replies to her, Yeah, it's me, Sleepyhead. Who are you? 
She introduces herself saying, Damn wool. Sohan suddenly stops smiling and asks with confusion, Damn wool? Then she tells him that, I joined the sword dance troupe after you disappeared. Saiwal, who used to treat me really nicely, talked to me about you frequently. He had always missed you and said that he wished to see you. Hearing this, Sohan remembers something and then says to her, you're a friend that he cared a lot about. In that case you're my friend as well. She is shocked at the word friend and is wondering, his friend? Even though this is the first time we've met. He really is just like what I've heard from the sword dance troop members. Thinking this, she starts blushing and then replies to him, thank you for saying that I'm your friend, sleepyhead. The senior sister and the junior sister are shocked to see that she is crying and then the junior sister says to the other, first senior sister, second senior sister's crying. Then the second senior sister says to Sohan, but you should leave now. If my master hears that you are with us, then you won't be safe from her. Then she says to senior sister while greeting her in a specific manner that, first senior sister, please don't tell master about word just happened here. I'd like to ask this of you as your foolish junior sister. The senior sister is looking at her face with surprise and is thinking, she, who always looked emotionless, is now asking me for a favor. Sohan along with the three girls are sitting at a table I'm the senior sister is looking at her quietly then after thinking for a while, she says, all right. Then Sohan asks, your master is the great demoness, right? After hearing this, all of them are looking at him with surprise and shock but he continues saying, the cultivation technique that you use should be the golden jade mystic art then. You must have heard from your master that only virgin females that haven't had intercourse with males can accumulate internal energy quickly via the origin purity mystic art. Is that so? The junior sister asks with sudden shock, how do you know that? Then Sohan replies, however, you probably haven't heard that the great demoness actually absorbs the internal energy of the virgin woman. She doesn't just absorb your internal energy but also your core energy. The Origin Purity Mystic Art's original name was Origin Purity Demonic Art. Those three young ladies are stunned to hear this and the junior one says, that's not possible. Why would master, but the other two are looking ashamed. Then she says to senior sister, first senior sister, say something. That person is speaking rashly about our master, but she doesn't reply to her and then she frowns and looks at the other and asks, damn wool, why aren't you surprised? Did you know about it too? Damn wool with her head down, replies, no. I didn't know the details but I did think that it was strange because Aster doesn't age. Junior sister asks her harshly, what do you mean by that? Second senior sister, are you saying that he's speaking the truth? But she is feeling guilty and doesn't reply to her. Suddenly, the master appears there and says loudly that, my disciples, where are you? When they all hears her voice, they suddenly get frightened and then the second senior sister says to Sohan, my master is here. Please hide, but Sohan is sitting there quietly. Then the senior sister says to him, you should leave quickly as damn wool said. If you delay any further, you might lose your life. Sohan instead of hiding or leaving, takes a bottle of wine and starts pouring it in the glass and damn wool loudly says to him, sleepyhead, this isn't the time for you to be drinking alcohol, but he keeps drinking. The four great demons great demoness comes there and she is covering her face with a net cloth and has red eyes. She is young and beautiful and is wearing heels. She is standing behind Sohan and when Sohan feels her presence, then he's thinking, to think she'd come here personally. The other three bows down a little and greets her saying, we pay our respects to you, master. She asks them, my disciples, what's happening here? The senior sister replies immediately, he suddenly wanted to join us at our table while drinking uncle. We were sending him away. He's not someone you need to pay attention to. Hearing this, the great demoness smiles and asks, is that so? To think he'd try to hit on my disciples, kill that insolent bastard. All of them are confused but then the senior sister says, I think he belongs to the Chang'an unorthodox faction. I think things would get complicated if we killed someone from the Chang'an unorthodox faction. The master looks quite nervous and replies, it can't be that, and she replies to her, yes, master. The master's eyes start to glow and then she says, it seems you have been pretty defiant these days. That happens often when people learn mystic art. The senior sister is thinking, she knows that I'm not behaving the same lately. 
Then she says, this is great timing since someone from the Chang'an unorthodox faction should be pretty skilled. Kill him to unburden your heart. If you do that, I will forgive you for what happened today, but she instead of obeying her, replies to her, I can't believe that a master would ask her own disciple to kill an innocent person so easily. The great demoness is stunned and asks, what? But Sohan is sitting there, pouring an alcohol in his glass and is feeling relaxed. Dam Wool is looking at him and wondering that, what the hell is he doing? The great demoness is standing downstairs and says with anger that, interesting. Are you saying that despite knowing who I am? Sohan finishes his drink and looks behind and says to her with arrogance, step away from me. Your rogue smell is so thick that it spoils my appetite for a drink. For a while, the master is shocked and the disciples are still bowing in a greeting position and then the master laughs loudly and touches her veil, saying that, it seems you are a total nutcase. But Sohan doesn't even bother to look at her face and is sitting there quietly looking at a random spot. She places her white leg besides him and then removing her veil, she says to him, I wonder how should I rip you up so that my anger can be appeased. The great demoness thinks that she is very beautiful and is wondering that, I know of men like you. Up until the point of your death, all of you react the same way after seeing my face. You won't even know how you died. Sohan looks at her, smiling and then says to her, Wear that veil of yours again and did you not hear me asking you to get lost? The great demoness gets infuriated at this and then moves her arms in a specific manner as the martial artists do and when he sees that, he also gets ready for a fight and then there is a clash between their powers and because of that clash, the table falls apart. There is a huge clash between their powers and Sohan is using his poisonous skills while the great demoness is also using her special powers. The great demoness attacks on him but he dodges and flies from there and lands on the roof of the pavilion. The disciples are shocked to see that scene and the demoness while taking out her sword, says, not bad. Did you intentionally approach my disciples? Where are you from? Sohan takes out his swords and she is stunned to see his swords and asks, dual crescent blade? You are the disciple of the poison demon? But Sohan is standing there, smiling. Sohan is standing there smiling and pink poisonous light is present all around his body when the great demoness asks, you are the disciple of the poison demon? All the three girls are shocked at her question and the senior sister is wondering, the poison demon is one of the four great demons, the same as master, meanwhile Dam Wool looks worried as well and is thinking that, he's the disciple of the poison demon? The great demoness smirks and looks at him with her beautiful red eyes and then says to Sohan, I was wondering where the poison demon went. I guess he was training his own disciple. Saying this, she loudly says, poison demon, don't send your disciple here, come out right away. The great demoness is wearing red beautiful clothes and her disciples are wearing full white dresses but four of them are young and beautiful. Sohan is standing on the roof of a building and he's holding his dual crescent blades and a half moon is shining brightly behind him. Then he smiles a little and tells her, he's not here. The great demoness smiles at this and asks him, he's not here? How dare you provoke me when your master isn't even here? Sohan's eyes turn to pink being poisonous and then he replies to her that, that doesn't really matter because I don't need my master to be able to deal with you. The great demoness gets infuriated at his answer looks angry then says, what? Arrogant bastard. Saying this, she attacks on him with her hundred dragon whip and throws it towards him but he jumps from there and gets succeeded in dodging her attack. Sohan started jumping from one place to another and she keeps attacking on him at last the whole roof was broken down and Sohan was standing on that pile of the broken roof then he jumps off from that building on the floor. Now, he is standing before the great demoness and she while looking at him, is thinking, it doesn't matter if the poison demon continues to hide himself. If I drive this kid into a corner, he'll appear by himself. Thinking this, she again raises her whip in the air and attacks on him saying, keep trying to dodge my attacks then. Sohan tries to block her attack and is trying to reduce the distance between them and when she realizes that, she smiles and thinks, he's trying to reduce the distance between us so I can't use the hundred dragons whip easily? Not a chance. She again add on him but he's trying his best to defend and also gets a cut on his face. He then uses his dual crescent blade and does a back flip and then stands on the floor with a great force and places his sword on the floor in such a way that it creates a crack in the floor and then uses his poison energy. She looks at him and then smiles, while thinking that, fool. I can't believe he charged in here so reckless. 
He might be the poison demon's disciple, but he's still just a kid. Sohan moves towards her and she raises her whip in the air and attacks on him but Sohan looks at the whip and dodges it in a way that the whip hits the ground and breaks the tiles of the floor. The great demoness is moving her whip around by using different techniques and this time the whip hits his arm and his arm gets injured and she is feeling proud at her successful shot. She again makes another successful move and this time hits on his thigh and blood comes out then another move and this time whip hits on his hand cuts it. She is moving whip and making moves one by one and then for the one more time, the whip puts a bruise on his chest and he is getting angry at this and tries to move towards her. The great demoness smiles and is thinking that, he keeps charging recklessly that means he wants to reduce the distance and use poison on me? I won't let that happen. Thinking this, she uses much force and her eyes start to glow and then suddenly a huge clash takes place and the smoke starts to blow out. The three sisters are shocked because they thought that their master defeated Sohan but Sohan is sitting there, between the smoke on the ground with his injured body and when the great demoness looks at him, she says to him, it seems you still have enough strength to stand up. I praise you for being able to last this long. Sohan is looking at her smiling face with his pink poisonous eyes and is wondering, is fighting one of the four great demons too hard? Not only does she not allow me to get close, she's also not allowing me to use any poison arts but this is fun. When the great demonist sees him smiling even in that worst situation, she gets angry and is wondering that, he's smiling in his current situation? He must be a lunatic. He's like one of the four great demons in that case. She gets infuriated in using her powers, her whip becomes more powerful than before and the current is roaming around the whip and she throws it toward Sohan, saying, I'll fight you seriously now. But Sohan, using his dual crescent blades tries to defend himself but her attack was so powerful that it was difficult for him to block. The great demoness while attacking him, breaks the pillars of the nearby building and then its roof, using her whip. In between all this, Sohan is trying to protect himself and is blocking her attacks then she holds a big of the building with her hundred dragon whip and pulls it with the greater force that the base of the building shatters and it collapses on the ground where Sohan was standing. Dam Wool and the other two are stunned to see that but Dam Wool is worried about Sleepyhead. There is a black smoke everywhere and the great demoness is standing there looking at the smoke and then she says that, it seems the poison demon put a lot of effort into training you but this is as far as you go. She was enjoying her success when suddenly the pink poisonous energy comes out from that smoke, towards her and she is shocked to see that and says, poison energy? Saying this, she tries to protect herself from the poison energy but because of the great force, she couldn't resist and falls apart. She is angry and is thinking that, he's able to use such powerful poison energy? Then she sees the black shadow of Sohan with the poison energy coming out of his body and he's standing between the smoke with his angry pink eyes. This time, she gets little frightened but in no time, Sohan moves towards her for the attack. The great demoness is stunned to see him getting closer to her and he with his poisonous eyes and dual crescent blades in his hands, moves towards her for the purpose of attacking. She is looking at him and thinking that, shit, he closed in. Sohan moves his swords in the air and passes the poison energy to her meanwhile she also moves her whip and passes the power to him then both the energies collapse. She is using all her might but his poison energy is defeating her power and she is stunned to see that. One more attack and this time, his poison energy hits her shoulder but she dodges it quickly and somehow saves herself from his attack and it hits the nearby building and destroys it. She looks at that building and then asks him with anger that, you were hiding your true abilities? But instead of replying, he smiles and attacks one more time using his poison energy and is heading towards her while running. She raises her whip in the air and calls him bastard. She attacks on him with her whip but he dodges the attacks efficiently and protects himself and is looking at her with his pink eyes and he's trying to figure out the situation. He keeps moving towards her and while looking at him, she's thinking that, he's fast. She becomes infuriated this time and jumps in the air and attacks on him with much greater force that there is a huge clash which produced a dense smoke everywhere and then she lands back on the ground but he is standing between that smoke, covering his shoulders with his hands for the purpose of protecting them. The blood is dripping on the floor and then he says to her boldly, Demoness, I'll present your body that's full of sins as a present to my master for him to experiment on. He smiles with his horrifying eyes and she is turned to hear his words and his thinking, he wants to turn me into the poison demon's lab rat? How is he so confident when he's in such bad shape? Did I get poisoned already? 
No, I'm sure I blocked it with the tornado whip but what's with his confidence? Thinking this, makes her angrier and she holds her whip tightly and then attacks him saying, shut up. This time, she wraps her whip around his sword meanwhile he is looking at his sword with side eye and then she pulls the sword towards her in a way that he also gets along with his sword. Then, raising her hand up in the air and producing some kind of power, she says to him angrily, I'll rip you apart. Sohan smirks and loosens his grip over this sword and that sword moves towards her with a very high speed and looking at that she is wondering, he let go of his weapon? As soon as she gets distracted, he moves towards her for the purpose of attacking but she immediately sees him and defends herself. Sohan gets closer and uses his poison energy and places his palm before her and then he holds her from her neck and she is stunned to see that but he smiles and says to her, gotcha. Sohan is holding her from neck mean while she is thinking that, did I actually fall for such a trick? Sohan tighten up his grip and then his eyes turn to black and says to her, from now on, there's only three great demons left. Her vein starts to appear over her eyelids and in the eyes because of the effect of poison and she says to him, wait a minute. But he does not listen to her and tighten ups his grip and raises her up in the air. The disciples are shocked to see their master in that condition. They are both confused and worried at the same time and then he throws her away on the floor and she's dead and blood is coming out of her meanwhile he is standing there looking at her dead body with those pink eyes. There is a house and a man standing on the first floor, near the window and is looking outside. Then he asks, the great demoness lost to the sex demon? This news is quite shocking for him and he is the Chang'an unorthodox faction leader, Go Siajuk. The man standing behind him replies to him, Yes, sir. He is Chang'an unorthodox faction, Gu Sa. Moreover, the man tells him that, it said that the great demoness lost to the sex demon last night. Go Siajuk without looking at him or turning around, asks another question that, why would the sex demon suddenly kill the great demoness though? The man respectfully tells him that, it said that the sex demon approached the great demoness disciples with alcohol in his hands and got caught by the great demoness who happened to be finding her disciples and a fight broke out. The unorthodox faction leader does not believe his story and asks one more time, are you sure it's the sex demon? He becomes upset and replies to the leader that, yes, based on the situation it seems to be certain. The fact that the person has the ability to defeat one of the four great demons and would dare to approach the great demoness disciples that's known for their beauties and lastly, it seems he didn't drag her disciples away. They actually followed him out of their own volition. The faction leader looks at him and asks for the one last time that, the person who killed the great demoness is the sex demon? And he smiles and replies obediently, yes, sir. The anger and frustration can be seen in his red eyes and then he says to Gu Sa that, that's thanks to the sex demon's face-changing technique. How else could a young man kill the great demoness alone? The four great demons, just because I left them alone, they dare to create a mess in the Chang'an unorthodox faction? After killing the great demoness, Sohan is having dinner with her disciples. Sohan along with the damn wool and other two disciples, is sitting on the dinner table and the meal is being served. They are having a dinner and also a conversation. Sohan is holding a bottle of wine in his hand and pours it in a glass. He starts drinking when Dam Wool calls him, sleepyhead. He stops and replies to her, yeah. With the puzzled face, she asks, how did you become the poison demon's disciple? He replies to her that, I was kidnapped. This time, she asks with more confusion, was that the reason you disappeared? This time, Sohan replies with much seriousness, yeah. One of the four great demons that became my master, he kidnapped me. Dam Wool feels sorry for what happened to him then the junior sister looks at him and says, your master is someone scary, right? I've heard a lot about him from my master. Then Sohan tells her that, yeah, he's scary. Because of his obsession with researching poison, he uses live humans to test his poisons. Saying this, Sohan remembers about his master who looks and behaves like an evil and uses innocent humans for his experiments but after hearing this, they all gets frightened. Sohan is thinking, but it was because I survived that he didn't kidnap anyone else, then being serious, he says to them, I want you all to keep it a secret that I'm the poison demon's disciple and that you girls are the great demoness disciples because there isn't a place in Jianghu that'd welcome a disciple of the four great demons. You'd probably have to face the orthodox faction if they became aware of it. Dam Wool understood his words and replies to him obediently, all right. 
Then the senior sister who was listening to their conversation, asks him about the master's whip, but what did you do with the master's hundred dragon whip? Sohan looks at her and replies to her that, I have taken care of that ominous weapon along with the great demoness body so just forget about it. She is stunned to hear this and says with utter surprise, what? That's just a precious weapon though. Sohan considers it cruel and gets quite angry at her words and expressions and then says to her angrily, it's an item that's taken more lives of martial masters than you know of. Of course, among them are also probably orthodox faction martial masters too. The moment you use that whip, it won't be just those of the unorthodox faction but also those of the orthodox who will come after you, and after hearing this, she is looking at him quietly with weird expressions. Sohan gets up from his chair and then says to them, I'll be leaving first. You all should finish eating before leaving. Dam Wool looks at him while smiling and replies, all right. There is a beautiful house and there is a hot spring where Sohan is taking shower after the dinners and is relaxing. He is standing between the water and with his eyes closed, he's thinking that, while most of the injuries I got while fighting with the great demoness have healed, it does feel much better coming into the hot spring. If news spreads that I killed the great demoness alone, I wonder what reaction my masters will show. He was injured during his fight with the great demoness and has many bruises and cuts all over his body and he's busy thinking this when five men with towels wrapped around their bodies, appear there and are standing in front of Sohan. They have tattoos on their body and Sohan is looking at them with confusion then Gu Sa moves forward and is standing quietly when Sohan looks at him and asks, what? Gu Sa greets him and says, I, Gu Sa, pays my respects to the sex demon. Sohan is looking at him with weird expressions and Gu Sa is smiling and wondering that, the sex demon is an expert on face-changing techniques. He must be amazed that I've recognized him. Sohan asks with confusion me. Then he replies, that's right. Sohan gets angry at him for calling him sex demon and asks angrily, you crazy bastard, who are you calling the sex demon? Hearing this, Gu Sa realizes that he made a mistake while recognizing him and is pondering, I was wrong? The half moon is shining brightly and then Sohan gets up from the water and Gu Sa and his fellows are shocked to see the wounds on his body. His body starts to glow pink because of the poison energy and he is looking at them angrily with blue eyes but in his reflection in the water, his eyes are pink and his wounds are appearing pink then looking at his wounds, Gu Sa is wondering that, those are such terrible wounds. If those came from numerous wars that he's gone through then. Gu Sa wonders that he's not a sex demon and assumes that he's berserk and asks, Sir Berserk Demon? Sohan comes out of the water and is now standing before him and says angrily, you're really full of shit. He looks at the wounds on his legs and is shocked and then looks at him, saying, oh, I knew it. Sex demon. Sohan is looking at him quietly with pink poisonous eyes then after looking at him for a while, Sohan beats him up for his stupidity. The leader of the Chang'an unorthodox faction, Go Siajuk is sitting on a chair and his servant is standing nearby meanwhile Gu Sa is sitting before him on the ground with his injured face and has a bandage over his nose and it seems like he's guilty of his mistake. Then Siajuk says to him with anger, Gu Sa, you should have just died back then, why bother coming back alive? He is guilty and is also shocked to hear this and replies to him, my apologies. Siajuk sighs and then says to him that, not only did you not manage to find anything out, you were even beaten to this extent within my very own territory, Chang'an? Then Gu Sa with his head down, clears the situation while telling him, I asked him politely but I couldn't do anything since he suddenly gave me a thrashing. He's not your average martial artist. Siajuk gets angry and asks with puzzled face that, so, who the hell is he? Gu Sa tells him about Sohan's wounds, saying that, he has all sorts of weird scars all over his body. That's the body of a crazy person along with that fiery temper of his, I think he's the berserk demon. When the leader remembers about berserk who is also one of the four great demons then his facial expressions become more tense and then he says to him that damn great four demons. First the great demoness, then the sex demon and now the berserk demon. He gets ups from the chair in anger and then loudly asks them, do they think the Chang'an unorthodox faction is their bedroom or something? Then he orders them that, gather all of our men. His servant who was standing nearby, says to him respectfully, sir, whether he's one of the four great demons or not. He's strong enough to kill one of the other four great demons. Go Siajuk looks at him with a side eye and says angrily that, so what? 
Do you think one of the four great demons can kill all of the Chang'an unorthodox faction? This is now a matter of my pride. He is standing quietly when the leader says to him about Gu Sa, only have him do the chores of a waiter from now on. Gu Sa's eyes get filled up with tears and is about to cry but he can't do anything then the servant replies obediently, understood. The next morning, in a house in the unorthodox faction Chang'an, So Hun is sitting on a dinning table and is having a drink when the great demonist disciples comes to him and then Dam Wolf smiles while looking at him and asks him, Sleepyhead, did you have a good night's rest? The senior sister is a little naughty and looks at him and says while smiling, Oh my! Sex demon! You sure woke up early! So Hun does not look at them and keeps drinking and then he stops drinking for a while and then looks at her with side eye and replies to her angrily, I already said I'm not him. She after teasing him, smiles and says, sure, sure. Then she assumes that he's his disciple and was about to say, in that case, but he interrupts her, saying, I'm not the sex demon's disciple either. She is amused and says, oh my, it's like you can read my mind. The junior sister who was standing behind listening to them, says to her, senior sister, you're indeed extraordinary. They are talking while they hear the noise coming from outside the window and Sohan looks at the window with the confusion meanwhile the senior sister is looking quite angry. A huge crowd of people is standing outside their house and they are the people of the Chang'an unorthodox faction. All of them are standing behind and their leader is standing in the front and they are all standing there for a fight with Sohan then the leader says angrily, drag him out here. The two men goes inside and they are holding sticks in their hands then he opens the door and goes inside. The leader is standing outside looking at them dense suddenly noises start coming out of the house and then those two men, who went inside the house, comes out as it seems that someone attacked and threw them towards outside. They are now lying in front of the leader and then suddenly Sohan comes out in anger and asks, who the hell dares to bother me this early in the morning? The leader is looking at that young boy and asks, are you the berserk demon? He looks annoyed because of what happened last night and now this is happening then he says to him, looks like I'm the berserk demon today and yesterday some lunatics called me the sex demon. Hearing this, Go Siajuk asks another question, you are not the berserk demon? He immediately replies, of course not. Go Siajuk smiles and then introduces himself saying, I'm Go Siajuk. If you are not the berserk demon, then who are you and why are you causing trouble in Chang'an where I rule over? Then Sohan also introduces himself, saying, I'm Chen Yang Unorthodox Faction's Jean Sohan. He is shocked to hear this and asks immediately, Chen Yang Unorthodox Faction? Are you talking about the Chen Yang where the Sun Dragon Association and Revolving Blood Clan are at? Sohan looks at him and replies, that's right. The leader assumed that he is someone that lives there and asks, why is the Chen Yang Unorthodox Faction causing trouble here? Do they know that you're here? But Sohan smiles and replies, they don't need you to know because I have taken over the whole Chenyang unorthodox faction. He is angry as well as shocked to see that at such a young age, he became the leader and is thinking that, such a young looking guy took over the Chenyang unorthodox faction. If this is true then it'll definitely be a pain in the ass if we choose to beat him up. Then he says to Sohan that, you must be the leader of the Chenyang unorthodox faction that's at the edge of Shangxi then but why have you come to this place to kill the great Demoness? But instead of replying politely, Sohan replies to him boldly, that is none of your business. Siajuk gets infuriated at his behavior and says in his mind, impertinent bastard. Then after a while, he says to Sohan, all right. In that case, hand over the great demoness disciples. We have got business with the great demoness and her disciples. Those three women were standing behind him and were listening to their conversation and when they heard about themselves, they came out and then the senior sister says, you guys didn't dare to make a single sound when master was alive. I guess you guys feel like you can do something now that she's dead. They are standing beside each other and Siajuk and his people are looking at them and are stunned to see their beauty and are wondering, they are the great demoness disciples? They're definitely beautiful enough for any man to desire, even if they aren't the sex demon. Then Go Siajuk asks him, how is the Chenyang unorthodox faction leader related to the great demoness disciples? Sohan tells him that, we know each other. He is shocked to hear that and asks, you know each other, meanwhile in his head, he's thinking about Sohan, that arrogant bastard. He gets jealous of Sohan and then offers him, saying, all right. It's all good if you just know each other. If you hand them over as per my request then the Chenyang unorthodox faction and the Chang'an unorthodox faction wouldn't have any problems. 
What do you say? The senior sister is looking at them meanwhile the other two are also looking at her and she's wondering that, it's as per what Gosiajuk has said. There's no need for him to fight with the Chang'an unorthodox faction since we don't even know each other that well, but Dam Wool is thinking about Sleepyhead. Hearing his shitty idea, Sohan replies to him angrily, I can't hand them over. I don't intend to do so either. When they hear this, they start smiling and are looking at each other. Go Siajuk gets extremely angry and says, I'm the law in the Chang'an unorthodox faction. It has been so. Is so and will continue to be so. So Hun take out his hand fan and opens it meanwhile his eyes turn to pink being poisonous and then he says to him exactly in his tone that, no, the law within the unorthodox faction would be the strongest. It has been so, is so, and will continue to be so. All of the people of the Gosia Juk Austin at their leader's insult and then Sohan says to the girls that, the three of you, how skilled are you guys? Do I need to look after you while we fight? Damn Wool smiles and says with confidence, sleepyhead, we're not that weak. Senior sister agrees with her and says to him, Damn Wool is correct. We're the great demonist disciples, after all. Then Sohan smiles and says, I guess there'll be wind blowing soon. The leader is confused and asks, what nonsense are you talking about? Then Sohan moves his fan in the air and a wind starts to blow and they are all shocked to see that and then again Sohan moves his fan in the air and this time, he uses immortal wind flash strike which produced a wind of much higher intensity and Go Siajuk along with his men is looking at that. He holds his sword tightly and moves it in the air before Sohan but Sohan's flash strike wind was so powerful that it blew away people who were standing in the front and they all are flying in the air. The leader is looking at them and thinking, what the hell? Then the three girls use their powers and attack Siajuk's people and with their attack, a wind starts blowing and then again plenty of people are flying in air because of the intensity of the air. The Chang'an unorthodox faction leader is looking at them with shock and is wondering that, were the great demonist disciples this strong? He's holding a sword in his hand when Sohan looks into his eyes and then smirks while saying to him, to think you'd split the immortal wind flash strike, you're not too bad. Hearing this, he gets infuriated and attacks while calling him, bastard. He attacks on Sohan with his sword but he defends himself using his hand fan and is looking into his eyes and then he attacks one by one on him but every time Sohan defends and fight backs more efficiently and both of them are fighting and using martial arts techniques. Then while fighting, Sohan asks him do you think you're the law around here, even though you are so weak? He gets angry and his insult and says, shut up. Sohan points his fan towards him and hits him in the chest and then he's thinking, all I did was block his attacks, but it feels like my arms were nearly severed. Such a young rascal's internal energy is that much stronger than me? Then he looks behind where the great demonist disciples are fighting with his people using their mind-blowing skills they've learned from their master and is wondering, damn it. I didn't expect the great demonist disciples to be this strong. Then again, Sohan open his hand fan and Siajuk is looking at him with anger who's standing confidently before him. Sohan is standing before him smiling while holding a fan in his hand meanwhile the leader of the Chang'an unorthodox faction, Go Siajuk is looking at him with anger. Sohan is holding a fan meanwhile he is holding a sword in his hand and both of them are looking at each other. The disciples of the great Demonis are fighting with the executives of the Go Siajuk and are using their swords with great efficiency. Sohan is looking at them and is wondering that, those guys are fighting pretty well together. Are they the executives of the Chang'an unorthodox faction but it doesn't look like the three of them are having a hard time though, meanwhile Siajuk is observing him and is thinking, that guy is looking elsewhere while fighting with me? With me, go Siajuk. This makes him even more infuriated and he holds his sword more tightly and then heads towards Sohan thinking, go to hell, but he is still standing there and blocks his attack using his fan. Siajuk is using all his might but his defense is very strong and then suddenly Sohan's fan starts to grow and he attacks back on him with it. Siajuk tries to block his attack while thinking, damn it, that was just a simple stab though. I can't believe I'm barely blocking it. I won't allow that to happen. Thinking this, he tries to attack Sohan with much power this time and Sohan looks at him and attacks back with his fan and then there is a clash between both of them and then eventually his sword breaks down. Sohan putting his fan over his chin, says to him with pink poisonous eyes, Go Siajuk, stop your subordinates. Siajuk is looking at his fan in a fit of fury meanwhile Sohan is looking at him angrily and both of them are looking into each other's eyes and then suddenly Siajuk closes his eyes for a while, makes up his mind and then loudly says, everyone, stop. 
Hearing this, all his subordinates who were fighting with the disciples of the great Demonis stops and looks at him for a while and those girls are also looking at them. All of them are looks confused then one of them says, the faction leader. This time he shouts more loudly, keep all your weapons. All of them stops and looks at him with puzzled faces and then put back their weapons into their covers. Sohan and Siajuk are standing in the middle meanwhile the other people are surrounding them then Sohan looks around and says to him, go Siajuk, I'll keep respecting you as the law of the Chang'an unorthodox faction. However, you are under me. From now on, the Chang'an unorthodox faction will become a part of my Chenyang unorthodox faction. Siajuk is looking at him with confusion and surprise then Sohan asks, will you accept that offer or will you die? And he is looking into those pink eyes, thinking what to do and what to not. Then he makes up his mind and throws his broken sword on the ground and says to Sohan with teary eyes, I will serve under you. Then Sohan turns around and says, send all your subordinates back. Wait with only your executives at the Sangha Inn. Go Siajuk is looking at his back and wondering, what? This is the end of it? He's standing down just because of that one answer of mine? Sohan looks at the girls and asks them, are you guys hurt anywhere? All of them smiles and replies simultaneously, no, we are not hurt. While going inside, he says to them, let's go back in, and they reply, all right, meanwhile Siajuk and his subordinates are looking at them. At the Sangha Inn, Siajuk along with his executive is sitting on a table and are discussing then one of the subordinates asks him, faction leader, are we really going to serve under him? Siajuk is sitting quietly and then, after a while, another person says to him, it's not too late yet. Before we came back here, I asked my subordinates to scout the area but the Chenyang unorthodox faction's forces aren't here yet. Then other says, faction leader, if he comes here alone then this will be our last chance. We'll follow your decision. Siajuk listens to them and then replies, we won't be able to beat him even if we attack him together since he didn't even use his full strength while fighting me just now. All of them are shocked to hear this and then he tells them, I saw two swords within his robes by chance. He fought with me using a strange iron fan without even using his swords and this is the result of that fight. Saying this, he shows them his broken wrist, thinking, that last clash broke my arm. Then he continues saying and it's not just him. We weren't able to subdue even the great Demonis disciples. Hearing this, all of them replies simultaneously, our apologies. Go Siajuk replies to them politely that, I'm not blaming you guys. I'm just telling you guys that they are way stronger than us. Suddenly, Sohan appears from somewhere and asks while coming towards the table, are you guys done with your strategy meeting? I tried to be considerate and give you guys more time, I'm not sure if that was enough time though. Then he sits on the chai along with them and then he looks at Siajuk who is sitting on the other side of the table and asks, faction leader Go, have you come to a conclusion? He replies immediately, I don't know what you are talking about. Haven't we decided to serve under the Chenyang unorthodox faction already? Then Sohan replies to him, you did say that you will hand over the Chang'an unorthodox faction just now but I understand that's not what you want. Which is why I gave you time to gather your executives and discuss it. He gets quite disappointed and is thinking, he gave us time together and discuss. Was he giving us the chance to attack him together? Then Sohan looks at their faces and says to them that, I understand how absent you guys must be. That's why I wanted to give you guys a chance because I don't feel all that good myself. Even if I take in people who haven't submitted their hearts to me where would I use them so it's okay for all of you to attack me together. All of them are listening to him quietly and he continues saying, if that's your decision then go out get your weapons and come back here. I'll wait for all of you here. All of them are looking at him with anger because of his confidence in himself but he keeps saying to them, but, bear this in mind that the fact you are still here is because I chose to spare your lives. I won't spare your lives a second time. Siajuk is stunned to hear that and is wondering, he's not someone that I can beat whether it's strength or strategies. Wondering this, he gets up from his chair and asks Sohan, how should we address you from now on, and Sohan replies, troop leader. Then he greets him saying, I, go Siajuk, and the Chang'an unorthodox faction will follow you, troop leader Jean Sohan. Seeing their leaders, all his executives get up from their chairs and greet Sohan, saying, we will follow you, troop leader, and Sohan is standing there, looking at them quietly. At night, Three people are sitting on a table in a hotel and are gossiping then one of them asks others about the incident that took place in the Chang'an unorthodox faction and asks, hey, 
is the rumor about the Chang'an unorthodox faction being handed over to someone true? A waiter who was standing nearby and was cleaning a table with a cloth, hears and replies to him, I told you it's true already. Then he says to his fellow members, I can't believe it. The other man who was sitting nearby, tells them that, based on the rumors, it was the young handsome man that was a walking around with the great demoness beautiful disciples. The man who was sitting between them and listening, then says, come on, no way. You're saying the person who killed the great demoness and took over the Chang'an unorthodox faction did that? That waiter replies to him without turning, that's true too because I saw it myself, and all of them are looking at his back. They all looked stunned after hearing this and then one of them asks, you met him yourself? He turns and looks at them. He is waiter Gu Sa and he says, yeah, I'm someone who's met with the troop leader Jin Sohun personally. The faction leader, Go Sia Juk appointed him as a waiter after he was beaten up by the Sohun in the spring that night and is now serving as a waiter in a hotel and a sentence is written on his arm as a tattoo, which says, above and below the heavens. All of them are shocked at his confession and then that man asks, really? Gu Sa turns his face towards them and has a bandage over his nose and then he says to them, I felt at the moment I saw him. He's no ordinary person. He looks really strong. His body was full of slash wounds and stab wounds. Horizontally, vertically, and diagonally all over. From a glance, you would know no one in Chang'an could be a match for him. They all starts taking interest in his story and then that man asks him, what did you do after that? Then Gu tells them the next part of the story that, I reported to the former faction leader but I didn't know who he was. I warned the former faction leader and told him that man could be the berserk demon. The man with the blue dress is shocked to hear the name of that demon and asks with utter surprise that, the berserk demon? The person sitting next to him, asks Gu Sa, the one that's one of the four great demons? The waiter gets infuriated at their questions and replies angrily, do you guys really think I said that because he looked like the berserk demon? I don't even know what the berserk demon looks like. You ought to read in between the lines. I'm asking him to be careful because he is that strong. Seeing him angry, they all get frightened and starts appreciating him and then one of them says to him, I see, you are really incredible. Gu Sa touches his mustache as a gesture of pride and then he says to them that, yeah. I've got a good eye for people. Do you know what happened then? Someone replies, the former faction leader didn't listen to my words and went to find him after gathering our men. Gu Sa throws that cloth on the table and asks in a fit of fury, how did it end? Tell us. There is a river and there are lush green fields at the riverside and the moon is making a beautiful reflection in the river water. The men were searching the great demoness dead body and they finally found it. Her dead body is lying there, between those haunted fields and then one man is holding a lamp in his hand and both of them are standing there, looking at her body. One of them says, what a sight. To think she'd end up as a corpse like that. The other one who's holding a lamp, replies to him while saying, yeah. Who would have thought the great demoness would lose? Then he replies to him that, thanks to this, master will have a great time, and he again replies, probably. The man with a man while looking at her dead body, says to him that, I heard the great demoness disciples don't have any experience with men at all, and he replies, yeah, her disciples are people that frivolous men could never get close to. Hearing this, he smiles and says to him, would we have a chance? She has three disciples. He gets angry at his words and replies to him immediately, don't say such stuff in front of master. He looks at him with side eyes and says, my apologies. I was just joking because you are the only one around. They are standing there while gossiping when someone says from somewhere, did you find her? They greet him while bending over their knees, saying, yes, master. Then a wind starts to blow and the fields are moving because of the fast blowing wheel and then their leader appears there and he somehow resembles Sohan in his appearance. While standing there, he looks at the dead body and says while smiling, great demoness. It's unfortunate that we are meeting like this. He examines her body for a while and then says to his subordinates that, looks like her neck was broken after he grabbed her neck with his left hand. What happened did the man who killed her use? Then one of them tells him that, he used dual swords to fight with the great demoness and used an iron fan when he fought with the Gosiachuk. His eyes turn red as he says dual sword and a fan. He is young and handsome like Sohan and looking at her corpse, he's wondering that, seeing as how there aren't any cuts on her, she didn't get hit by any weapons. 
In that case, he must have either thrown his weapon in the middle of the fighting or dropped it intentionally to suddenly grab and twist her neck. Isn't that one of the cowardly methods that the unorthodox faction would use with their lives on the line? Since the great Demoness hasn't fought in the streets before, she must have been speechless when she was defeated. Then he smiles and asks them what did you say the name of the man who killed her was? That same man tells him that, it's Jean Sohan. He smiles after hearing his name and then says, what a nice name. It seems the demon immortal has raised a monster. After hearing the name of the demon immortal, the subordinate looks at him with confusion and asks, the demon immortal? Then he tells them about the demon immortal that, he's the immortal physician, the twin brother of the poison demon while they are both lunatics, the immortal physician seems to be more obstinate. If the four great demons were to be known as the four great lunatics, then the poison demon would be out of it and the immortal physician would be in it instead. Both of them are looking at him with puzzled faces and then one of them asks, are you saying that the immortal physician is crazier than the poison demon? This time, he smiles even more than before and says, yeah, that's what I think. Then, he tells them about the past story of Demon Immortal and Poison Demon when the Poison Demon had a fight with his enemy that, in the past, there was a time the Poison Demon was gravely injured when he fell into the Hubei Alliance leader's trap as he fought them. However, most of the Hubei Alliance, including their Alliance leader, was also gravely injured but the white immortal physician suddenly appeared and was able to revive the Hubei alliance leader who was about to die with his unbelievably incredible skills. The poison demon asked him why he was treating the Hubei alliance leader but he didn't answer. After he treated and saved all the people without any change his expression, he carried the poison demon and left. That's when I realized the lunacy of the four great demons including me, aren't even a match for the immortal physician. You guys ought to be careful of the disciple of such people because I have no clue how strong he might be. Both of them gets frightened after hearing the story and replies simultaneously, understood. Then he asks them about the Sohan, where are he and the great Demonis disciples now? Then one of them tells him, they're staying at Sangha Inn. Then he asks another question that, are you going to attack him right away? Their leader smiles and replies, no, I need to observe him a little more. If I want to get my hands on all three of the great Demonist disciples then it would be best if I killed him so I ought to be cautious. In case, this was a trap set up by the Demon Immortal, starting tomorrow, I want you guys to see if the Demon Immortal is in Chang'an. They again reply simultaneously, understood. Then he orders them, and the great Demonist, bury her. They are confused about her weapon and asks, what should we do with the hundred dragon whip? He laughs and replies to him, bury it together with her. We ought to give it to her as a present for raising such great disciples, and they reply obediently, yes, master. At night, in the Sangha Inn, Sohan and the great Demonist disciples are sitting on a dining table and are having a dinner. The junior sister holds a piece of meat with chopsticks and put it in her mouth and then one after the other, she starts stuffing her mouth with them and is looking very pleased after eating them. Sohan is looking at her quietly while drinking and then asks her, Hey, did you gain weight? Hearing this, the chopstick fell from her hand on the table and now she is feeling guilty. While looking at her, the senior sister asks, You're all excited since master isn't around? The junior sister replies immediately that, I'm not. It's just because I've been eating for a few days, I have a really good appetite here. Sohan is smiling while listening to them and then he looks at Dam Wool's face and asks, Dam Wool, why do you look so gloomy? Is your senior sister bullying you again? Senior sister gets offended and says angrily to him, shut up. Then Dam Wool replies to him, that's not it. It's because of the dream that my junior sister had. Sohan asks, what dream? Then she tells him that, in her dream, our master appeared and said that you killed her because you attacked her together with the sex demon. Sohan looks confused and asks, I fought along with the sex demon? And she replies, yes. Then he remembers about Gu Sa when he came to him when he was taking bath in the spring and then Sohan says to them, that guy from back then. I guess he appeared in her dreams because he asked me if I was the sex demon. Dam will slightly smiles and replies, that's probably it. Then Sohan tells them while drinking about Gu Sa that, from what I heard, he's working at some inn. At night, in the inn, Gu Sa, the waiter, is standing at the entrance of the inn and is yawning. At Sangha Inn, Sohan and Siajuk are sitting on a dining table and are having a drink. Then while drinking, 
he says to Sohan, rumors about you are going crazy in Chang'an right now. There are also rumors that you are the leader of the Chenyang unorthodox faction as well. Sohan is drinking quietly while listening to him and then Sia Juk put the glass on the table and ask him, how about taking a stroll at Changmi Lake today? Please tell me about how you defeated the great demoness along the way. Sohan looks at him and smiles then replies, let's do that. Looking at him, Sia Juk is wondering that, at first, he was so uncomfortable to be around but now that I'm serving, him it's getting easier to talk to him and he's also been treating me with a certain level of respect. They are talking while Sia Juk's subordinates appear there and informs, faction leader, Gu Sa is here and wishes to meet with the troop leader. Faction leader looks at him and asks, Gu Sa? Sia Juk feels guilty about it and says to Sohan, my apologies, my subordinate doesn't know his place, but Sohan replies immediately, no, let him meet me. Faction leader says to Sohan, but there is no need. This time Sohan replies with quiet and angry face, I wish to hear what he has to say since he wants to meet me, and after hearing this, he is looking at the troop leader's face. Then after a while, Gu Sa appears there and is drenched in sweat, standing there quietly. Sia Juk looks at him with an angry face and asks him, Gu Sa, how dare you ignore my words? I told you not to appear before the time being. Gu Sa gets frightened at his tone and says, that's not it. Sohan is looking at him and then asks, you are the guy who got beat up by me? Gu Sa feels guilty of his act and apologize him, saying, that's right. I apologize for my previous misdemeanor. Sohan accepts his apology and then asks, it's all right. Why have you come to look for me? Then Gu Sa replies to him, about that, I have something I wish to report to you. Recently, there's been someone who's been trying to dig up information about you. Hearing this, Sia Juk gets infuriated at him and says to him, I knew this is what you would say. Since rumors of the troop leader by spread around, there would naturally be a lot of people digging for information about him, right? Why would you report something this obvious? Then Gu Sa replies to him, it's because he's doing it on a whole different level. I looked into it and he's an unknown young man who's doing a very meticulous search for information. He also looked into the details of the great demoness disciples who were traveling with the troop leader. By chance, I overheard a suspicious person who came into my inn and was talking to my customer. He said that the troop leader Jean was bringing all three of the great demoness disciples around with him because they are virgins and that he was too greedy. Sohan is quietly listening to him and he continues saying that, I tried to follow him to find out who he is but he disappeared quickly because his qinggong was really quick. He stops talking meanwhile both Sohan and Siajuk are looking at him and he looks at their quiet faces and is wondering that, what's happening? Was it unnecessary for me to come here? After a while, Sohan says to him, I see. What you have said is of great help. Then Sohan looks at his face and asks, you're Gu, right? He replies obediently, yes. Then Sohan smiles and looks at his face and then says to him, if you have nothing more to report, you may take your leave and great job. After receiving appreciation from the troop leader, Gu Sa becomes very happy and says, yes, troop leader. Thank you for listening to what I have to say. Sia Juk is looking at him quietly when he was leaving then he says to Sohan, that does sound strange. The person wasn't just digging for information about you but also about the great demoness disciples, what do you think of it? Sohan smiles and replies to him, faction leader go, let's do some planning. Faction leader looks confused and asks, pardon? What planning? Then he tells him that, the unorthodox faction style of the inescapable net formation. Sia Juk Go is looking at him with puzzled face because he couldn't understand what he said then Sohan says to him, the reason he's appeared in Chang'an is probably because of these two reasons. The first is probably because the great demoness disciples are virgins. The second is because he is confident, he can escape from Chang'an if the whole faction is after him, that's why he came here without fearing for his life. He has never been caught by anyone so far. Faction leader feels that he knows about that anonymous person so he asks him, do you know who that person is, and he replies, yes. Then he asks Sohan, who is the person who is looking into you and the great demoness disciples. Then Sohan tells him that person is, sex demon. After hearing his name, Sia Juk looks extremely shocked and asks, are you saying that the sex demon is in Chang'an? Then Sohan replies that, that seems to beat. The guy who appeared at the inn could be one of his disciples. 
In any case, if we don't make any preparations, we'll be played. Not only is he strong in the martial arts, he's very skilled in Qinggong and is ready to run away anytime. Siajuk is shocked to hear the word run away and asks, a martial artist that is ready to run away anytime? Then Sohan replies to him that, yes, he doesn't care about the pride of the martial artist and is a man who will run away anytime. He would actually even run away if the situation is really disadvantages for him and then come back within a day. He is a scary foe, and after hearing this, Siajuk replies, I see, meanwhile in his head he's thinking, will we be able to catch him? Then Sohan winks and says to him, faction leader go, he's never been caught by anyone before. The reputable sects, Jianghu groups, alliances or troops, he's escaped all of them. While there have been a lot of people in the Jianghu who have been named sex demon, none of them are as strong as he is. Let's try defeating such a person in the Chang'an unorthodox faction. I'll end his life with my own hands. Sia Juk smiles and replies obediently, yes, troop leader. Gu Sa is running happily in the street because of the compliment he received from the troop leader and people are looking at him with the confused faces. At night, Sohan along with the faction leader is walking in the street and the people are looking at him and greeting him. One says, greetings, troop leader, while the other says, hello, troop leader. Then one woman asks Sohan, troop leader, you are hosting a farewell party, right? Then he smiles and replies, that's right. That woman again says, you should stay here for a while longer, meanwhile the woman standing behind her is looking at the troop leader and is smiling. Then Sohan replies politely that, I'll be back soon. Then a woman says to him, yes, please come back anytime. He is passing by the street meanwhile the sex demon is looking at him from the window of a house and is smiling cunningly. After strolling for a whole night, he returns back to Sangha Inn and when he opens the door, the senior sister looks at him while entering and then asks, you weren't in your room? He tells her that, I went out for a stroll. Dam Wool looks worried and asks him, a stroll? Did you stroll overnight? While heading towards them, he says, I was hoping that the sex demon would make his move but he didn't appear. Saying this, he sits on a chair along with them then the junior sister asks him, shouldn't you get some sleep then? Sohan looks at her, smiles and then says to her while pouring a tea in his cup, not sleeping for a night is fine. He is quietly drinking while the three ladies are looking at him. They are standing outside when Sohan tells them something and they are all stunned to hear that and then Dam will asks, the sex demon is after us? Sohan replies, yeah. I guess he came here after he heard that the great demoness is dead. They all gets frightened and are looking at his back when he turns around and says to them, I'm thinking of using the Chang'an unorthodox faction to defeat him since he's here. Then he smiles and comforts them, saying that, don't worry, I'll protect you guys. If a situation comes where I have to be away from you guys then the three of you work together and wait for me. I'll go to where you guys are as quickly as I can. He is drinking tea mean while they are looking at his face with affection and wondering, why is he going this far for us? Now that I think about it, he also went through a lot of trouble when he asked Go Siajuk to hand us over. There is a stage and a man is holding a sword in his head and is performing some type of dance. Meanwhile a crowd of spectators is looking at him and the people are sitting there while holding instruments and are producing different sounds by using them. The junior sister looks outside the window and says with excitement that, wow, there's so many people here. I think there is a performance or something. Sohan listens to this, smiles and then says, it looks like what faction leader Go prepared has started. Sohan comes near the window, looks outside and then asks innocently, why are they gathering together like that? The junior sister looks at him, smiles and replies, let's go down and take a look, and he agrees, saying, sure. The man is still performing on the stage and looking at him, Sohan says to himself, he thought of something fun in just one day, huh? All the three girls look so excited for watching the performance and then they go outside to watch the performance. The people around see them coming towards the stage and welcomes them saying, greetings troop leader. While some are shocked to see him there and says, it's the troop leader. The man on the stage stops his performance for a while and welcomes the troop leader saying, troop leader, welcome. I was just about to start the face-changing performance we had prepared. Sohan smiles and replies to him, face-changing performance, that will be interesting. Please start. Then that man says to Sohan, yes, please excuse me then, for what I'm about to do. 
Sohan looks at him with puzzled face and then he moves his sword in the air and loudly says, Chen Yang unorthodox factions Jean Sohan, come out now. Then a man from the crowd replies, which impertinent bastard is looking for me. Saying this, he crosses the crowd and jumps on the stage by putting his foot on the hands of two people and he is dresses like the troop leader, Jean Sohan and is also holding a metal fan like him. Then he covers his whole face with his fan except for that one eye who is red and also has a red eyeshadow, saying, I have both the Chenyang unorthodox faction and the Chang'an unorthodox faction under me. I'm Jean Sohan. Saying this, he removes the fan from his face and the spectators along with the great demoness disciples, are laughing after looking at his face. He has applied a red lipstick and a red eyeshadow and is looking quite funny. Dam Wool and the senior sister are trying their best, not to laugh meanwhile the junior one is laughing so hard and Sohan who looks embarrassed, says, seriously. Then that man on the stage says to Jean Sohan's duplicate, you punk. You dare to spout those lies. Jean Sohan doesn't look as ugly as you do. You have the face of Jean Sohan that was beaten up to a pulp. Get lost. Then he replies to him, how dare you judge another by their appearance, tell me who are you then? Then that man with a big belly says confidently, well with this body of mine, I'm one of the four great demons, the berserk demon. After hearing his name, mere voices starts coming from the crowd where someone is saying, that's the berserk demon, while the other asks, the four great demons? Then that man who is performing as Sohan, asks other, you're the berserk demon? Are you there to seek revenge for the great demoness but don't you think you have a little too much belly fat for the berserk demon? That man gets angry at this and says, shut up. You are the one who killed the great demoness, right? I'll event her for the sake of friendship between the four great demons. I'll rip apart your limbs apart and eat your raw flesh. Then suddenly another character appears from somewhere and jumps on the stage, saying, wait a minute, I shouldn't be left out of the revenge for the great demoness. Someone says, the sex demon has appeared. That's the world's greatest rapist. The crowd looks at him and then someone calls him, obnoxious bastard, while the other says, get lost. The man who is performing the role of sex demon looks at the crowd and loudly says, shut up. Whoever dares show their teeth from now on, I'll start from their ass. He makes a filthy move and then says, I'll punish all of you. The crowd gets extremely angry at his move and someone from the crowd calls him, filthy bastard, while the other tells him to get lost. When the senior sister realizes that the situation is getting serious then she asks, is it really okay to mock the sex demon in the open like that, and hearing this, Sohan does not see anything but start smiling. Then the sex demon asks, whose ass should I go after first? Since I can end this faster than a rabbit, I'll take you two at once. Saying this, he heads towards the crowd while pointing at two men and when one of them sees that he is coming towards them then he says to him, you nutjob, don't come over here. The crowd starts laughing and someone says, that rabbit-like bastard. Suddenly, an arrow appears from somewhere and luckily Sohan looks at it and defends himself, saying, over there. It came from the roof of the nearby building and then Sohan jumps from there towards the house. That man after throwing that arrow towards them, runs from there and is jumping over the roofs of the houses and Sohan is chasing him. Then he enters the room of one house from the window and is holding a sword in his hand. He is extremely angry at the performance and says to himself, arrogant bastards, how dare they ridicule master like that. Sohan also enters in that room, holding dual crescent blades in his hands and is standing behind him with pink eyes then he says, well, it's not like they were wrong though. They were right about the sex demon being crazy. That man gets angry at his master's insult and he holds his sword tightly and turns around, saying, bastard. Shut up. He attacks Sohan but he blocks the attack using his dual crescent blade and attacks back while killing him with only one hit. Blood comes out fo his mouth and he falls on the floor. Sohan was standing there, looking at him when another man enters from the window and attacks him but he dodges. Then stopping his attack with the help of his sword, Sohan says, there was another one? Now they are standing face to face with each other and looking at Sohan, he's thinking that, to think he was able to block my sneak attack with such ease, is the way faster than I am? Then he looks at his fellow who is lying dead on the floor and is wondering that, he went down in one hit. I won't be able to deal with him alone. I need to join up master first. Thinking this, he takes out four blades from his sleeves and throws them towards Sohan but he stops them using his sword. 
That man jumps out of the window and is now sitting on a roof a house and Sohan looks at him and follows him. The martial artists of the Chang'an unorthodox faction are also searching them and one of them is giving direction to others, saying, over there. Then that sex demon's disciple starts jumping off from one roof to the other and he is very fast meanwhile Sohan is chasing and attacking him whenever he gets a chance. Now, Sohan is very close and is behind him and he's looking at him and thinking, he's fast at this rate. The sex demon is also helping his disciples and is also attacking Sohan and when he sees that Sohan is defending himself from the sex demon's attack, he smiles and says to himself, that was master helping me. I'll make use of this and get away. He took advantage of the situation and was escaping from there by jumping off when suddenly something wraps around his neck and pulls it towards the ground and he after colliding with different things, falls on the ground. It was senior sister's whip and she threw it towards him to catch him then she places her foot on his shoulder and asks him, where's the sex demon? He is shocked at this sudden attack and is looking at her angrily and calls her, fucking bitch. Hearing this, she gets angry and tightens the whip. Then the sex demon who was hiding somewhere, uses some technique and produces a sound which can be heard from all the directions. He, the sex demon loudly says, did you think you would be able to catch me with such a lousy method? The great demoness disciples are standing in a ground and the senior sister is holding the neck of the sex demon's disciple. All of them along with the martial artists of the Chang'an unorthodox faction are shocked to hear that voice and are confused about its direction. Dam Wool is thinking that, he's speaking and then using internal energy to make it come from all directions so we don't know his location. Then the sex demon again says, alright, I will play along with you guy. 100 days starting from today, I'll spill the blood of the woman within the Chang'an unorthodox faction on Chang'an's grounds. Your wives, daughters and lovers, every single one of them. Think of this as repayment for that performance you gave. They are listening to him with confusion then that who's lying on the ground, says to the great demoness disciples while laughing, you guys need to be especially careful because master is salivating right now. Dam Wool and junior sister looks frightened but the senior sister is still smiling and calling him, crazy bastard, she tightens the grip around his neck this much that his veins burst and he dies on the spot. The sex demon is standing in a house and is drinking while holding a glass in his hand. He's thinking, I lost my disciples in an unexpected location while that's a shame, I can always get more disciples. More importantly, I have Jean Sohan, the great demoness disciples and even the Chang'an unorthodox faction to entertain me. Even if they surround this whole region, they won't be able to catch me. That's as pleasurable as a woman's embrace. What will truly excite me is when I get out of this net that you guys think is inescapable and see you despair. The sex demon is standing and looking outside the window while holding a glass in his head when Sohan comes there. When does sex demon feel someone's presence, he looks behind and is wondering, Jean Sohan. How did he find this place so quickly? Sohan sits on the chair, takes the bottle and starts drinking while the sex demon is looking at him quietly. Then after drinking, he places the bottle on the table and asks, what are you looking at? Did you think I wouldn't find this place? Sex demon turns his head towards him and replies, Sohan, why is the venom demon's disciple living like this? You should just live your life like your master does. Sohan looks at him with anger because of his tone and then asks him, like my master? Then sex demon turns around, looks at him and replies to him that, indeed. You of all people should know just what a real life he lives, why do you live like this? What exactly have you learned from him? Sohan is listening to him quietly then sex demon, while placing the glass on the table, asks him, what are you doing bringing the Chang'an unorthodox faction around with you? Then he smirks and asks about the great demoness disciples, what's with the great demoness disciples too? Are you a chivalrous warrior or something? Sohan gets annoyed at his questions and then asks him, I don't care about being chivalrous. You fucker, why are you being so talkative? But the sex demon being stubborn, smiles and calls Sohan, impertinent bastard. Then he asks Sohan with his red eyes, do you think someone like you can catch me? He hears the voice coming out of the window that, sex demon, you have been surrounded by the Chang'an unorthodox faction's inescapable net. Sex demon being really confident, replies and asks, so what? The person who was playing the role of the sex demon along with the other two participants of the performance are standing outside the house. Then that fake sex demon loudly says so the real sex demon can hear, we'll spare your life if you remove your pants and surrender. Sex demon is listening to him quietly with anger and he continues saying, while we can spare your life, 
your ass will be mine. Throw your pants towards me first. He said this all to make him angry and he gets offended at his insult and Sohan is also smiling and that made him much angry. He is very infuriated and says with anger, you bastards dare mock me. He is this much angry that he starts shivering and because of that, the glass in which he was drinking, falls on the floor and he hits on the floor with his foot. Then the sex demon, using his powers, lifts his sword up in the air and then throws it towards the Sohan and looking at that, Sohan takes out his metal fan to defend him. Then the sex demon is standing near the window, holding the sword in his hand and then he heads towards Sohan for attack and he's using his martial arts techniques and Sohan blocks his attack and defends himself by only using his metal fan. Sohan's eyes turn to pink meanwhile sex demons turn to red and both of them are fighting with all their might. The sex demon uses his power and when he removes the cover of his sword, the glass breaks into pieces because of the force. Sohan is standing still in the attacking position meanwhile the sex demon is looking at him and is wondering that, while I'm faster, he's stronger than me. The great demoness didn't die by coincidence. Then he smiles and says to Sohan that, Sohan, I'll give you a tour around Chang'an. Let's go. Saying this, he jumps out of the window and Sohan is looking at him while he's leaving. He is flying in the air and the participants of the performance are looking at him. The sex demon looks at them and their makeup covered face and then suddenly moves towards them for the attacks and they are all shocked to see him, moving towards them. Suddenly, Sohan jumps off from the window and appears there for saving them and now he moves towards the sex demon. The man who was performing the role of berserk demon says to Sohan, thank you, troop leader. The fake sex demon loudly says, please kill him. Please rip his ass apart. The other two are looking at him because it was getting too much and then one of them says, that's too much, while the other agrees with him and says, yeah. The sex demon is jumping from the roof of the one house to the other and then he looks at the back and loudly says so that Sohan could hear that, you aren't even able to catch up like this? You dare to provoke me with that level of qinggong that you have? Chang'an will be filled with blood because you tried to act like chivalrous warrior. Sohan is behind him and then he smiles. The sex demon is moving towards the out of the city when he sees that a large number of people are standing at the riverside and then they all looks at him and then sits on the ground. They are all wearing special kind of oval wooden boxes which have metallic arrows in them. When they see that the sex demon is heading towards them, they pulls the ropes of the boxes which launches those arrows towards him and he's shocked to see that. He suddenly puts his foot on a roof of the building and tries to defend himself from those arrows. Then some other arrows comes from inside of the house towards him and he's trapped from every side. He takes out his sword in a fit of fury and removes its cover so he can block those arrows. Then while defending himself, he says angrily that, shit. Chang'an unorthodox faction, this is how you want to play it? He was fighting with those arrows when Sohan appears there and attacks from behind on him with his metallic fan. The sex demon looks at him and then starts jumping over the buildings and says, damn it. Then he remembers the faces OD those people and is wondering that, they aren't Chang'an's martial artists. Is this whole thing part of the inescapable net? Alright then. Let's see how many days they can survive. I'll kill each and every one of you. He's extremely angry and then thinking of his next plan, he says to himself that, I need to get out of the village first. Then again jumping over the houses, he heads towards the outside of the village and Sohan is standing on a roof of one house and is looking at him while escaping like a coward. There is a thick forest outside the village and the sex demon goes there for the purpose of hiding. He is extremely angry at Sohan and his inescapable net technique. Then he calls his name with anger, Jean Sohan. He is standing there thinking, when a man who is wearing green-colored clothes and is riding a horse, moves towards him while holding a sword in his hand. He loudly says, sex demon. I'll have your neck. The sex demon is looking at him with side eye and is surprised to see him and is wondering, Guan Yu? Then that man attacks on him with his sword while saying that, this is revenge for Diao Chan. The sex demon is looking at him with anger and is thinking that, these bastards, why would Guan Yu look for Diao Chan? And with this, he attacks him but luckily sex demon blocked his attack and saves himself. He attacks again, saying angrily, you think I'd lose that easily? Then he leaves that place and while leaving, he turns back and says to sex demon, I'll be back before you know it. The sex demon is standing there, wondering what's going on and then says to himself, the hell's with him? 
He was standing there wondering when an arrow appears from somewhere and was moving towards him but in meantime, the sex demon looked at it and defends himself from that. As a result, the arrow instead of hitting him, hits the nearby tree and cuts it off. The sex demon looks at the roof of the nearby house and sees a man is standing on the roof and is holding a bow and arrows and is pointing at him. The sex demon is looking at him with anger and confusion and remembers his name and says, Huang Zhong? The sex demon is angry and says, these bastards, seriously. In the meantime, the Huang Zhong takes out another arrow and points it towards sex demon and launches it. That arrow is moving with a full speed towards him and he while protecting himself from that arrow, says, you guys are fucking ridiculous. Then he uses his power to stop that arrow and breaks it into pieces and that man is looking at him with anger. Then Sohan appears there and the sex demon is looking at him with anger and says, Jean Sohan. Sohan is looking at him while holding a metal fan in his hand and then that man takes out another arrow and this time, the arrow is poisonous and aiming it at the sex demon, he says, thanks to you, I can get revenge for my granddaughter. Sohan is looking at him with side eyes because that man was so indulged in his character that he forgot that he doesn't have a granddaughter and they are all the part of the Chang'an unorthodox faction inescapable net. Then looking at him, Sohan's thinking that, that granddaughter doesn't even exist. Why is he so immersed in his acting? He really means it. That man is aiming at the sex demon meanwhile the sex demon is looking at Sohan and he looks annoyed then he says to Sohan, Jean Sohan, what are you trying to do? Get rid of these nut jobs and fight me yourself. Sohan smiles and replies to him, how ridiculous. Weren't you just thinking of running far away like the rat you are? The sex demon is looking at him angrily with his red eyes and then frowns and calls him, you little. Then in his head, he's thinking, you think you know me so well because you're the venom demon's disciple? Meanwhile that man who was aiming at sex demon, releases the poisonous arrow and that arrow, passing nearby the Sohan's shoulder, moves towards the sex demon. The arrow is in full speed but the sex demon blocks it and then the poison ball that was placed near the head of the arrow, bursts and he's stunned to see the poison. Then the sex demon uses his palm to protect himself from the poison and spreads the poison in the air. The parts of body which comes in contact with the poison, starts melting and the sex demon is shocked to see that and says, soul melting poison. Soul melting poison is a poison which contain potent acid. Then suddenly the sex demon's body starts paralyzing and he realizes that there was a paralyzing poison along with the soul melting poison and he's wondering that paralyzing poison is mixed into it as well, he escapes from there saying, damn it. Sohan looks at him and then starts following him. There are the fireworks in the direction where the sex demon was going and then looking at the fireworks, someone says, over there. The sex demon is over there. Follow the fireworks. There is a lake named Chongmi and there are the fields along the riverside. Gu Sa is hiding with his men in the field and is waiting for the sex demon and when he sees the fireworks, he says to everyone behind him, he's coming. Everyone, get ready. Then looking at the sky, Gu Sa is wondering that, once the sex demon appears at the Chongmi lake, we'll throw spears at him and we will shout out the name of the women we love and that we're seeking revenge for them. What a simple and easy task this is. I'll show you what I, Gu Sa, am capable of. Then he looks at the sky where the sex demon is coming towards the fields and the troop leader is following him and he's thinking, the sex demon. The troop leader is following behind as well. Pointing his spear towards the sky, Gu Sa shouts, now. Throw the spears. There is total five men and they are holding the spears which they will throw on the sex demon. They all start throwing the spears towards him and then the sex demons looks at them and dodges them. Gu Sa says to them, shout out the names of our lovers together. One of them throws the spear, saying, this is revenge for Miryong. Then the other throws the spear towards the sex demon, saying, this is revenge for Inhai. While the other says, this is revenge for Nanyong. Gu Sa appreciates them and says to them, nice, keep throwing those spears. He was about to throw the spear at him and says, sex demon, you bastard. But then he stops for a while because he was too focused on his mission that he forgot the fact that he didn't even have a lover. Then he throws the spear towards him and loudly says, fuck. This is revenge for the grandma next door. She was 80 years old, 10 years ago. You fucker. She treated me so well. The sex demon sits on the branch of a nearby tree and looks at him with anger while Gu Sa gets confused and asks, why are you looking at me? 
The sex demon is extremely angry and asks, Grandma, I'll rip you apart. Gu Sa is looking at his angry face and is wondering, something feels off about that fucker. Both of them are looking at each other and then, after a while, the sex demon gets up from the tree and moves towards him for the purpose of attacking him and when Gu Sa sees that he's moving towards him, he runs for saving his life. Now Gu Sa is running and the sex demon is following him while flying in the air, holding a sword in his hand. The sex demon uses his power and then there's a clash of the powers at the Gu's back and because of the intensity of the power, Gu Sa falls on the ground. It was Sohan who saved him and now he's sitting between Gu Sa and the sex demon on the ground. Sohan gets up and now they are standing face to face with each other, holding their swords in their hands. The sex demon is extremely angry and Sohan's looking at his angry face, wondering that, to think he'd be bothered by something like that, looks like the sex demon's mental state is quite shaken. Gu Sa is lying on the floor with his eyes closed and has fainted from shock. Now, the sex demon moves towards Sohan for the attack and also Sohan also steps forward to defend himself. Sex demon attacks and Sohan uses his dual crescent sword and there's a clash between the swords. Now there are many clashes one by one and while fighting in zigzag manner, both of them reaches the lake. There is a house in the middle of the river and now both of them are standing on the roof of that house, looking at each other meanwhile the martial artists of the Chang'an unorthodox faction, the great demonist disciples, Gu Sa, the participants of the performance and the members of the Chang'an unorthodox faction's inescapable net are standing at the riverside and are looking at them. The sex demon looks at their faces with side eyes and then asks, why are you guys suddenly so quiet? Finished with all that annoying bullshit now? Then Sohan says to the sex demon, the inescapable net started the moment you turned your back but the moment you choose to face me, it'll stop. If you had faced me from the start, you wouldn't have been surrounded nor would the inescapable net have been activated. The sex demon instead of accepting his defeat and being stubborn, he says to himself while looking at Sohan's face, he's someone that I really want to kill. I'll kill him in front of the Chang'an unorthodox faction and places the other corpses beside him. His eyes start to glow red and then he moves toward Sohan but he's standing still at his place and then he passes nearby the Sohan while attacking on his arm. Sohan's arm gets injured and the blood is coming out of it and looking at his wound, the sex demon smile mockingly. Then the sex demon attacks while standing at his back and this time, Sohan also gets ready for the attack then there's a clash between their powers meanwhile all of them are looking quietly. The house on the roof of which they're fighting, starts to break and they are busy fighting. The house is completely broken because of their forces and all of them are amazed and shocked to see that. Looking at the scene with surprise, the senior sister says, incredible. Both, the sex demon and the troop leader broke the roof of the house and now are standing inside the house. Then Sohan says with pink poisonous eyes, this is where the great demoness died. The sex demon smiles and asks, so what? Then Sohan says to him, she laughed just as you did and died with completely flustered expression. Sex demon smiles softly and replies, sure, you did great. To think one of the four great demons' disciples could kill one of the four great demons, there's nothing more amazing than that. Did you start to think you could even kill your master after growing this much? Sohan doesn't reply and looks at him while smiling then the sex demon continues, saying, poison, sex, demoness. That's what we call ourselves. Have you heard of that? And Sohan replies, I have. Then the sex demon smiles and says to him, the berserk demon, saying this, he attacks Sohan with his sword and he blocks his attack by using his sword. There's a clash between their swords and the spot on the floor where they're standing, is completely damaged. Looking at his smiling face, Sohan says, poison, and after hearing the word poison, the sex demon distances himself from the Sohan and is thinking, did he use poison or is he saying he'll use it? And then Sohan joins the edges of his sword together and places it in front of him, saying, full moon. Sohan joins his double crescent blades with each other in such a way that their edges fit with each other. There are the circles on each blade, a little far from the edge and that circle starts to glow pink because of the poison when Sohan joins the swords. Then Sohan places on circle near his one eye meanwhile his other eye is also pink because of the poison. Then Sohan says, full moon, and with that, poison starts evolving from the swords and spreads in the surrounding. The sex demon is confused at what he's doing and is wondering that, what's that? He just combined his weapon. He was busy wondering this when Sohan sits and then jumps in the air, goes high and the sex demon is shocked to see that. 
Then while flying in the air, he looks at the sex demon and then returns back to ground towards him meanwhile he also gets ready for the attack and he uses the power, merciless slash, and he points it towards Sohan. But Sohan's poison power is way stronger than him that it easily defeated the sex demon slash and attacks the sex demon's shoulder. There was a huge clash between the powers that a fast wind starts to blow and everyone places their arms before their faces to save themselves. The sex demon is in half-dead state and Sohan's blades were stuck in the floor and then Sohan come and takes them. Dam Wool is looking at him and wondering that, was he always this strong? To the extent he could defeat the sex demon that easily? Then Sohan takes his swords and disjoin them and the two people who were the part of the inescapable net are looking at him, wondering that, damn it, the sex demon isn't the only one who got fooled, we were as well. He was seriously this strong. If we hadn't surrendered. Sohan looks at the sex demon's body which in in miserable condition and is going to die soon. Sohan's wondering that, I need to lie naturally. I need to say that it's poison even though it's not. To give poison while saying it's an elixir, to look like I'm poisoned even when I'm not. Only then the enemy believe they have the upper hand until the critical moment once the psychological war is over. To hide my abilities from everyone and to try to never use any ultimate technique, that's the most basic in a psychological war. One can say that is the most effective method and also the method that gives you the most satisfaction because only then will your enemy face a great despair like an endless abyss. The sex demon is lying quietly on the floor and then Sohan looks at him, smiles and asks him, sex demon, where is the berserk demon? Then looking at his lifeless body, he says to himself, is he dead? Then there is an explosion and sex demon's body exploded. Then Sohan is standing there, thinking, many things were revealed because of the sex demon. Things that should never have been revealed. Then thinking this, Sohan comes out of that damaged room and all of them are looking at him quietly meanwhile Sohan looks at their faces and is wondering that, all of them witnessed me using my ultimate technique and he was worried for a while then relaxes himself, saying, no, they're fine since they are serving under me. Then he appreciates everyone, saying, great job, everyone, and everyone smiles at his compliment. At night, in the Gu Sa's restaurant, he's standing and cleaning a glass with a cloth and was telling a story about how the troop leader killed the sex demon. Then someone asks, so, then, what you're saying is, the sex demon went crazy because of your provocation? Gu Sa replies, confidently, indeed. While the troop leader was the one who killed him, the person who drove him crazy was me, Gu Sa of the Chang'an unorthodox faction. Hearing this, someone says to him, don't be absurd. Why would one of the four great demons lose his mind because of what you said? While the other says, he probably lost his school because he had resolved to fight with troop leader. Then one says, he was already furious from the start. The other says, I'm sure that humiliating performance we did contributed to. Then again one man says, you didn't see the performance so you probably don't understand but that performance was truly an upsetting one. Gu Sa gets angry and says to them, you guys, seriously. Why don't you guys believe me? Then one of them says, look at you, getting all huffy. Then Gu Sa replies to them with anger, it said that the sex demon only seeks after beautiful woman but everyone just kept shouting the names of their lovers. Why would the sex demon care about that? The mention of the grandmother wasn't the crux of things, the fatal blow was the fact that ten years ago, she was already eighty years old. Hearing this, one shrugs off his shoulders and says, let's just say that's the case, and after hearing this everyone starts laughing. This makes Gu Sa even more angry and he throws that glass and cloth on the table, saying, seriously. While they were busy laughing, someone from the outside says, Gu Sa, come outside, there is a message for you. All of them stops laughing and are looking at the door along with Gu Sa. Then Gu goes outside and a man is standing there and Gu Sa asks him, what's the matter? Then Go Hyo tells him, troop leader has a special reward for you. Gu Sa is stunned to hear that and asks, pardon? Then that man takes out the message and says, this is the message, and then he starts reading the message from the troop leader, which says, the inescapable not strategy began from Gu Sa's report to me. The strategy would have been impossible if not for his report. He did great by realizing that information was important and he also did great speaking out despite being scared of me and faction leader Go Siajuk. I bestow 5,000 Niangs to Gu Sa as a reward. Gu Sa, you did great. Let's meet again. Signing off, Troop Leader, Jean Sohan. 
Everyone along with Gu Sa are shocked to hear that message and one of them says, 5,000 Niangs. Gu Sa, after hearing the message, starts trembling because of the surprise and is now sitting on the floor and crying because of the happiness and then says, thank you, troop leader. Then that man hands over a small box to him and says, Gu Sa, congrats. It's here in the form of a banknote slip. While receiving that box, he was crying out of great happiness and says to him, thank you. Go Hyo gets confused at why he was crying and then says to him, sure. It's okay to treat me to some alcohol tonight, right? Then Gu Sa gets up, cleans his eyes and replies to him, of course, please come in. Then he says to everyone, tonight's my treat. Let's head in, everyone. They are extremely happy and then one of them says, really? No taking back your word. While the other replies to him, he is someone whom the troop leader has acknowledged. There's no way he'd do something like that, and everyone is happy because Gu Sa is giving a treat and Gu Sa is happy because the troop leader admired his work and appreciated him. So Han leaves the Chenyang unorthodox faction and reaches the eastern dark street in the Chang'an unorthodox faction along with the great demonist disciple at night. It is very quiet and peaceful and Dam Wool along with the other two sisters, is looking around and examining the place. Then she looks around and says to So Han, so much has changed here. Then Sohan tells her that, yeah, I didn't recognize this place when I first came back too, then he smiles and asks, do you remember Dogon? She also smiles and replies to him, of course. Is he here? They are standing before the mystic lunar troop and Sohan tells her that, yeah, he's over there. He's either in the kitchen on level 2 or sleeping somewhere. He gained a bit of weight and damn wool smiles after hearing this. Then the senior sister shares her reviews about the eastern dark street that, I guess compared to Chang'an, this would be considered countryside. I wonder if that's why my heart feels at ease, while the junior sister agrees with her, saying, I feel the same way. Then the junior sister looks at the surrounding and says, is this really the Chang'an unorthodox faction? It feels just like a normal village though. So Hun tells her, there's quite a lot of people during the day. Although a lot of people did leave because I got rid of a few brothels and destroyed the revolving blood clan. They are standing outside the mystic lunar troop and are looking at the entrance then Dam Wool says, this was where the sword dance troop used to be at. So Hun tells her that, yeah, I took over this place and established the mystic lunar troop. Dam Wool is looking at it with a worried face when Chu Sayek who was standing on the first floor, looks at them and calls him happily, troop leader. And Sohan also looks and says his name, Chu Sayek. Then Chu Sayek tells everyone, troop leader is back. Then suddenly lights of different rooms starts glowing and someone asks, really? The senior sister looks at the glowing windows and says, it looks like quite a number of people live here, and the junior sister asks, didn't you say there were only a few of them? Sohan is also shocked to see that and is wondering, why are there so many people here? Are these all guests? Then the door opens and a man with many children along with Chu Sayek comes outside and Sayek is pleased to see the troop leader and calls him, troop leader. Sohan also smiles and says, hey. Then Sohan looks at the faces of the children and the man and the children are also frightened to see him and Sohan's thinking that, I've never seen them before, why are there so many kids? Then suddenly a woman did the red clothes comes and says from behind, excuse me. They all gives her away and Sohan is stunned to see her smiling face and she's also pleased to see him and says, sleepyhead. Sohan is looking at her with his mouth open because of the shock and asks, Wunhai? She eventually runs towards the Sohan and hugs him and then starts crying and then while crying, she says to him, sleepyhead, you're alive. Sohan is stunned at her sudden act of hugging him and replies, yes, I'm still alive, and then also hugs her. Everyone around gets emotional and are looking at them with teary eyes. Then Dam Wool looks at her and asks, Wunhai? She frees herself from Sohan and is now looking at Dam Wool and then she goes towards her and asks while crying, Dam Wool? Both of them are trembling and crying because of happiness and she replies, yes. Then Wunhai also hugs her and asks, why are you together with Sleepyhead? Where have you been all this while? The junior sister and the senior sister are also crying at this emotional moment and that man is looking at their faces with happiness. Then Sohan greets him and says, I'm Jean Sohan. That man also greets Sohan and replies to him, Troop leader Jean, I've heard much about you. I'm John Taysen who used to be called Ugly Demon, please be at ease. 
Then So Hun remembers about him and is wondering, ugly demon. The only man who helped the sword dance troop back then. I was wondering where he went, I guess he was together with Wunhai. Then the little boy who was standing with Taesun asks about So Hun, who is he? Then So Hun asks him, you're Wunhai's husband, I ought to be polite then. Chu Sayek is looking at the troop leader's face and is wondering, I've never seen him like this before, meanwhile the senior sister is also shocked to see him and is thinking that, there are times when he's humble too? Then Sayek asks him, how about we go in and talk instead? It's gotten pretty chilly outside, and Sohan replies, sure. Then Sayek says to them, let's all go in and talk inside. Sohan is standing outside meanwhile Chu Sayek is blushing after seeing the junior sister and she is looking at his cute expression. The senior sister is shocked to see the interior of the mystic lunar troop meanwhile Wunhai is pleased to see the damn wool and the children are running happily. Sohan is standing there when Dogon comes there and asks, I was worried while you were gone. Are you hurt anywhere? Sohan also looks at him, smiles and replies, nope. Then Dogon offers him a cigar and asks, wanna smoke this? Sohan is quite upset to see that and asks, how could someone that's working in the kitchen smoke Nepenthe? Nepenthe is a drug or drink, or the plant yielding it, mentioned by ancient writers as having the power to bring forgetfulness of sorrow or trouble. Then Dogon tells him that, I bought it out to give it to you. Then Sohan smiles and takes that cigar from him and then places it in his mouth and Dogon lights it for him. Then Dogon asks him, you met Wunhai, right? Then Sohan says, seems like the security agency leader, asked everywhere to find us, and Dogon replies, I see. Dogon and Sohan are sitting outside the mystic lunar troop on the stairs and Sohan is smoking a cigar. Then Dogon says, we had so many friends back then, to think only one came back, I wonder if it's because this world is a shitty one or is it a fortunate thing that at least Wunhai came back. But Sohan does not reply to him and keeps smoking meanwhile Sohan is lost in his thoughts and Dogon is looking at him quietly. Then getting up from that place, Dogon says to him, finish smoking and then come in. I will be going in first to prepare some snacks to go with alcohol. Then Dogon goes inside and Sohan is sitting there alone while thinking about the other people of his troop and this made him sad and is wondering, I'm all grown up now, I can protect all of you. So, please come back. Sohan is sitting on a chair in his room on the second floor and is drinking meanwhile Chu Sayek is standing before him. Troop leader tells him about what happened in the Chang'an unorthodox faction and he's shocked to hear that and asks, you killed the sex demon and the great demoness? While pouring a drink in his glass, he tells him that, yes, though I spared Go Siajuk's life. Sayek is looking at him with weird expressions and is wondering, he's a little late because he went to kill two of the four great demons? Then he asks Sohan, the reason you spared Go Siajuk's life, could it be? Sohan interrupts and tells him while drinking, I took over the Chang'an unorthodox faction. Sayek is shocked to hear that and is thinking that, why is he talking about this like he just took a stroll? Then Sohan says to him, very soon, I'll need to gather the Shangxi unorthodox faction in either Chang'an or Chenyang. Tell this to the Chenyang leaders in advance, and Sayek replies obediently, understood. Looking at him calm face, Sayek's thinking, he killed two of the four great demons and took over the Chang'an unorthodox faction. Were these accomplishments an easy feat for him? Then few moments pass and Wunhai arrives at his door and while standing outside, she asks Among, are you busy? And he looks at the door and replies, I'm good. Then Sayek bends a little and says, I'll come back again later, and Sohan replies, all right. Then while leaving, Chu Sayek greets Wunhai and Sohan is looking at them and then says to her, I was wondering when you might come. She comes towards him, asking, were you waiting for me? And Sohan replies frankly, indeed. She has big orange eyes and small nose and indeed she's very beautiful. She looks at Sohan, smiles and asks him, are you prepared to hear me nag? He replies to her, of course. She sits before him and says to him, Mong, I'm worried about you. You know very well just how dangerous the unorthodox factions are. This isn't suitable for you who used to be so kind when you were young, and Sohan is listening to her quietly. Sohan remembers about his childhood when he was practicing the sword dance along with the other children and Wunhai was looking at them then she said to them, get your postures correct. Then she shows them, how to do that properly and says to them, think of this as stretching your arm further out. You mustn't put too much strength into your wrist. 
Then she got angry and says to the children, You guys are fooling around again. Want me to punish you? So Hun was so much lost in his thoughts that he forgot that Wonhai was sitting before him and when she feels his absent-mindedness, she asks him with a little anger, Mong, are you listening? He doesn't say anything, instead starts smiling and she gets offended and asks him, what are you smiling for? Do you think what I'm saying is a joke? He replies to her, I don't. I have already become a bad person. She is stunned to hear that and asks, how are you a bad person? While you often quarreled with Saiwal, you have never been a bad person. Then Sohan tells her that, the poison demon, one of the four great demons, is my master, and Wunhai is shocked to hear that. While holding a glass in his hand, Sohan continues telling her, everyone had been knocked out on the day that I disappeared, that was done by my master. He saw me back then and took me away. After listening this, she holds Sohan's hand and says to him, just because your master is a bad person, that doesn't make you one. There's no need for you to become one either. After a while, he says to her, I'll be leaving as one from now on though. Hearing this, she let go of his hand and asks him with surprise, you intend to live as a bad person? What are you talking about? Then he replies to her that, the only people that survive in Jianghu are probably bad people. I killed the blood revolving clan leader and the five poison clan leader. I went to Chang'an to bring Dam Wool back and killed both the great demoness and sex demon. That's not all. I slaughtered everyone at the two places which belonged to the Green Forest Stronghold on my way back here. I went to meet the Green Forest Stronghold chief that picked a fight with the great demoness disciples, but there were all these other people that were kidnapped and treated like slaves. There were many children there as well. I release all of them and slaughtered the entire Green Forest Stronghold. The incident of killing the entire Green Forest Stronghold happened on his way back to Chang'an and Sohan gets very upset after remembering all that incident and the faces as well as conditions of those children. After hearing this, Wunhai says, you did the right thing there? You punished the bad people and saved others, didn't you? Then Sohan tells her, one of them said this before he died that the wild green troop will avenge them. Feuds and grudges have started to haunt my sword and since I killed two of the four great demons, the berserk demon will find me at all costs as well. If I'm not a bad person and tried to live as normal human, how would I deal with all these people? A Messinus Accumson Lacus Vel Facilis. While telling her all this, Sohan's eyes turn to pink because of poison but Wunhai starts trembling and crying. Then she says to him while crying, I just wanted you to be happy. I was worried that you would get hurt while fighting in the unorthodox factions, and Sohan is looking at her quietly and then holds her hand while smiling. Both of them are looking into each other's eyes. Then she says to him while cleaning the eyes with her finger that, sorry. I didn't want to nag at you since we just met. Sohan's looks at her face and replies with a little guilt, it's being so long since I heard someone nagging at me. I've been smiling because I've enjoyed it. Then she asks, is that why you have been smiling? And he replies to her, exactly. She immediately gets offended at his words and says to him with anger, just pour a glass of wine, and he replies obediently, all right. So Hun was pouring a wine in her glass, when she asks him, if your master kidnapped you and took you in as his disciple, did you run away from him? Then while pouring a wine in his glass, he tells her that, no. He let me go and he told me to go back to my hometown. Then she asks with puzzled face, why would he do that? Didn't one of the four great demons kidnap you? While placing a beautiful floral vase of alcohol on the table, he says to her, in the end, I won. This time, she is even more shocked than before and asks, you fought against the poison demon? So Hun replies, no, I had gotten him to be so attached to me that he couldn't kill me. So Hun was telling Wunhai about his past and childhood he spent with the poison demon and his twin brother. He tells her that, the poison demon has a twin. The immortal physician is his brother. When I got poisoned by the poison demon, he detoxified and cured me. One of them is obsessed with making poison while the other one is obsessed with saving others. They are both madmen. The immortal physician didn't do all he could to save me. He only saved me when I was on the verge of death. My body was just something that they were trying to prove what they were each capable of. They were just competing with each other. That was when I decided that I will get them to like me to the point they won't kill me no matter what. After that, I began to earnestly cherish them. I tried to be nice to them, 
tried to understand them and also made up tons of interesting STO. After a long time had passed, the poison demon was surprised. Then Sohan asked him, Master, what's wrong? Then the poison demon replies to him, I've made a truly powerful poison but I don't think you would be able to handle it. Then the poison demon says to himself, Damn it, what am I saying? Forget what I just said. Then Sohan says to Wunhai, That was how I survived. Wunhai is shocked to hear that story then he continues, saying, After that, both of them worked together to perform experiments that would mainly strengthen my body. After listening his story, she says, I see, and she is holding her skirt tightly and he's looking at her hand. Then Sohan says to her, Wunhai, don't stay at Mystic Lunar Troop anymore. I'll prepare a safe place that's comfortable for you, live there with your family. She replies immediately, I don't want to. I'm going to wait for the rest to come back to the Mystic Lunar Troop. Then he says to her, Wunhai, that's precisely why I'm suggesting this. Now that I know about your children, what am I to do if they get hurt by someone? It's not just them, it also applies to you and your husband. She is quietly listening to him and is looking quite nervous then he says to her, I'll go visit you from time to time. I also need a place where I can rest comfortably. Don't I? Then she asks with puzzled face, a place for you to rest? He smiles and replies, indeed. Then he starts pouring a wine in his glass, saying to her, I didn't talk about my masters for no reason. If a fight between the Orthodox and my masters occurs, then I'd have no choice but to fight those of the Orthodox as well? This time she gets a little angry and asks, why? They are people who tortured you for years, aren't they? While holding a glass in his hand, he replies to her, but they are still my masters. She asks boldly, if your master decides to kidnap children again to experiment on them, what will you do? While drinking wine, he replies to her, at that time, I'd fight my master. Hearing this made her happy and she sighs. Meanwhile he continues, saying, but that won't happen. They are past the stage of doing that sort of experiment now. She asks, what? He smiles and replies, because I already underwent all of the experiments, and she is just quiet at his answer. The very next morning, two men arrives at the Mystic Lunar Troop and they're from the Jaegal clan. Chu Sayek arrives at Troop Leader's door along with them and tells him while standing outside, Troop Leader, the Jaegal clan that I talked to you about is here. He replies from inside, let them in. Sayek opens the door of Sohan's room and gives them away, saying, please come in, and one of them replies, thanks. They enter the room and one man is holding a metal fan in his hand meanwhile the one standing behind him is looking around, taking a brief look of the room. Then the one who was holding a fan, greets the leader and says, I have heard much about you, troop leader. They introduce themselves and one of them says, I'm Jay Gal Hyun, and the other says, I'm Jay Gal Tan. Sohan looks at their faces and replies, you've come a long way. I'm Jean Sohan. Sohan is sitting on a dining table and offers them a seat, saying, please take a seat. They both takes their seats and then Sohan says to them, I heard you have something to talk about. Jay Gal Hyun replies politely, yes, troop leader. We come from Jay Gal's new Shangxi branch. Hearing this, he says, let's hear what you have to say. Both of them are looking at him with weird expressions and thinking that, how mannerless. He wants to talk business right away without even offering a cup of tea. Then he sighs and starts telling him, as you know, we are the ones who created the Jay Gal News. Jay Gal News is one of the main businesses of the Jay Gal clan. If we are just talking about the area north of Yangtze River, we already have customers like the Mount Hua sect, the Zhongnan sect, the Qingqing sect, the Tang clan, the Hubei alliance and the Wudang sect, ECT. Most of those within the Orthodox have ties with Jay Gal News. I've heard of what happened in Chang'an. You killed the great Demoness and the sex demon, correct? Sohan replies, that's right. Then he replies happily, that's amazing, we at Jay Gal News were really surprised when we heard about it. There was an uproar everywhere because a great warrior had appeared in Shangxi. Sohan looks at them with side eye and frowns then asks, a great warrior? Then Jay Gal Hyun tells him, of course. We possess something known as the Jianghu ranking list. We usually maintain news about martial artists in the Jianghu that make it to the top 100. Since you killed two of the great demons, you are likely in the top 100. I'm curious as to what rank he will be at as well. In any case, 
in the exclusive news that we're preparing this time around, we are thinking of putting your information in it. The stories of how you defeated the great demoness and the sex demon and what do you hope to achieve or do from now on. Isn't there much to discuss? We have already discussed it a great deal within the JGAL news and have prepared a few articles. Then he takes out the article from his thobe and starts reading it and says, it'll be articles like this. It is written in the article that, Jean Sohan, the great warrior that appeared in Chang'an. How did he destroy the bloody revolving clan and kill the four great demons? Let's see. Then while writing something on the paper with the pen, he says, we should also add the story of you taking over the Chang'an unorthodox faction and also the story where you deployed the inescapable net strategy to defeat the sex demon. So Hun doesn't say anything and is listening to him quietly and then Jae Gal Hyun says with weird expressions, there are so many stories to write about. So Hun smiles and replies to him, you have done your research. Then Hyun says while lifting his index finger, they are also things like this. Is Jean Sohun the appearance of another demon? Who will fill up the empty seats of the two great demons? Just for your information, I don't belong to the orthodox or the unorthodox. We simply meet people who are being talked about in the streets, hear their stories and tell the Jianghu of their stories. After listening, Sohun asks, is that so? And he replies, indeed. While sitting cross-legged, Sohun says confidently, well, it'd be nice to meet with you guys when I'm bored. I'll meet you guys periodically. Both of them are looking at his confident face and Hyun is wondering, he's treating us as some peddlers that are simply selling goods, and Tan is also looking at Sohun. Then Sohun asks them anything else? Then while lifting his metal fan from the table, he says to him, Troop leader Jean, you might not know it well since you are mainly at Chenyang, and then opening his fan, he completes his sentence and says boldly, but the Gal news has quite a great deal of influence, and Sohun smiles and asks, really? Then that man says without even hesitation, yes. Depending on how we introduce you, the position you have in the Jianghu could vary greatly. Aren't you unorthodox? Then crossing his hands fingers with each other, he smiles and says to them, I can't tell if you are giving compliments or insulting me. Let's say I'm unorthodox then. That man asks, do you think that's a compliment? This time Sohan says with utter seriousness, get to the point. That's enough acting. Hearing this, both of them are looking into his eyes meanwhile he's looking at them. Then Hyun says, all right, let's talk business then. We'd like to make a proposal to you. We'll help you become part of the Orthodox. Sohan asks, how do you intend to do that? Then he smiles and replies, that's simply within our capabilities. That's not all we can do, we can turn you into a great warrior. You have killed two of the four great demons after all, haven't you? The following places will soon create an alliance for the sake of the stability of Jianghu. Mount Hua, Zhongnan, Hubei sect, Wudong, and the Jiegao clan. They all happen to be groups that are near Shangxi. With Xi and that's in Shangxi being the border, most of the lands on the west side will belong to you. I heard you haven't unified the Hanzhong unorthodox faction yet. So Hun tells him, I've been busy. Then Hyun continues, saying, I see. In any case, the eastern side of the Shangxi along with the Hunan and the Hubei will be ruled by our alliance. What reason could there be for orthodox factions to gather together? It'd be to either chase out or slaughter demonic factions and probably to attack the unorthodox factions. My patriarch said this, since he killed two of the four great demons, he must have the qualities of becoming a great warrior even though he is from the unorthodox. While there would certainly be a lot of resistance coming from the orthodox factions, if the Jiegao News manages to find out what your intentions are, then the rest of the Jianghu might find out about the birth of a new great warrior. After hearing all this, Sohan asks, So then, what do you want from me? Then while holding his fan in his hands, he smiles and answers, I heard you're very wealthy. Then pouring a tea in the cup from the kettle, Sohan says to him, I do have a lot of money. Then that man comes to the point and says, Please invest 30 million Niang into Jiegao News. While putting the kettle on the table, Sohan asks boldly, I think I heard it wrongly. How much did you just say? Then that man gets up from his chair and while putting his hands on the table, he says to the troop leader, 30 million Niang. We'll turn your forces into part of the orthodox factions and we will also make you into a great warrior and give you the nickname of the greatest warrior of Shangxi. You will also be working with the new Muram alliance that will be formed in the north of the Yangtze River. 
Then while holding the cup in his hand, Sohan says to him, I think you should also tell me what would happen if I refuse. He sighs and replies, about that, well, there are various things that could get out, around there? Like rumors of you being the disciple of the venom demon. Then while drinking his tea, Sohan says to him, I'll become a great warrior if I give you money, and he replies, correct. Then looking at him, Sohan completes his sentence, asking, and if I don't, I'll become a villain? Jay Gal Hyun again sits on the chair and while holding the armrest, he says, well, I'm not saying that explicitly. Then Sohan put his cup on the table and says, and if I become a villain then I'll be enemies with Mount Hua, Zhongnan, Hubei, Wudong, and Jay Gal. If I don't want that, then I should give you 30 million Niang? Now this time, Hyun asks angrily, do you not want to pay 30 million Niang? We are only taking money this one time for you to take the first step to become the most famous and wealthiest person in the Jianghu. Sohan says, all right. He is shocked and asks, sorry. Then Sohan again says, I said all right. Then he smiles and asks, did you just agree to it? Then Sohan while taking out his metallic fan which was given by the immortal physician, he says to him, I don't have the 30 million Niang with me right now, and then Sohan opens that fan and continues, saying, I need to gather that money from the Chang'an and the Chenyang unorthodox factions. Then Sohan starts moving his fan and Jae Gal Hyun says, is that so? That's all right. We can wait for that. While moving that fan, Sohan's eyes turn to pink being poisonous and is listening to him quietly. Then Hyun says to him, you have made a great decision. Please tell us about how you killed the great demoness and the sex demon then. We'll make sure to write it nicely so that it becomes a heroic story for people to know of. We weren't able to find out what happened no matter how hard we looked into it. Then Sohan closes his fan and tells him, I killed the great demoness by snapping her neck. Both of them are confused and Hyun asks, pardon? Then Sohan says again, her neck. I snapped it. After hearing this, he looks frightened and starts drenching in sweat. Then he says, all right. After that, Sohan tells him how he killed the sex demon and then moving his fan from his shoulder to the stomach, he says, and for the sex demon my cut started from here to here. I cut off his arms and his body had a big hole as well. This made him even more horrified and he says, I see. Jay Gal Tan is also looking at Sohan with angry and frightened, both expressions. Then Sohan asks, do you feel hot? Hyun was moving his fan because of the fear and says hesitatingly, yes, it's a little hot now that you mention it. Please continue. Then Sohan keeps telling, the technique I used has a little rotational force, so my blade was a little off course. That's why it's hard to avoid it. Seeing as how he wasn't dead right away despite having all of his intestines coming out. Sohan couldn't even complete his story when both of them fainted and their heads are lying on the table and Sohan put back his fan into his thobe. Then Sohan calls Sayek who was standing outside. He comes inside and says, yes, troop leader. Then Sohan orders him, ventilate this room, the air feels a little stuffy, and he replies obediently, understood. At night, there is a dark cell and Jae Gal Hyun is tied there with a chair while sitting on it and is fainted. He wakes up and opens his immediately and tries to remember what happened few hours ago. He is scared and is thinking, where am I? Was I poisoned? Then Chu Sayek appears there and asks, are you awake? Hyun looks at his face and says angrily, you are Chu Sayek. Do you think you will be able to get away doing something like this? The Mount Hua sect. He couldn't even complete his sentence when Sayek slaps him in his face with great force but he being stubborn, again says, Wudong, but then again Chu Sayek hits him in his face and asks, next would be the Hubei alliance, Zhongnan sect, and the Jaegao clan. Anything else? Hyun laughs and replies to him, I'm asking if you think you can get away from them. This time, Sayek hits him in the head and then comes near him and says, how would I know, asshole? The troop leader will deal with them. Hyun gets angry and loudly says, do you think he's a big shot or something? Does he have no respect for anyone else just because he killed two of the four great demons? Sayek is listening to him quietly and he's also looking at him with anger then Sohan opens the door and is standing at the entrance when Sayek says to him, troop leader, he's asking if you have no respect for anyone else. Sohan is dresses completely different from the usual clothes and then asks Sayek, did you hit him already? He smiles and replies, I only hit him a few times. Jae Gal Hyun looks at him and asks, troop leader, what's the meaning of this? 
is this because it's too much money? In that case, I can go back and try to get them to lower the amount. Aren't you being too much when we didn't come here to pick a fight? We could have talked things out. Sohan didn't say anything and then there was a stool which was covered with a cloth. Sohan removes that cloth and there are different kinds of tools under it. Hyun is shocked to see that and is wondering, torturing tools? Sohan takes out a big knife and raises it in the air. Jae Gal Hyun is horrified to see that and is completely drenched in sweat. Jae Gal Hyun is terrified to see a big sharp knife in Sohan's hand and says immediately, Troop leader, I'm prepared to talk. Why are you acting like this? Sohan looks at him with anger and asks, What's wrong? You wasted my precious time with that nonsense of yours when I am already so busy. Hyun he's speaking loudly because of the fear and says, I wasn't talking nonsense. Once the alliance is formed, they will be able to attack the Shangxi unorthodox faction. But the unorthodox factions in exist in more than just Shangxi, and we also need to worry about the rest so the Jae Gao clan's patriarch came up with the grander strategy. Saying this, he closes his eyes and when Sohan asks, it's all over? Then he opens his one eye and looks at him. Then Sohan sits on a box nearby and says to him, the fact that I'm the Venom Demon's disciple is exposed. I went through the trouble to kill the Great Demoness and the Sex Demon but now there's Mount Hua, Wudong, Hubei, and Jaegal, how am I supposed to take all of them on? There's Zhongnan too. Sohan sighs while saying this and is pretending to be tired then Hyun looks at his face, smiles and is wondering that, looks like he's totally given up. I'll make use of this. Then he says to Sohan, that's why I'm asking you to work with us. Wouldn't all your troubles disappear the moment you became a great warrior? Only one lamp on the wall is glowing in the room and Hyun is tied with the chair with ropes and Sohan is sitting before him on a wooden box with different clothes from the casual ones and after hearing his suggestions, he asks Jae Gal Hyun, really? And he replies, of course. The only ones that have made a vague guess that you are the Venom Demon's disciple and those within the Jae Gal news. Other groups have no idea that you are the Venom Demon's disciple. There's no way we do such a sloppy job, right? We are a reputable company after all. Hyun was bragging about his company and Jae Gal News and then, after hearing this, So Hun smiles and asks, that's how it is? He replies, yes. Then while getting up from his chair, So Hun says to him, I see. Hyun feels a sudden change in the environment like the one happened in the morning and is thinking that, what's happening? It feels like that atmosphere just changed. Then Sohan looks at him and says, Military advisor Jae Gal, listen carefully. Hyun is confused at the word, military advisor and asks, sorry? Military advisor Jae Gal? Sohan looks at him with side eye and says with quite an angry face, what? If I'm going to start a war then shouldn't there be at least one military advisor Jae Gal? Hyun is completely stunned at his words and confidence and is wondering that, he's saying such a crazy thing so naturally. Then he asks the troop leader, you want to start a war? And then Sohan replies to him that, I'll decide on whether I'll start a war or not. You just focus on the strategies. Write it down over there. The names, characteristics, martial prowess rank and the number of martial masters that belong to the Orthodox Alliance. How strained is the relationship between the Mount Hua sect and the Zhongnan sect? How friendly is the Wudang sect and the Jaegal clan? Who within the Wudang sect is unhappy with their sect leader? What kind of weakness they have? After hearing that, Hyun looks at his face and says, Troop leader, but Sohan doesn't even listen to him and slaps him on his cheek with such a force that his chair displaces from its place, moves backwards and hits with the boxes behind. It was a great shot though. Jae Gal Hyun is moaning with pain when Sohan put a foot on the base of his chair and corrects his chair. The intensity of the slap was this much that Hyun couldn't even balance his neck and then Sohan asks him, military advisor Jae Gal, are you listening? And he replies, yes. Then Sohan says to him, should I just kill you? If you are just going to waste my time, just die. Hyun's left cheek is completely swollen and he begs for his life and says, please don't. Chu Sayek is standing behind Sohan and is quietly watching and listening their conversation then Sohan asks Jae Gal, you guys have your martial prowess levels categorized, right? He agrees and replies, yes. Then Sohan tells him that, categorize the martial masters of your alliance according to their martial prowess. I want to know who's friendly with each other, not friendly with each other, whether they have any grudges etc. 
write down all of the details of the relationships of everyone. This time, he doesn't argue and replies obediently, understood. Then Sohan bends a little and comes near his face, looks into his eyes and says, also, one more thing, meanwhile he replies, yes. Then looking straight into his eyes, Sohan orders him that, I want you to come up with the strategy on how you would destroy that alliance if you were me. Think of this as taking a government official test and write it down clearly. Then after hearing this, he was about to say something but when he looks into the troop leader's angry and evil eyes and then remembers the slap, he immediately says, I'm sorry. I'll think about it. Then Sohan again stands up straight and says to him, don't consider only the alliance and me. Also think if there are any outside forces that I can bring in. I want you to be open to possibilities. After telling him everything, Sohan asks him, understood? And he replies with, yes. Then Sohan leaves from there and Chu Sayek opens the door for him and while leaving, he says to Sayek that, only free his hands. Keep away any weapons and make sure to bring him meals on time, and he replies obediently, yes, troop leader. Sohan was about to leave when Hyun asks loudly from behind that, troop leader. Is J Gal Tan alive? Troop leader turns his head and replies while smiling that, I don't know, and J Gal Hyun is shocked to hear that J Gal Tan is fighting with the soldiers of the Chenyang unorthodox faction and is standing in the pavilion at the center and the subordinates are surrounding him and looking at his fighting skills. Then, fighting with another subordinate, he defeats him and then other two takes him away meanwhile he's injured. J Gal Tan is holding a sword in his hand and his hand is bleeding and then looking at the Sohan who is sitting on a chai upstairs, he's wondering that, damn it. I can't even remember how many I've fought so far. To think he'd use me to train his subordinates. Then Sohan says, next. Another soldier comes forward for the fight while holding a sword in his hand and the Sun Dragon Association leader and Sohan is looking at them. Then the subordinate moves towards Tan for the attack and jumps a little in the air and in the other hand, Tan defends himself from his attack and then hits him in his chest with his foot and then moving towards him, he's thinking that, while I can't kill any of you since Hyun is in captive, I'll break your leg. Sohan is looking at him with confusion and then using his middle finger and martial arts techniques, Sohan throws a little stone with such a great force and speed towards him that it breaks his wooden sword into pieces and the subordinate is lying on the floor over his elbows and is looking at the tan sword with fear. J Gal Tan is also confused at what's happening and then Sohan says to Sun Dragon Association leader that, Sun Dragon Association leader. Three people already lost to that fake move just now. He replies, that's right. Then Sohan orders him, stay here and teach them, and he replies, understood. Then Sohan stands up and all his subordinates is looking at him and listening carefully. Then he says to them, all right, that's it for J Gal Tan, you all shall resume training tomorrow. They all reply obediently, yes, troop leader. While leaving from there, Sohan says to Tan, J Gal Tan, follow me, and he's standing there, looking at his back. Sohan is sitting on a chair and is pouring a wine in his glass meanwhile J Gal Tan is sitting before and he is looking at him. His sword is leaning against the table nearby. Tan has brownish eyes and is looking at the troop leader and is wondering that, why didn't he take away my sword? But I don't have any chance of winning even if I tried to fight. He's far more skilled than the information given to us detailed, and while thinking this, he remembers about what happened few moments ago. Then after pouring a wine in his glass, he put the jug on the table and asks J Gal Tan, how old are you? Sohan asks with such a rude tone and he also replies with the same energy as him, I'm 25 years old. Then he asks the troop leader, is J Gal Hyun alive? While holding a glass in his hand, Sohan replies to him, he's alive though I've locked him away. After that, Sohan starts drinking wine and while drinking, he asks him another question that, are you a close relative of his? Like a cousin or something? And he replies with yes. Again, putting that glass of wine on the table, Sohan asks him, if I start a war without listening to your requests, which side would the great justice be on? He immediately answers his question, saying that, great justice doesn't exist in the unorthodox faction. Then Sohan asks, do you really think that? Looking straight into his eyes, he replies, yes, I swear it upon my life. Great justice doesn't exist in the unorthodox faction. Sohan listens to him quietly and then, after few moments, he smiles and says to him, from what I see, both J Gal Hyun and the J Gal clan are trash. 
Hearing this makes him angry and he holds the armrest with great force because of the anger and then says to Sohan, we're not trash. Then Sohan frowns and asks him a question that, do you know what I could do with that 30 million Niang that you guys requested for? Then without even waiting for his answer, Sohan counties, telling him that, it's so much that none of the orphans and beggars of the Western Dark Street, Eastern Spirit Street, Northern Wind Street and the Chenyang region of the South would ever have to worry about food again. After hearing this, Jay Gal Tan smirks and asks, does this mean the Chenyang that you are in charge of has no hungry orphans or beggars? So Hun replies that, no, there will always be orphans and beggars, and Tan says, that's likely the case. So Hun tells him, however, I've been receiving updates from their leaders of the Chenyang unorthodox faction. We took in orphans, gave them names and a place to stay. Reports on how much was spent on all those things, I received multitudes of such reports as soon as I returned to the Chang'an. After hearing this all, Jay Gal Tan asks him, are you expecting me to believe that? Then Sohan tells him that, I was an orphan myself, and he frowns after hearing this. Sohan keeps telling him about his childhood that, I grew up here. I ate and slept here, and then I learned sword dances when I was awake. That's how I lived here. Other than treating the leaders that are managing the different areas harshly, I don't care how much wealth I have. Sohan says all this with quite an anger and he's listening quietly to him. Then the troop leader continues, saying, I ordered the leaders to report to me directly here at the mystic lunar troop of any unfair and wrongdoing that happen in Chenyang. Jay Gal Tan starts taking interest and asks, does that really work? Sohan smiles and replies, probably not 100%, but if it doesn't work properly, I'll just kill them for insubordination because like you have said I'm a villain. Unfortunately, my subordinates know how much better than you guys just how much of a villain I am. The Chang'an unorthodox faction is pretty wealthy. I looked at Go Siajuk and all the places in the Chang'an. They seem to be leaving a better life than people in Chenyang. However, in order to prepare 13 million Niang, would need to ask Go Siajuk to come up with at least half the money and Go Siajuk would ask those under him for the money. Just like a chain effect, they will ask those under them and that cycle would just keep repeating. Inevitably there would be those who'd be robbed off all they had, and then there would be people sitting on the streets and more orphans would also appear. Jay Gal Tan is stunned to hear all those facts but Sohan continues. Giving him shocks one by one that he's completely quiet and is just listening to him. Then Sohan says, if I pay the money, then I would be a great warrior and a villain if I don't. This is the kind of money that you are asking for and you guys are using Mount Hua, Wudong, Hubei and Zhongnan to pressure me into giving you that money. Do you think Jay Gal News only did this to me so far? Probably not, how many such incidents do you think have happened already? Saying this, Sohan punches a table because of the anger and Jay Gal is looking at his hand with a guilty face. Sohan's eyes starts to glow blue because of anger and then he asks Jay Gal that, Jay Gal Tan, raise your head, look me in the eyes and tell me. Who's the trash here? Jay Gal is drenched in sweat but doesn't reply to his question and now both of them are looking at each other. Then Sohan asks him another question, why did you learn martial arts? Jay Gal Tan starts telling him about himself that, I'm from a collateral family of the Jay Gal family. When I was young, they realized I had a talent for swords and it was determined that I would be a martial artist that could be good in both literacy and martial arts. Sohan interrupts him and says, not that. I'm asking why did you train so hard in martial arts? He couldn't understand his words, gets offended and asks, what do you mean? Then Sohan smirks and asks him boldly, did you want to become the patriarch of the Jaegal clan? That's impossible since you are not in the main family or did you want to go to people in the unorthodox factions that were wealthy and tell them, I'm from the Jaegal clan. Give me money and I'll make you orthodox? Did you learn martial arts to protect scholars who say such trash? Jaegal Tan gets infuriated and says, I, and he was about to say something but didn't and stays quiet. Then Sohan looks at him and says that, I'll ask you again. If a war breaks out, which side would the great justice be on? Tan starts trembling and holds the armrest tightly to stop his trembling and then says, I don't think. I'd be with the Jay Gal clan, but Sohan doesn't agree with him and says, no, you guys do have it. That has always been the case. Simply because you lot are of the orthodox. Sohan is pouring a wine in the glass and he's looking at it quietly then Sohan forwards the glass towards him, saying, drink this, and there's a reflection of Jay Gal Tan in the glass full of wine. 
Then while pouring a wine in his glass, Sohan starts telling him about their miscalculation that, you severely miscalculated if you thought I only killed the great demoness and the sex demon for fame. The great demoness Luke and Orphan in the mystic lunar troop as her disciple so I killed her and brought the orphan back. The sex demon was after the great demoness disciples from the start. Then while holding a glass in his hand, Sohan smiles and continues, telling him, J. Gal Hyun said I did a great thing. This opportunity wouldn't be made available to me if I just fought with an unorthodox faction but because I killed two of the four great demons, I can now qualify to become a great warrior. Are you guys qualified to choose who's great or chivalrous? Then while drinking wine, Sohan says, you know, I think true great and chivalrous warriors are decided by the majority of the powerless or those people who receive their help. It's not decided by you people who take money for it. After hearing all that, J. Gal Tan starts feeling guilty of his act and is sitting there with his head down because of shame and then he takes the glass of wine and drinks it. Then after drinking alcohol, he says to the troop leader that, can I ask something? And he replies, go ahead. He asks him that, why did you learn martial arts then? So Hun replies immediately that, to survive, and he's shocked to hear that answer but So Hun is busy drinking wine and then, after drinking the wine, So Hun put the glass on the table and calls Sayek and he instantly appears there and says obediently that, yes, troop leader. So Hun looks at Chu Sayek and then orders him about the Jaegal Tan, lock him underground and treat him as a warrior. Chu Sayek replies, yes, troop leader, and then says to Jaegal, let's go. Jay Gal takes his sword and gets up from the chair but while leaving, he stops for a while and says without turning his back, Troop leader, I have one more question. Why didn't you take away my sword? Then while pouring drink in his glass, Sohan replies boldly, I don't drink wine with trash. While you might be a prisoner here, the sword is yours, and he's stunned to hear that but then he smiles and says, I understand. Meanwhile, Sohan takes glass and starts drinking wine. There is an underground prison and J. Gal Hyun is tied with a chair. There is big table in the room and there are many papers on the table along with the pen. Some bits of papers are also lying on the floor and Sohan is standing before him while holding some pages and reading his strategy report. Sohan is reading with full concentration meanwhile Hyun is looking at his changing facial expressions with nervousness. While taking a brief look of the strategy, troop leaders wondering that, this is pretty good. He did this much in just three days, and then he looks at the bundle of paper lying on the table and wonders, I guess journalists also have their own uses, since J. Gal Hyun is also a journalist. Then after a while, Hyun says to Sohan that, Troop leader, I'm sorry but is J. Gal Tan doing well? He's honest to a fault. Please spare him. The only wrong thing he did was to follow me. I'd kneel in front of you, but my legs are tied. Hyun is truly worried about his cousin like brother and Sohan is looking at him with weird expressions and then tells him about J. Gal Tan, he's doing better than you so don't worry. Hyun is stunned to hear that and asks him, what? Better than me? Then Sohan tells him, yes. He's being treated like a warrior. Hyun asks, what about me? Sohan replies immediately, like a criminal, and he's shocked to hear that he's being treated like a criminal. So Hun again starts reading his strategy and sees the word ultimate martial master, and then asks Hyun about this, an ultimate martial master? He tells Sohan that, yes, that's a term that J. Gal clan uses to describe someone who's one of the top 10 martial masters. While holding a page in his hand, Sohan says to him, I didn't know that one of the top 10 martial masters was in the alliance. J. Gal is also listening to him angrily and is wondering, there are countless martial masters in the alliance but if he knew that there was a top 10 martial master then even if it was him, he'd have given up on starting a war. Then Sohan sighs and says to him, there is also a few supreme peak level martial masters. Quite a few peak level ones too. Well, since it's an alliance, I expected this much. J. Gal is stunned to hear that and asks Sohan, you expected this? Sohan goes to the table and is now looking at the other pages of the strategy report and then replies to him, it's the Mount Hua sect and the Wudong sect. I should be glad there's only one ultimate martial artist. Hyun is now getting confused and is thinking, be glad? Is he really going to start a war with the alliance? Then Sohan says to him, where's the information on the ultimate martial master? It only mentions Wudong sword immortal, and Wudong sect leader, retired. He replies, I'll take care of that part soon. Then while holding a set of papers in his hand, 
Sohan says to him, it seems you are not doing your job properly. Did your bad habits as a journalist act up again? Something like, I got all the information, would he dare to kill me? Jae Gal Hyun disagrees with him and says out of fear, that's not it. Then Sohan turns his head and looks at him with anger and asks, who am I the disciple of? He replies, you are the disciple of the venom demon. Then Sohan asks him, want me to give you medicine? Jae Gal is stunned to hear that and asks, what? Medicine? But then he looks at the troop leader's face and is wondering, the medicine made by the Venom Demon's disciple, and soon he realized that it's not good to receive medicine from the Venom Demon's disciple and replies to him immediately, I don't need that. I'll play along from here on. Then Sohun tells him, if I lose the war, you'll die too, and he asks with surprise, what? While looking at the paper, Sohun says to him, if I die, my subordinates will also die. If that happens, there won't be anyone to feed you, would there? While the place you are in is a prison, it can't be found that easily. After hearing, Jay Gao says, that means, but Sohan interrupts him and says, you're my military advisor until the war ends but your office will be in the prison, and he's listening to him quietly. Suddenly, voices start to come from the outside. Someone was asking, the troop leader is here? But Chu Sayek tries to stop that person from entering the room, saying, please, wait for a moment. Then Chu Sayek comes at the entrance of the room and informs the troop leader, troop leader, the first disciple is here. So Han sighs and then Sayek was taking permission that, should I let her? But the senior sister comes there before the troop leader gives permission. The senior sister is wearing green-colored clothes and is covering her face with a beautiful net veil and she's looking extremely gorgeous that even Jae Gal Hyun is looking at her with interest. Then she comes inside and asks him frankly, troop leader, what are you doing in the prison? Sohan doesn't even look at her and asks, why are you here? She gets offended at this and asks angrily, it's been a few days already, should you show your face at least? Jae Gal Hyun is completely drenched in sweat and is looking at the senior sister, wondering that, who is she? I can't believe there's a woman who could speak like that to him. Sohan looks at her and asks, were you feeling very cooped up? She looks annoyed and replies frankly that, yeah, it's way too peaceful. It doesn't suit me. Seriously, I even thought that I could experience energy deviation with this level of peacefulness. Then Sohan says to her, in that case, rest here a few days before leaving. On the top floor, there's the room that the pavilion owner used to use. It's the largest room, you can use it alone. She is pleased after hearing this and asks, really? Then she thanks him and greets him, saying, thank you, troop leader. Sohan looks at her, smiles and then replies, no need for thanks. Then the senior sister looks at Hyun who's tied with the chair and asks, but what's with this guy? Then Sohan tells her that, he's a journalist from the Jae Gal family who created Jae Gal News. He asked me for 30 million Niang. She gets infuriated after hearing this and asks, 30 million Niang? And Hyun is looking at her angry face with fear. Moreover, Sohan tells her that, exactly. He said he'll make me a great chivalrous warrior and if I don't give him the money, he will make me one of the four great demons. After hearing this, she gets extremely angry and slaps him with such a great force that his chair falls on the floor and he's moaning with pain. Then she says to him, what a ridiculous bastard. You think 30 million Niang is a joke? His chair is still lying on the floor and both of them are standing there, looking at him. Then the senior sister asks Sohan, why are you keeping him alive? Just kill him. Sohan counter questions, should I have done that? Hearing the news of his murder, Jae Gal Hyun loudly says to them, I have things that I need to do. She asks, what? Then while lying on the floor, he tells her that, I'm in the midst of coming up with a strategy. I'm the Jae Gal military advisor of the Mystic Lunar Troop. I'm in the midst of planning a strategy to deal with the alliance under the orders of the troop leader. She looks at the Sohan and asks, really? But Sohan doesn't say anything. Then she smiles and asks Hyun, so, you're a traitor? He is shocked to hear that for himself and asks, traitor? Then she asks him, aren't you from the Jae Gal clan? He replies to her, yes, that's right. I'm in the collateral but. She interrupts him, bends over him a little and says to him while smiling that, but you just said you are the Mystic Lunar Troops Jae Gal military advisor, didn't you? He replies, yes, I did say that. She's looking at him with pity and asks, you're a traitor then, aren't you? 
and he gets stunned when he realizes the situation. Now, he's wondering, a traitor, even though I took on the military advisor role because I was threatened, would the people of the clan believe my words? No, even if they do believe it, would the alliance forgive me for leaking out damaging information? After realizing the fact, he closes his eyes because of the fear and guilt. After listening to their conversation, Sohan sighs and then says to senior sister, go back up. I need to talk with him a little more. She turns around and says to him, all right, troop leader. While leaving, she stops for a while, turns around her head and looks at Jae Gal Hyun and calls him, hey, and he replies with, yes. Then she laughs loudly and says to him, try running away if you want. I already deployed the inescapable net formation outside. The one that could capture even the sex demon. He's shocked to hear that and is wondering, the inescapable night formation that captured even the sex demon, a master of mobility arts. It's impossible for me to escape from this place. There's no way my acting could do anything. She's standing there, enjoying Hyun's situation meanwhile Sohan is looking at her back. While leaving, she laughs and says to him, I already deployed the inescapable net formation outside. She is studying there laughing meanwhile Sohan is turning behind, looking at her. Then Jae Gal Hyun replies to her, that's what you did, I see. Sohan is looking at him with side eye and then, after a while, grabs his clothes from his shoulder and he's horrified at this sudden move. Then Sohan asks angrily, what did you just say? He's looking into troop leader's eyes and then immediately replies, my apologies. Sohan comes near him and says to him that, listen carefully, and he replies, yes, sir. Then Sohan says to him, there's no need for you to know the details about my troops or subordinates but I'll let you know how many martial masters I have. The martial master that just left is able to take on one of the supreme peak martial masters that you mentioned. After hearing this, he asks, is that so? Sohan leaves his shoulder and is now standing near him and replies to him, indeed. While standing behind him, Sohan's thinking that, well, it's kind of true that she can deal with them, meanwhile Hyun is looking at him and then again, Sohan says to him, and I'm not the one who caught up to the sex demon with Qin Gong. It was a man known as the Almighty Gu Sa. He's the martial master who's the most exceptional in Qin Gong within Shangxi. Jae Gal starts sweating after hearing this and asks, a Qin Gong marital master? Then looking outside, the window, Sohan replies to him, exactly. So, in the end, the sex demon had no choice but to give up on running away. He's the best in the Shangxi and was disguised as a waiter. Hyun is looking at him with puzzled face and says, Gu Sa. Then Sohan asks to him, have you also heard of the crazy venom sex demon, but he refuses and replies to him, it's my first time hearing of that name. Sohan tells him, that person is on the level of the four great demons. If I'm faced with a situation where I might die, the Venom Demon will also make his move and I also have Go Siajuk and the Chenyang's leaders. Jae Gal Hyun replies obediently, understood. Then Sohan looks at him without turning his back and says to him, so, there's no reason I would lose in numbers. The problem would be the Wudong Sword Immortal. Hyun agrees with him and says to him while turning his head behind that, yes. If he joins the war, then you are sure to lose the war. After this, Sohan turns around and says to him, so write everything you know about him. What he likes, dislikes, and where he goes to, and he replies, understood. Once again, Sohan says to him, before that, I want you to write our justification for going to war. After hearing this, something clicks his mind and then he asks with great shock, what? Our justification for going to war? Sohan is standing near him and replies to him, yes. I want you to write down every single detail on why we had no choice but to attack the Jae Gal clan and justify our attacks. You know the reason the best, don't you? He looks at him and says, that's true but why do I need to be the one writing that? Sohan frowns and then says to him with quite an angry face, what are you talking about? Of course, the military advisor should write it. Are you expecting me to do it? Jae Gal Hyun is looking at him with panic and troop leader is also looking at him with side eye and then he replies to Sohan, with his head down that, I'll make the preparations. And then moving towards the door, Sohan says to him, I'll look forward to it then. After saying that, Sohan leaves the room and closes the door. Now he is sitting alone in the room and says to himself, I can't believe I have to justify an attack on the clan. Then he remembers about the senior sister which said to him few moments ago that, you are a traitor then. 
Then he closes his eyes because of regret and is thinking, damn it. Why do I have all the justification in my head already? After leaving the prison, troop leader enters his room where the Sun Dragon Association leader along with the other two Chenyang, S leaders is waiting for him. When they see him entering the room, they all stands up and greets the troop leader. One of them says, troop leader, it's been a while. There is a table and a chair for the troop leader and different kinds of books, papers, pens, maps, and also the kettle and the cups are placed on the table meanwhile there is a separate table and three chairs for the other leaders. Sohan sits on his chair and says to them, everyone, take a seat, and they all replies obediently, yes, troop leader. The Eagle Clan leader says to the troop leader frankly, congratulations on killing the sex demon and the great demoness, but Sohan looks at him and replies rudely, be quiet, and he's feeling ashamed at his insult and says, yes, sir. Then the trope leader asks them, how are our forces? The North Wind Sword Wolf Clan leader replies to him that, we have brought only the elites as per your instruction. May I know why you gathered everyone so urgently? Then Sohan tells them, the Jaegal clan said that we could become orthodox if we paid 30 million Niang. Everyone in the room is shocked to hear that and the North Wind Sword Wolf clan leader asks, what? 30 million Niang? Meanwhile the other says, that's daylight robbery. The Sun Dragon Association leader asks, what do you intend to do? Troop leader replies to him, I rejected their offer. North Wind says, that was a wise decision. After him, the Sun Dragon Association leader says, I can't believe they asked for 30 million Niang, that's ridiculous. Then Sohan closes his eyes because of the situation in which he's stuck and then says to them, that's why I'm trying to help us become orthodox in my own ways. There's no reason I can't do what the Jaegal clan can do. All of them are looking at him with confusion and says, what? After this, Sohan says to them, we will lead our elite troops to cut off the rotten parts of the orthodox. I'm thinking of attacking the Jaegal clan itself. Hearing this, the Sun Dragon Association leader says, in that case, a war will be breaking out. Sohan looks at him and says angrily, no we are already at war. The Jaegal clan patriarch has declared war against me but I will now change how we fight to be like the orthodox. The North Wind Sword Wolf asks, fighting like the orthodox? Sohan replies, we will fight with literacy like how they fight. In order to fight with both literacy and martial arts, I will need to create an alliance. That's the natural order of sequence in order to prepare for war. The name of the alliance will be the Mystical Lunar Alliance. After hearing the name, North Wind asks, the Mystic Lunar Alliance, is it something like the Muram Alliance? Sohan replies, the name Mystic Lunar Troop will disappear from now on. Please get rid of the names, Chen Yang Unorthodox Faction, Sun Dragon Association and the Eagle Clan as well. The Chang'an Unorthodox Faction will be the same. Then the Sun Dragon Association leader asks the troop leader that, since long ago, recognition must be received in order to create an alliance. How does Mystic Lunar Alliance intend to receive recognition? Sohan gets annoyed at his question and counter-questions, saying, I'm saying I will use money to make us orthodox, what recognition do I need? Even if they don't recognize us that's a later problem to think of. I'm intending to get support from the powerless for now. Even the wild green troop that's after me, I'm intending to make them a part of the Mystic Lunar Alliance. The wild green troop is a cruel and lawless group that kidnaps even children after all. We are to crush them in the name of justice. After hearing the word, justice, the Eagle Clan leader is wondering that, justice, isn't that a word that has never been associated with us? Thinking this, he starts laughing and tries his best to stop his laugh by covering his mouth and then all of them are looking at him with anger. When he realizes that everyone is staring at him, he feels guilty and says, my apologies. Then Sohan counties, saying, the Hanjong unorthodox faction will also become part of the Mystic Lunar Alliance since it's unorthodox as well. All of them are looking with confusion and shock at the troop leader and the Eagle Clan and the North Wind Sword Wolf Clan leader is thinking, wait, we are attacking them because they are unorthodox? Meanwhile the Sun Dragon Association leader is thinking, we are unorthodox too though? After that, Sohan says to them, I will also declare the killing of Sex Demon and the Great Demoness as something the Mystical Lunar Troop did and make sure to spread the news that all of you saved orphans in your own areas. It's the truth after all. If the Orthodox want to come after us, 
then we will make this into a fight between orthodox factions which means, I intend to fight them physically and also fight them with acts of kindness as propaganda. I'll be embracing greater justice from now on. We'll save the people. Protect the weak. While the orthodox has been talking about doing all those nice things, I intend to do better than whatever they are doing. After listening to him quietly, all of them are looking at him with strange eyes and then the Sun Dragon Association leader says, Yes, sir. Then after telling them the half of the plan, Sohan says to them, The only time I massacred lots of people was to destroy the Revolving Blood Clan. Moreover, the Revolving Blood Clan was an unorthodox clan. I'm going to expose what the Jagal clan tried to do to me. The world will judge who's in the right. But if the other forces still decide to attack me, then I'll defeat every single one of them. I'll decide what I'll do depending on the situation. All of them reply simultaneously that, we will follow you. Then Sohan says to them angrily that, the best tactic would be to capture the Jagal clan patriarch and torture or threaten him and expose the Jagal news to the Jianghu. I'm intending to get him to confess to the threats, corruption, and money that they have earned with their brushes. Then Sohan smiles and continues, saying, if I have that, we could probably fight with the orthodox in terms of public opinion. The Sun Dragon Association leader says, that's a great idea. Then Sohan continues, telling them the strategy that, the not-so-good plan would be, if we can't capture the Patriarch, then we will force our way in and kill all of the Jagal clan. If that happens, then no matter what justifications I give, we'll probably have to fight the Orthodox. After that time, I will use the Mystic Lunar Alliance to deal with them. I intend to recruit all the forces that have been suppressed by the Jagal clan into the alliance and so, the most important thing is how fast we advanced towards the Jagal clan. We will be going in fiercely. Of course, I'll be handling the Patriarch. I also have some tasks for the military advisors under all of you. The North Wind Sword Wolf says, please continue. Sohan continues and says, send a letter to those who were affected negatively by the Jagal clan. I'll pass a list of people who I think have been affected to you guys. We will be preparing to go to war on both the literacy and military force end. After hearing this, all of them reply simultaneously that, understood, and the meeting end there. At night, Sohan is standing in his room at his study table and is looking at the introduction report prepared by the Jagal Hyun and is reading about the UGL that, UGL, Wudong sect. Wudong Sword Immortal, Jagal Alliance's only top 10 martial master the highest in seniority within the Wudang sect. There are rumors that he couldn't become the sect leader because he loves to drink alcohol, singing, and dancing but there are also guesses that he's drinking, singing, and dancing because he didn't want to become the sect leader. He's the toughest person for the current sect leader to get along well with and also the most shunned person. E1 tees the second Inyang elder who was the world's most wicked villain into the desert in order to finish him off. After reading that, Sohan smiles and says to himself, what an amazing person. This is what being an orthodox is like. Then moving towards his window, Sohan's thinking, the top ten martial masters, I'm very curious as to just how strong he is. Then again Sohan smiles and says to himself, if I'm not strong enough, I might die from fighting him but I am dying to meet him already. He was standing there, looking outside the window and was talking to himself but from nowhere, the senior sister appears there and after hearing his words, asks, what? Might die? Sohan looks at her and asks, why aren't you asleep yet? She stands there while leaning against the table and is standing cross-armed. Then she asks him, that's what I want to say to you. Who's killing you? The Wudong Sword Immortal? Sohan turns around and looks at her and asks, you know him? She replies, of course, I do. It would be stranger to not know him. Then Sohan asks another question about him that, really? What kind of a person is he? She tells him, someone my master avoided. He is also the reason my master doesn't go near the Wudang sect. Same for the other four great demons. After hearing this, Sohan smiles and says, your master avoided him? And so did the rest of the four great demons. She's confused at his smile and asks, what's so interesting? This time, Sohan smiles evil and asks her, he's interesting, isn't he? A martial master that even the four great demons avoid, but she's still looking at him with puzzled face. Then Sohan offers her, saying, we'll be attacking the Jagal clan soon, come with us. She smiles and asks, why? Do you need me? 
So Han looks at her and replies to her, you are strong, aren't you? Of course you will be of help but it will be tough going for sure because it will be a tight schedule advancing towards the Jaegal clan. If the Jaegal patriarch and I end up fighting, I won't be able to do much elsewhere. She replies, this is great. I was honestly dying of boredom, so I'd rather go sightseeing at the Jaegal clan. The first disciple is covering her face with the green veil of net and she's wearing that beautiful dress that she was wearing in the morning. Then Sohan looks at her, smiles and then says to her, that veil is a good idea. Although it does remind me of the great demoness. She gets happy at the compliment and then starts flexing, saying, are you saying it's a great idea because I'm too pretty? Sohan replies rudely, get lost. After hearing this, she greets him and says obediently, yes, troop leader. She turns around and was leaving the room when Sohan says to her, go to sleep, and she also replies in the same tone that, okay, you should sleep too. Sohan is still standing there and is looking outside at the different tents that are established in the courtyard and is thinking while smiling, I might become a public enemy after this fight. I might die too. I might also lose numerous subordinates. They're all worrying, but I'm getting excited at the thought that there's going to be a fight soon. Sohan sends letter to different alliance leaders through the arrows. The letters say, I received a proposal from the Jaegal clan, to make me into a great chivalrous warrior, and also offered to include me into the orthodox alliance. The price for that was 30 million Niang. Is this truly how the orthodox does things? I killed the great demoness and the sex demon who were a part of the four great demons in Chang'an without thinking about using it to acquire fame but the Jaegal clan did those things and said they could make me into a great chivalrous warrior. However, if I refused their offer, then they'd make me into a public enemy and warned me that they could wage war against me. I have both the witness and evidence of the Jaegal clan blackmailing me. Everyone who has been affected by the Jaegal clan and the Jaegal news abuse of power, please come to me. If you have been robbed by them, please stand by our side. It's alright if you don't want to fight but please help to spread this news that there's a man in Chenyang who can't tolerate such unfairness and has decided to fight with the big-time Jaegal clan. Chenyang's orphan will settle things with the Jaegal clan, Jean Sohan, at night. Sohan along with the Go Siajuk, the Sun Dragon Association leader, Chu Sayek, the first disciple of the Great Demoness, the North Wind Sword Wolf and the Eagle Clan, is standing at a mountain that is near to the Jaegal clan and is looking at the Jaegal clan. Then looking at the Jaegal clan, Sohan says to them, the war declaration has been sent to the Zhongnan sect, the Hubei alliance, and the Wudang sect, right? Chu Sayek replies, yes, it should have arrived about now. The Sun Dragon Association leader says, but by the time they see the war declaration, the result of the fight between us and the Jaegal clan should be out already. Sohan smiles evil and says, to think a Chenyang's orphan will rip the Jaegal clan apart. All of them are also looking at him while smiling. Then he says to them, I'll deal with the patriarch. They all reply simultaneously, yes, sir. Sohan smiles and orders them, let's go. Sohan heads towards the Jaegal clan along with his other members and then he raises two fingers in the air and all of them takes out their swords. Then Sohan says to them, we will move as quickly as possible to get past the inner courts and fight it out in the main hall because that's where we will be able to make up for the disadvantage in having fewer numbers. All of them covers their faces with the masks and then the North Wind Sword Wolf says, yes, sir. Then he asks, wouldn't it be better for you to wear a mask? Sohan looks at him, smirks and replies, I don't need it because I'm intending to attract their attention. Saying this, they all heads towards the Jaegal clan's main hall and Sohan is leading then meanwhile the others are following him. The two soldiers are standing near the wall holding swords in their hands and when they see someone jumping behind them, they get confused. In the meantime, all of them jumps from the other side of the walls and kills those two soldiers. They have finally entered in the Jaegal clan and there is quiet and peace everywhere. Two soldiers are standing outside the house and when they looked at them, they take out their sword saying, intruders. They move towards them for the attack but Sohan takes out his dual crescent sword and kills them meanwhile a man is looking at them from the balcony of the first story. Sohan along with his people is heading towards the main hall and then the lights of the main hall start to glow and the soldiers of the Jaegal clan also starts gathering in the courtyard. Sohan looks at them and is thinking, they are quick to respond. 
The soldiers of the Jaegal clan attacks on them from the three sides and the Sun Dragon Association leader and the North Wind Sword Wolf are dealing with them. The eight soldiers are standing at the entrance while holding swords in their hands and Sohan moves towards them and then he put his foot on one stair and then jumps up in the air meanwhile all of them are looking at him and now he's standing on the gate which is on the side of the courtyard. Then Sohan raises his hand in the air, points it towards the soldiers of the Jaegal clan and then uses his poisonous powers and blows them away in one shot. Then after clearing their way, they all moves towards the main hall where someone from the inside asks, who dares to trespass within the clan? They all entered the main hall where the Jaegal patriarch, Jaegal Pyo is standing there with one soldier on each side and is looking at the Sohan and his members. Sohan is looking into his eyes and he's also looking at him. Then Sohan moves towards him while holding his dual crescent blades in his hands. The patriarch looks at the Sohan and says to his soldiers, what are you standing around for? Go subdue that bastard, and they reply, obediently, yes. Then soldiers from the different directions of the hall moves towards Sohan for the attack but he's standing there, chill and calm. Then Sohan also moves towards them in the meantime his other members also come inside and starts fighting with the Jaegal patriarch soldiers and he's standing there while looking at them fighting. Sohan is killing them one by one by using his swords and this makes the patriarch angry and then he holding his sword, moves towards Sohan, calling him, bastard. Sohan looks at him with his pink poisonous eyes and while attacking at him, Sohan's wondering that, should I deflect it? No, I should hide my strength just in case. All of them are fighting with the other soldiers meanwhile Sohan is dealing patriarch. Then for the purpose of hiding his strength, he pretends to be weak and then Patriarch attacks Sohan and throws him away in just one shot and everyone around is shocked to see that. Now, Sohan is standing at a distance from him while holding his dual crescent blades then the Patriarch Pyo smiles and says, everyone, stop. Hearing this, everyone stops and now Sohan and Patriarch both are looking into each other's eyes and then Pyo laughs and says, this is so ridiculous. Then he sits on his chair and says to his soldiers, empty the center. Lock the gates of this hall and deploy the fog turtle formation and leave the first-rate warriors here. The rest are to stand guard outside. They all replies obediently, yes, sir. Sohan and his people are standing there, looking at them. Then the patriarch says to the man standing on his left, left guardian, and he replies immediately, yes, sir. Then he says to him, they managed to get in here in an instant. What is with this pathetic state? What happened to that defense you have always been so confident in? He feels guilty and replies, my apologies, patriarch. Sohan is looking at him with anger and wondering, he is reprimanding his subordinates in this situation? Is it because he thinks there's no need to pay attention to us? Then the patriarch says to them, and you, you're pretty bold. To think you would charge into my house with just that amount of men? Then he again smiles and says to Sohan, before I kill you I would like to know who you are. After hearing this, Sohan sighs and smiles and when the patriarch sees that he's smiling, this makes him confused and he's wondering, he laughed? He dares do that when I, the patriarch of the Jaegal clan, am here? Then he says to Sohan, you don't know your place then, now do you? Then he says to the man standing on his left side, left guardian. Then the left guardian while holding his swords in his hand, moves towards the Sohan and now they are standing face to face with each other. Then he says to Sohan, I'm Jaegal clan's left guardian, Jaegal Chugyung. Sohan gets annoyed at this and says, all right, bring it on. He gets infuriated at this and says, seeing as how you lack manners, you must be of the unorthodox factions. Sohan smiles at this and then moves towards him for the attack. He's fighting and blocking Sohan's attacks meanwhile Sohan is using his blades for fighting. There's a clash between their swords and then Chugyung uses his one leg for the attack. Sohan takes advantage of this and attacks with on his leg and then throws him away and now he's lying behind the patriarch near the wall while injured. Then patriarch is looking at the Sohan's dual crescent blades and is wondering what are strange twin blade and he is strong enough to subdue the left guardian in an instant. Wondering this, he says to Sohan, I guess 30 million Niang was too much for you since you came running all the way here. Isn't that so? Then he smiles and says, troop leader Jean Sohan. Sohan smirks and replies, yeah, it was. Then the patriarch Pyo also smiles and says to Sohan, I agree but I didn't know you would come running here so soon. That means, Go Siajuk and the Sun Dragon Association leader are there too. 
and that man who's carrying a great sword must be the North Wind Sword Wolf. I'm not sure about the remaining one, the Black Bear Sector Leader. Whatever the case, it seems all the famous people in the Chenyang and the Chang'an are all here, and all of them are listening to him quietly. Then the patriarch stands up and says to them, Do you guys know this? Jean Sohan is 26 years old this year. I can't believe you guys are submitting to such a young brat, aren't you ashamed of yourselves? You guys aren't people who would serve others though. Am I wrong? Here's a suggestion to you, the leaders of the unorthodox factions. I'll provide you with 50 men, join hands with them and defeat Jean Sohan. If you kill him, then I will give everyone that's here, 100,000 Niang each. All of them are stunned after hearing this amount of money then the patriarch Pyo says to the troop leader, Jean Sohan, did you know? The most powerful thing within the unorthodox factions is money. Sohan smiles after hearing this and says, I like it. I'm referring to the current atmosphere. I can confirm how loyal my subordinates are to me and I can also know what you are thinking. I'll tell you the answers of my subordinates. Then Sohan orders his subordinates that, sheath your swords. Hearing this, they all put back their swords into covers immediately and the Pyo is shocked to see that and is wondering, they sheath their swords on his command in the middle of an enemy base? Does he have complete control over them? Then Sohan says to him, this is my answer. It's my turn to propose something now. Step forward yourself. I'll fight with you alone. That's the best way to minimize losses. Then the patriarch being stubborn, replies, and if I don't? Then Sohan replies boldly, then I have no choice but to kill you. Hearing this, the patriarch smile and says, all right, kill all of them. Sohan looks at him with his pink eyes which are poisonous and then kills most of the subordinates of the patriarch in one sight of poison. The subordinates who are standing around are shocked to see that and are confused because he didn't even use his sword. Now, the poison is coming out of Sohan's body and then while holding his blade in his hand, he says, what a waste of lives. Then Sohan starts killing all the subordinates one by one, using his dual crescent blades and poison. Then, while killing them, Sohan says, all these pitiful subordinates are dying just because their patriarch doesn't wish to step forward. The ones who are alive are looking at the patriarch for the help. One of them is thinking, patriarch, please step forward, meanwhile the others thinking, please help us, but the patriarch is looking at them with anger and calls them, bastards. Sohan is still killing the subordinates one by one and then asks the patriarch, do you truly intend to let your subordinates die meaningless deaths? Finally, the patriarch who was holding his sword in his hand and was looking at them dying mercilessly, gets angry and his sword starts to glow like some kind of current starts to flow around his sword. Then holding his sword, he moves towards the Sohan for attack and says, how impudent. Now the patriarch is fighting with Sohan and then boom. There's a clash between their powers and everyone is stunned to see that. Now both, Sohan and Patriarch are using their swords and martial arts techniques for fighting with each other. The Patriarch uses his sword and power and pushes Sohan a little far away and then again uses his powers and attacks Sohan and throws him out of the hall. Then while moving towards the outside, Patriarch says to the subordinates of the Sohan who are standing at a side while looking at them that, pathetic fools, you should have taken a hold of the opportunity one gave you, you will regret your decision. Go see Ajuk, the Sun Dragon Association leader and North Wind Sword Wolf are thinking, no, we are not the ones who will be regretting our decisions. Then the patriarch was moving towards the outside when he sees a pink beam of light coming from the outside and then uses his sword's power to defend himself from that beam of poison. Then someone asks, what are you guys doing outside? The patriarch gets angry at this and moves towards outside to see what's happening there and he's shocked to see that a lot of his subordinates are lying dead on the ground in the yard. Meanwhile the senior is standing on the gate of the entrance while holding her whip in the hand and Sohan is also standing in the courtyard. Then the senior sister smirks and says, to think the Jaegal patriarch would personally fight, what a manly man. While looking at the dead bodies of the subordinates, patriarch Pyo is wondering, he had more people accompanying him, we have suffered quite a great loss. Arrogant bastard. The patriarch is standing upstairs meanwhile Sohan is standing downstairs while holding his swords in his hands and then the patriarch moves towards the Sohan for attack and Sohan also gets ready for the attack. Now, both of them are fighting in the center of the courtyard and are using all their might. 
The floor gets cracked and breaks because of their strengths then while looking at Sohan's face, the patriarch's eyes start to glow yellowish and he's thinking that, I'll put an end to you for sure this time. Thinking this, he raises his yellow sword in the air and uses the skill, Hidden Dragon Charge, and because of that, a big and horrific yellow dragon appears there and moves towards the Sohan. The troop leader, Jean Sohan looks at that dragon and then attacks on its neck with his poisonous sword but that dragon is made up of weird kind of material that is doesn't not destroy. Then that dragon again attacks Sohan and this time, he attacks Sohan with that much of force that Sohan gets injured and is now leaning against the wall with his eyes closed. Everyone standing there, is shocked and confused but the patriarch smiles and again attacks Sohan with his sword. Sohan opens his eyes and again tries to defend himself but this time, he again gets injured and starts bleeding and now, he's sitting on the floor. Then the patriarch smiles like an evil and says to Sohan, Jean Sohan, you have underestimated the Jagal clan's martial arts. Look at that pathetic state of yours. Then moving towards Sohan for another attack, the patriarch says to him, after I cut off your head, I will also ridicule the rest of the unorthodox factions. But this time, Sohan uses his sword and attacks him and makes a cut on his arm and is now standing while pointing his sword towards the patriarch. First, the patriarch looks his wounded arm then Sohan and is wondering, what's happening? I didn't see his movements, but the Sohan is standing there, looking at him with pink eyes and smiling face. That smile makes the patriarch angry and then he attacks Sohan, saying, bastard. You dare laugh arrogantly just because you got lucky with a single attack? This time, First Sohan defends himself and then attacks him using his swords and different marital arts skills. Then standing at a distance, while looking at him, the patriarch is wondering that, this guy, his movements are different than before. Then Sohan smiles and says to him, Jagal patriarch, why on earth, do you think so much when you are fighting? The patriarch is extremely angry and is thinking, has he been hiding his skills so far? Then the patriarch while saying loudly, shut up, again sends his dragon towards the Sohan and this time again attacks Sohan with greater force than before. Sohan again hits with the wall and while looking at him, the first disciple of the great demoness touches her forehead because of disappointment and says T.I. herself, here he goes again. There is a dense black smoke everywhere and while sitting between that smoke, Sohan smiles and says to the patriarch that, patriarch, you seem weaker than before. The patriarch gets angry at this and then again attacks Sohan, using his sword but this time he attacks back. Sohan gets out of the smoke, moves up in the air and then attacks back. Both of them are fighting with all their might, using their skills. After fighting for some time, Sohan stands before the Jagal patriarch and he's also standing there, while holding his sword in his hand. The subordinates of Sohan also comes outside to see them and while looking at them, the North Wind Sword Wolf asks, that's it, right? The Sun Dragon Association leader replies, I think so. Then the North Wind again asks, was it from when he slashed his shoulder just now? That's when the Jagal Patriarch got poisoned. The Jagal Patriarch is standing still at one place and is feeling tired and is wondering that, my body doesn't feel right. Did he use paralyzing poison? I don't have enough time to use my internal energy to deal with it. Although that's what I said, it's not like I can circulate my energy right now and the veins in his eyes also starts turning blue because of the poison. Sohan is standing before him while holding his dual crescent blades in his hands and then says to the Jagal patriarch, see, this is why, you shouldn't have asked me to pay 30 million Niang in the first place and make me come here. The eyes of the patriarch start turning blue and he's looking at the Sohan when Sohan attacks him for one more time and he tries to block the attack with his sword. Then Sohan again attacks many times and the patriarch tires his best to stop them. Then while attacking, Sohan says to him, you fight pretty well. I wonder how much stronger you'd have gotten if you had continued on training instead of fiddling around with a brush. The patriarch is still trying his best to fight despite of being poisoned and then gets wounds at the different parts of his body. While fighting, the patriarch is thinking that, I only allowed him to get one attack in and this is how I go down. Then the Sohan says to him, you must have known that I was the venom demon's disciple. The patriarch doesn't reply to him but in his head, he's thinking that, of course, I knew. However, you had made me forget that. It seems, I was drunk on something. Sohan takes advantage of his paralyzing body and attacks in his belly, saying, Jagal patriarch, farewell. The blood starts coming out of his body and mouth and Sohan's sword is still in his belly. 
He being in the miserable condition, says to the Sohan, troop leader Jean Sohan, you should avoid killing me. He couldn't even complete his sentence when Sohan takes out the sword from his belly forcefully and while saying, I've lost, the patriarch falls on the floor. The subordinates of the patriarch are shocked to see that and are wondering that, I can't believe the patriarch is dead. Sohan is standing near the patriarch's dead body and he's lying upside down on the floor. Then Sohan says to everyone who's standing there that, the Jaegal clan is to clean up the corpse of your patriarch and to report to the main hall. Every single one of you. Those who want to follow your patriarch to the afterworld, you can stay here. All of them are looking at him with shock and then they immediately start cleaning up the Jaegal clan by taking away the dead bodies of the subordinates and the patriarch. The subordinates of the patriarch are busy in cleaning meanwhile Sohan is standing there, with his subordinates. Then the first disciple comes there and asks Sohan, troop leader, are you alright? He looks at her and replies, I'm good. Then he orders, everyone, listen up. They all reply, yes, sir. Then the troop leader says to them that, ignore the bulky items. Captain takes the lead in gathering all the assets of the Jaegal clan. The captain along with the Sun Dragon Association leader and Chu Sayek is smiling after listening this and then replies obediently, understood. There is also a blood all over his face and hair and then Sohan continues, saying, the rest of the subordinates are to move to the inn that has been prepared. After that's done, faction leader Go will take over and move the assets back to Chang'an. Faction leader Go, there's no need for you to do it yourself, you can just choose the people to transport the assets back and also a person to be in charge of them, and Go Siajuk replies, yes, sir. Then Sohan tells them that, the remaining people will stand by at the inn and if I'm not back in two days, all of you are to depart for Chang'an. The faction leader, Go asks, pardon? Then Sohan replies to him, because the subsidiary sect members and elders are in other branches and aren't here, things will be able to progress smoothly here without any troubles. However, once they find out what happened here, the alliance forces and the martial masters of the subsidiary sect would come charging. Especially those from the Wudang sector Hubei alliance who are closer to this place. I will act accordingly to deal with them and get out of here. Then one of them asks, are you saying that you'll stay here? And he replies, indeed. All of them are stunned to hear that and says, troop leader. But he smirks and replies to them, from now on, I'm no longer the troop leader. My name is Jaegal Sohan. In the next morning, in Jaegal clan, Sohan comes out of his pavilion along with Chu Sayek and both of them are dressed like the people of the Jaegal clan. The subordinates are busy in reconstructing the wall that was damaged during the attack and all of them stops for a while and looks at the troop leader with utter surprise. Some are surprised meanwhile some are angry and looks at him with repugnance. Then suddenly, Sohan hears a voice, what did you say? Say that again. A fight starts between two men and their fellows are trying to stop them from fighting and Sohan looks at them with side eye. One of them asks other, why are we always the ones doing things? The other is extremely angry and calls him, arrogant bastard. Chu Sayek and Sohan stops and start looking at them. Sayek says to the troop leader that, there has been all sorts of commotion happening in the Jaegal estate over the past few days, and Sohan smiles and replies, that's to be expected. Since there's a great difference in treatment between those who have the family name, Jaegal, and the martial artists that don't seem like much. I've made sure that people know that. Then Chu Sayek replies to him, yes, normal martial artists are enraged, but those under the Jaegal clan don't understand what the problem is. Sohan smirks and replies to Sayek that, the Jaegal clan has always prioritized those of their own blood, so that's a natural reaction. But that reaction is what would make normal martial artists even more angry. Sayek doesn't like their behavior and then replies to Sohan, that's right. Meanwhile in his head, Sayek is wondering, was this all a part of his plan? There's just no telling as to how far his schemes go. Sayek is lost in his thoughts when Sohan looks at him and says, get everyone to gather at the main hall. Both the Jaegal clan and the normal martial artists, and he replies obediently, yes, troop leader. All the men gather at the main hall and two rectangular tables are placed in the center. On one table it is written, Jaegal clan artist, while the other says, normal martial artists, and different shoes, outfits, swords, food and rewards are present on the table according to the status of the martial artist. All of them are looking at those things with surprise and confusion then one of them asks, what's all this? Meanwhile another asks, there's a difference even in the food we eat? 
All of them are looking at the rewards and one of them says, damn, look at the difference in the rewards. One of the men from the Jagal clan says to other, stop grumbling already. The other being confident, asks, do you think it makes sense for normal martial artists like you guys to be treated equally with us? The normal martial artists get offended at their insult and one of them asks angrily, what did you just say? The martial artists of the Jagal clan are making fun of the other normal ones then suddenly the troop leader, Jean Sohan comes there along with Chu Sayek. All of them are looking at him with questioning eyes and then Sohan asks them, how do you feel after experiencing it yourself? All of them are looking at him with side eyes, filled of anger. Then the troop leader says, I think such a difference in treatment is abnormal. A few days ago, I didn't even know who was a part of the Jagal clan and who wasn't when they died by my sword. I couldn't have known. I simply killed them because they were my enemies. What's certain in that when danger is here, it doesn't matter if you're a part of the Jagal clan or not. Why should there be a difference in treatment when both sides are risking their lives for the Jagal clan? Treatment was different based on rank and experience. The normal martial artists are extremely angry but he continues, saying, after observing the Jagal clan for a few days, I've gotten curious. I wonder if the Jagal martial artists who are receiving preferential treatment are indeed stronger than the normal martial artists. Then Sohan asks everyone, I'd like to see a match between both sides, does anyone want to step forward? A man from the normal martial artists comes forward, saying, I'll give it a try. Chu Sayek tells the troop leader about that man, that man is Kong Gikan. Among the normal martial artists, he has openly expressed his dissatisfaction about the difference in treatments. That normal martial artist is still angry at the discrimination and insult. Then the troop leader, Jean asks, all right, who will come forth from the Jagal clan? A man from the Jagal martial artists comes forward while smiling and says, I'm Jagal Wu Myung. I'll fight him. Then Sohan asks them about their weapons, great. Will you guys be fighting with wooden swords? Looking into each other's eyes, the normal ones say, I'll do it with a real sword, and the Jagal ones also laughs and says, I prefer real swords as well. Then the troop leader says, all right, then, and they both starts fighting using their martial arts skills. Both of them are using all their might but the normal ones, being so aggressive, is fighting like he's fighting with a real enemy and then while looking at him, the martial artist of the Jagal clan, Wu Myung is thinking that, this bastard, is he treating this as not just a sparring but a fight to the death. Thinking this, he starts using much force than before but the normal ones is still performing best and using his martial arts techniques, pushes Wu Myung on the floor and was about to attack him when the troop leader loudly says, stop. It's over. The normal martial artists are happy but the Jagal ones are sad because of the defeat. Wu Myung is looking at his opponent with extreme anger and asks, you dare, try and kill me? But he's looking at him with a smiling face. Then after a few moments, the troop leader Jean announces that, the winner of the fight is Kong Gikan, and they're wondering, it's over just like that? Then So Hun says to them, I heard the Jagal clan has strong sword formations. I was also most concerned about that when I was breaking through this place to get to the Patriarch. If you guys had noticed my ambush and used the sword formation, then I'd probably have had a time. I'd love to see a fight using those sword formations. Then he continues, asking them, how many people would be required? One of them tells the troop leader that, the minimum people required would be 28 people. Then while looking at all of them, Sohan says to them, I see. This time around, We'll also split up between normal martial artists and Jagal martial artists for the spar. After hearing this, all of them are standing face to face with each other and the normal martial artists are standing at one side meanwhile the Jagal martial artists are standing on the other. Both of the opponents align themselves in a zigzag pattern and when the troop leader says, begin. All of them starts fighting. Meanwhile looking at them, the troop leader Jean calls them, incredible. Hebei and Jagal are situated near to each other. At the Oxo Inn, Sohan is sitting alone on a table, with his eyes closed and is trying to recall the fight between the Jagal martial artists and normal martial artists. All of them are fighting like enemies and someone says, kill them. While looking at them, Sohan sighs while holding the sword in his hand and was thinking that, keep it easy, seriously. The whole world knows you're from the Jianghu. Sohan was completely lost in his thoughts when a waiter comes there and says, the food you've ordered is here. Corn soup, eight treasure tofu, and beggar's chicken. 
Jean Sohan takes the chopsticks and starts eating meanwhile three men are sitting on a nearby table and are also eating and gossiping. One of them asks the other, would a war break out in Shangxi? The other replies, I'm not sure. The other says, it seems the unorthodox faction declared war. Then their third fellow asks, when will the alliance be formed, and he replies, I don't know. Then he again asks them, we'll probably be at the core of it, right? And his fellow replies to him, I don't know that either. Sohan is still busy in eating but he's also listening to them and after listening their conversation, Sohan's thinking that, they're not from the Wudang sect. Are they from the Hebei alliance? One of them while drinking, notices Sohan and greets him while sitting there and says, it seems you're from the Jaegal clan, and Sohan with his mouth, stuffed with the food, also greets him. That man looks at Sohan and is wondering that, how rude. It's just like the Jaegals to do so. Then one of them also turns around, looks at Sohan, smiles and asks, what brought you all the way to Hebei? Are you a messenger who's heading to our alliance? Sohan takes the glass from the table and starts drinking while looking at them and stuffs his mouth with water. All of them are looking at him with shock and then Sohan says to them, I'm not a messenger. I'm performing a mission that's related to our patriarch, so I can't divulge the details. One of them says to Sohan, what a pity. I was going to ask you to join us for a drink if you weren't busy since Jay Gal and Hebei might become one family. Sohan takes chair from his table and then sits along with three of them. Then Sohan smiles and replies to him, since Jay Gal and Hebei might become one family, I couldn't possibly just leave like this. Let's have just a few drinks. Then Sohan loudly says to the waiter, move the food from my table here, and he replies with complete obedience that, yes, sir. Then everyone introduces themselves one by one. One of them says, I am O Jaehyun of the Hebei Alliance, and the second one says, I'm Jang Siaduk, while the third one says, I'm Quan Sol. Then Sohan introduces himself, saying, I'm Jae Gal Han of the Jae Gal clan. All of them are looking at him with anger and are wondering that, how disrespectful. He keeps talking informally to us. Then Sohan says to them, I'd like a drink please. One of them while saying, ah, here, starts pouring a drink in the glass and then while holding their glasses in their hands, one of them says, bottoms up. After saying this, all of them starts drinking and then Sohan, after drinking, says to them that, wow. I've never drank such bad tasting Huangjiu before. It tastes so watered down, I doubt this is the only thing Hebei has to offer. All of them are looking at him with weird expressions and then Sohan turns around, looks at the waiter and asks him, waiter. Do you have Shifeng liquor? And he replies, we don't. Then Sohan asks him, what about Yang Hadaku, but the waiter also refuses it, saying, we don't have that either. This time, Sohan asks harshly that, again? What do you have then? The waiter tells him, if you're referring to expensive alcohol, then we only have Dukong liquor. Sohan replies immediately, that'll work, bring it here. One of them says to Sohan, we're not rich enough to drink Dukong liquor. Then Sohan, while lifting the chicken leg piece with the chopsticks, replies to him, it's fine. Since you gave me a drink, I ought to return it. When the Jaegal clan meets their allies, me don't scrimp on money. After hearing this, Jaehyun is thinking that, is he saying that the Hebei alliance does that when we meet our allies? In the meantime, the waiter brings their drink and put it on the table, saying, here's the Dukan liquor. Jang Siaduk looks at Sohan, smiles and says to him, as expected of the wealthy Jaegal clan. Thanks to you, we're able to drink such great liquor. Then Sohan while eating the chicken leg piece with his one hand, starts pouring the liquor in his fellow's glass, saying, don't worry about it. Then while placing the bone in his mouth, he asks him, how's the alliance progressing? It's been a while since I went back to my main clan estate, and that man replies to him, it's making good progress. The leaders are probably gathered at Wudong Mountain, I think. One of the great elders is there after all. Then Sohan looks at him and asks, are you talking about the Wudong Sword Immortal? Jaehyun replies to Sohan, who else could there be? All the leaders will probably recommend him to become the alliance leader and he'll reject their offer as usual. When that happens, they'll hold a sparring competition to choose the alliance leader with him as the judge. After listening this, while pouring a drink in his glass, Sohan is thinking that, I missed an important competition. That was an opportunity for me to see the Wudang Sword Immortal and also the abilities of the leaders from each group. 
Then while drinking, Sohun asks them, who do each of you think will become the alliance leader? Quan Sol replies to him, honestly, we hope the Hebei alliance leader would take that position. But the Mount Hua sect only fights with Zhongnan sect, so we don't know just how strong they are. The Jiegao clan and the Wudong sect are sword brothers, so you guys have never fought each other before, I'm not sure. The sword immortal might end up taking that position instead. While putting his glass on the table, his fellow says, nonsense. From what I've seen, the Jiegao clan patriarch will become the alliance leader. So Hun smiles and looks at him, asking, oh, why do you think so? The man replies to him, he's the richest and most resourceful. Didn't sage Mu Yang, the one who fought to become the Wudang sect leader, get forced to retire from the Jianghu because of a scandal that was exposed even though the Jiegao news hasn't confirmed it? All of them are shocked to hear that but he continues, saying, because of that, their sect leader became worn brothers with the Jiegao clan patriarch. The person that suggested the alliance in the first place was the Jiegao clan patriarch since everything will go according to the will of the Jiegao clan patriarch, he'll probably become the alliance leader and know as well. So Hun is looking at him with anger but he's smiling and thinking while pouring a drink in his glass, that, he looks upset. Then So Hun says, well, that might happen, and he looks at So Hun and asks, that might happen asterisk? This time, So Hun frowns and says to him, didn't you say that yourself? But I think you ought to relax your expression a little. Have you mistaken me for a scholar of the Jaegal clan? Jaehyun says, hey. You two were in the same alliance. Don't do this. Since he crossed the lines with his words, I'll apologize on his behalf. Jang Siaduk looks at Sohun, smirks and asks, if I didn't think of you as a scholar, what would you even do? Jaehyun gets angry at his fellow's misbehavior and loudly says, Jang Siaduk, stop it right now. Meanwhile his other fellow also says, Han, please stop it too. Both Jang Siaduk and Sohan are looking at each other with anger and then while drinking, Sohan says, I'll stop it then. I went overboard with my words. All of them are looking at him quietly when he places the glass on the table with anger, and asks, but seriously, did these bastards dilute the Dukang liquor with water? It tastes like shit. After hearing this, Quan Sol laughs loudly but Jang Siaduk asks, is everyone at the Jaegal clan as obnoxious as you? I sure am curious about that. So Hun smiles and replies to him, look. You said your name is Jang Siaduk, right? Here's something about me. I can take it if someone insults our patriarch but I won't take it if someone insults the Jaegal clan. People already insult our patriarch all the time. After listening this, Jang Siaduk smiles and asks, all the time? Keep talking. Then after thinking for a while, Sohan says, no, I think I've said too much when we were having such a good time. While taking the cup from the table, Jang Siaduk is thinking that, weakling. To think he dares act out because of his clan. Then Sohan turns around and asks the waiter, how much does it cost for the drinks on this table? I'll pay for all of them. The Jaegao clan is rich after all, so I should be the one to pay for the Jang Siaduk gets infuriated and breaks that glass while holding it in his hand and then punches Sohun, saying, you fucker. He hits Sohun in his chin and he a fall on the ground and all the people who are standing in the sounding, are shocked to see that. Sohun while holding a chair, calls him, Hebei alliance fuckers, you dare strike me? Jang Siaduk moves the word Sohun in a fit of furry, saying, what? Hebei alliance fucker? Then he tries to hit him in the face with his foot but Sohun dodges his attack efficiently and his foot instead of hitting him, hits the nearby table and all of the food is flying in air. Sohun takes a place of noodles and attacks his face with that. He is covering his both eyes because of pain and his other two fellows are standing behind, looking at him. Jang's nose is injured and blood starts coming out of his nose and there is a noodle soup all over his face. He is standing there with his one eye closed because of the spiced which went into them and calls Sohun, bastard. All the people in the surrounding are looking at his condition and are laughing then again Jang Siaduk wanted to attack Sohun but Jaehyun tries to stop him, saying, Jang Siaduk, stop it. But he's extremely angry and replies to him, let me go. I'll teach him some manners before surrendering myself to the disciplinary hall. Both of his fellows are trying to stop him meanwhile Sohun is standing there, looking at them and then says to Jang Siaduk that, I think you're the one who needs to be taught manners though. Quan Sol is quite surprised at his tone and replies to Sohun, brother Jaegal. What are you doing asterisk? 
Then Sohan replies to him that, what else? He's the one who struck me first. There's a lot of other people within the Hebei alliance here that saw it too. Are you trying to pin all the blame on me? All of the people in the surrounding are listening to their conversation and then Quan says, that's not. This time, Sohan also gets angry and says rudely to him, and he got angry just because I said I'd buy the drinks. Isn't he the one who started being sarcastic by talking about the Jaegal clan being rich and all? Jang Siaduk escapes from Jaehyun's grip and then moves towards Sohan, saying, you'll die by my hands today, but Sohan is standing there and gets ready for the fight. Both of them looks into each other's eyes with anger and then Sohan runs from there and Siaduk starts following him. Jang is running behind Sohan and says, stop right there. Both Jaehyun and Quan Sol are also following Siaduk and Jaehyun calls his name, saying, Jang Siaduk. When the owner of the inn sees that they are leaving without paying the bill, then he says from behind, pay up. A man standing there, replies to him, leave them be. You can just get your payment later on by reporting them to the disciplinary hall master. Isn't it obvious the Hebei alliance is in the wrong here? Alliance, my foot. They started throwing fists around just because of a few words. What a disgrace. In the disciplinary hall, three of them are sitting over their knees before the disciplinary hall master and he's walking here and there, thinking about something. The disciplinary hall master is extremely angry and asks them, have you still not found that Jaegal clan warrior? A man replies to him, yes, hall master. We'll update you, once we found him. Then the disciplinary hall master asks them, you dare to mess with the Jaegal clan and you guys even started it first. Jang Siaduk who started all that shit, is sitting in the center and then immediately replies to the hall master, hall master, that's not what happened. He first. He couldn't even complete his sentence when the hall master interrupts him, saying, shut up. Everyone in the inn saw the person who attacked the Jaegal clan member first. They all say that you guys had picked a fight with him and even struck him. You dare lie to me? All of them are feeling guilty and are looking at the ground quietly and then the hall master says to them, I'll be reporting this to the alliance leader. All of them are stunned to hear that and then Jang Siaduk asks, pardon? To the alliance leader? The disciplinary hall master replies to him angrily, yes, since the group you messed with is the Jaegal clan after all. The alliance leader will probably have to apologize to the Jaegal patriarch whom he already hates. Because of what you all did. And all of them are in complete shock. Then the disciplinary hall master orders his men to lock them all into the solitary room. Siaduk gathers courage and says to the master, hall master. I'm sorry, but all three of us received orders to depart for Shangxi tomorrow. The hall master, in the fit of furry hit Siaduk in his face, saying, you know that and you got into a fight, while drinking? The hall master hits him with great force that he falls apart and the other two are looking at him with shocked faces and then the hall master asks him, Vermin. Do you think the disciplinary hall is a joke? In the evening, Sohan is walking through the thick forest while holding his weapon in his one hand and then he hears the rustling of the leaves and says, come out now. Five men, with their faces covered, appears from somewhere and Sohan is looking at them. One of them while pointing his sword towards him, wonders that, he knew we were following him. His personality is different from when he was in the inn. They all starts attacking Sohan but he's also standing there and is nicely dodging their attacks. Then Sohan takes out his sword finally and then also starts fighting with them. While fighting with them, Sohan is wondering that, they're not from the Hebei alliance and their sword formation is also different from the Jaegal clan. Then again, Sohan counties, fighting with them and looking at their movements, soon he comes to realize that they are assassins and is wondering about their movements, the movements of assassins. Also, the assassins who are fighting with Sohan, comes to know that he's not an ordinary person and one of them says, he's not from the Jaegal clan. His sword techniques and personality are totally different as well. The other assassin after hearing this, looks at Sohan with anger and then says to his fellow that, it doesn't matter. We'll just kill him and make him look like a Jaegal clan member. Sohan looks at them with his pink poisonous eyes and then smiles and asks, kill me? Then Sohan uses the pink ray of poison and that ray kills one of the assassins. Then Sohan moves towards another one and also attacks him, using his sword. Three of them are lying dead on the ground meanwhile the other two are standing there, looking at them. Then Sohan looks at the other one and he's also looking at him.
and the assassin is wondering that, how could someone become so different? He was simply a flippant and weak warrior in the inn but his aura, eyes, movements, vibes, and even his martial prowess are different now. What on earth just happened? Then Sohan while holding his sword, moves towards them for the attack and when one of them sees him, moving towards them, loudly says, spread out. And then both of them spreads out. Sohan looks and then attacks him and breaks his sword into two pieces. After that, attacks his neck and cuts it off. The other one attacks from behind but Sohan dodges him and that assassin, instead of killing Sohan, kills his own fellow. Then he looks behind where Sohan is standing and then heads towards him for attack but in the meantime, Sohan attacks him. One of them is dead meanwhile the other is lying on the ground with his eyes opened and is looking at Sohan. Sohan is also looking at him and then his vision starts to get blurred and closes his eyes slowly. After fighting with the assassins, Sohan lights up a little campfire for heat and warmth. He's sitting near that fire on some wooden planks and is adding woods to the fire. One of the assassins who is lying nearby, wakes up and is wondering while lying there that, I'm still alive. If I'm still alive, that means only torture and interrogation awaits me. He didn't even take away my weapon. I still have a chance. While thinking this, he opens his eyes and holds his sword for the attack when Sohan says, get up. Then looking behind, he's wondering, he knew I woke up. The assassin gets up while holding the sword in his hand and is looking towards Sohan then suddenly throws his sword on the ground, asking, what must I do in order to stay alive? But he does not reply to him and this confuses him so he asks another question that, why aren't you asking me any questions? Like who I am or where I belong to? After a while, Sohan asks him a question that, how long have you been learning swordsmanship for? He is completely shocked at his question and asks, what? Sohan frowns and looks at him with anger at his counter-question. Then he immediately replies, 15 years. Then Sohan tells him that, you're pretty weak considering you've been learning for that long. He is listening to Sohan quietly and then asks him the same question that, how many years have you learned it then? And Sohan replies, more than 20 years. Then he says to Sohan, you look like you're in your mid-twenties, yet you've learned swordsmanship for 20 years? Sohan looks at him with side eye and replies that, there are tons of things in the world that you won't be able to comprehend. There are also things that you don't know about at all. Then he asks Sohan another question about what happened in the morning, in that case, I have a question. Why did you mess with the Hebei alliance and run away? You don't look like you're from the Jaegal clan. After hearing his question, Sohan smirks and calls him, crazy bastard, and then looks at him with angry face and asks him, you're asking me questions? The assassin replies confidently that, can't someone who's about to die ask questions? I'll die anyways regardless of whether I ask it or not. Then Sohan asks him, are you not afraid of death? He being confident, replies to Sohan that, my life has always been fraught with danger. I just didn't expect to die so early. Then the assassin says to him, it seems we have the same goals, and he asks, the same goals? Then he tells Sohan that, indeed, to drive a wedge between the Hebei alliance and the Jaegal clan. Since things have come to this, how about we tell each other which group we belong to? Sohan replies to him, tell each other which group we belong to. Sohan starts thinking about his idea and he's also looking at him and then, after a while, Sohan says to him, not interested in that. Tell me something interesting. He asks with confusion, out of nowhere. Then Sohan offers him, I'll spare your life if it's interesting. Though if it's boring, you'll die. So, make sure to think carefully. Looking at him, he asks, but why? Sohan looks at him and replies, or you could just die without trying. The assassin is stunned at his demand and is wondering that, will he really spare my life? I don't know who he is, but he doesn't seem to be in a normal state of mind. Wait, actually, he may really spare me if I tell him something interesting because he's not in the right state of mind? Then after thinking this, he starts telling Sohan that, I am a believer. I have a religion. Sohan finds it boring and says to him, that sounds boring, right? He immediately starts telling him, the person we worship was originally someone who ruled the orthodox factions. The religion I belong to isn't an organization that does bad things, but soon he realizes that he has done something stupid and is wondering that, shit, I told him the most important information because I panicked. Sohan smiles a little and says, that's interesting. Keep going. 
Then he continues, saying, of course, that story was from a long time ago. That person helped us a lot and so, that person was our hero. He was our leader and our god. Then after listening his story, Sohan says to him, well, stories about fanatics aren't interesting. When he feels that he's going to die, he begs Sohan that, please spare my life. But Sohan frowns and replies to him, asking, why should I spare the life of the white heaven demonic cult's trash? He is extremely shocked at this and asks Sohan, how did you know that? But instead of replying, Sohan starts laughing loudly and he lies on that wood plank. Looking at him, laughing like an idiot, the assassin is wondering, this is crazy bastard. If I am going to die anyway. Then Sohan says to him, go and bring me some firewood if you don't want to become the firewood yourself. He's looking at Sohan with puzzled face when he looks at him and says, don't say I didn't warn you. I'll really use you as firewood if needed. The assassin is extremely angry and closes his fist tightly because of the anger but instead of saying anything, he goes and brings firewood for Sohan. After bringing the firewood, he asks Sohan, can you please spare my life? While lying on the plank, looking at the sky, Sohan replies to him, only if you tell me something interesting. The assassin is completely annoyed at his behavior and is thinking, damn it. This lunatic. Why does he keep wanting me to tell him interesting stories? But then he replies to Sohan boldly that, instead of doing that, just ask me what you want to know. I'll answer your questions. But Sohan also being stubborn, replies to him, interesting stories. He asks Sohan, I need to know who you are before I can think of what might be interesting to you, right? Soha replies rudely, can't you tell? I'm a warrior from the Jagal clan. The assassin doesn't believe it and is wondering that, fucking bullshit. Jagal clan warrior, my ass. Then something hits his mind and he asks, could you be the berserk demon's disciple? Sohan is looking at him with questioning eyes but he greets him, saying, if you're his disciple, then I have been overly rude to you. Please kill me. Then Sohan gets up and replies to him, all right. If you bring me firewood one more time, I'll kill you, and he replies obediently, understood, but in his head, he's wondering, he was really the berserk demon's disciple. For someone that young, strong, and has a screw loose in his mind, he must be the berserk demon's disciple. This feels so meaningless though, I can't believe I'm going to die while bringing back firewood. It's just like what my name, Haryu, means. I'm really dying a stupid death. Haryu means despicable or low life. Then he again brings firewood for Sohan and then says to him, I just thought of something interesting. Then Sohan replies to him, really? Tell me about it. He removes the cloth from his mouth and starts telling Sohan that, my name is Lee Haryu. My dead older brother's name is Sangryu. In contrast, Sangryu means upper class. I joined the White Heaven Demonic Cult based on the recommendation of my brother. The White Heaven Demonic Cult is a religious group that rules over Hubei and has been around for more than 100 years. They have had seven cult leaders, and right now the eighth cult leader is leading their followers. Sohan interrupts him, saying, I already know that. He is extremely shocked at his confession and asks, what? How do you know that? Sohan looks at him with anger and asks him, are you looking down on the Jagal clan? He gets confused for a while, thinking that, you're not from the Jagal clan though, and then says to Sohan, in that case, do you know that the Hubei alliance was formed because of us? The Hubei alliance was really strong when it was first formed. Because it wasn't just a gathering of Hubei's martial masters, it was made by gathering martial masters from all over the world. After our cult suffered a great defeat by the Hubei Alliance 14 years ago, we've been preparing for our comeback. Of course, our first target was the Hubei Alliance and so, the reason for the Hubei Alliance becoming more and more trash over the past 10 years was because of our interference. Our grand plan was to fight the final battle with Murim of South Yangtze River after we conquer Hubei and Shangxi and to then conquer the world. After listening all this, Sohan smirks and calls him, filthy demonic bastard. Fucking cockroaches that keep reviving no matter how many times we kill you. You bedazzle normal people with your ridiculous religious logic. You also learn unorthodox demonic arts and cause harm to others. Haryu was listening to him silently with patience and then while holding his face scarf in his hand, he replies to Sohan, we don't mess with powerless people. We simply want to purify the Jianghu. 
Sohan focuses on the word Jianghu and asks, Purify the Jianghu, do you think that makes sense? Harry replies confidently that, God can do it. Then Sohan says to him, If God exists, then he should act like one. He looks at Sohan for a while and then asks him, How about meeting the cult leader yourself? I'm sure that with your martial prowess, you'd be given a high ranking position. Sohan replies to him with utter seriousness that, I'll meet him when the time is right, as enemies. Haryu is stunned after hearing his words and is wondering, I'm screwed. What I told him doesn't look interesting at all. He starts sweating and then begs to Sohan that, please spare my life. But Sohan while holding the sword, says to him, I have no use for fanatics. Moreover, the White Heaven Demonic Cult isn't a divine cult but a demonic cult. And the White Heaven Demonic Cult leader isn't a god, he's just a crazy human being. The Jianghu can't be purified. The same goes for the human world. To try and rule over everyone in the world under one religion is a foolish act and I dislike fools. Then removing the cover of his sword, Sohan continues, saying, which is why, you don't deserve to eat my poison or become my subordinate. You don't deserve to be treated like a human. He is shocked and frightened after hearing this and sits over his knees, asking for mercy that, please spare my life. Sohan while holding a sword, says to him, since you unexpectedly prolonged our conversation, I'll grant you a painless death. Haryu is thinking, I'm going to die now? Just like that? Why am I afraid of death? Up until a moment ago, I wasn't afraid of it though. So, why? Could it be that the thing that I'm afraid of isn't death, but this man? Sohan is standing before him with his pink poisonous eyes and the veins of his eyes starts emerging when he asks Sohan, may I try telling you something interesting one last time? Sohan replies, it's really the last thing. Try it. Haryu is completely drenched in sweat and then starts telling him that, I understood that everything is meaningless when my life is on the line. Then White Heaven Demonic Cult is a demonic cult and the White Heaven Demonic Cult leader is just a human. I was just someone who had foolish thoughts that the Jianghu or human would could be purified. So, I don't deserve to be treated like a human but please give me the opportunity to become your servant. Don't you think this is interesting? He is crying with blood tears and is looking at Sohan while smiling but Sohan is looking at him quietly and then asks him, you want to become my servant in order to survive? Blood is dripping from his body and he says while shouting that yes, I'll become your servant in order to survive. Sohan smiles and says, that's interesting, and he bends completely before him, saying, thank you. There is a Wudong mountain and near it, the Wudong sect is present. Sohan is moving through the streets and the people in the surrounding are looking are looking at him with surprise. One of them says, greeting. Meanwhile someone says, I've never seen him before. Sohan's facial expressions are so rude and arrogant so that he doesn't have to talk to people and is walking through the streets alone. He's wondering that, I observed how the Wudang sect rules over the last few days, but I really don't like this place. Things move very slowly and I'm also starting to follow suit. Honestly, I feel like I'm losing my appetite as well. A man says to Sohan while smiling, hi there, but Sohan doesn't even look at him and keeps walking. Then a woman looks at him and asks him with a friendly face that, you must have come from a foreign land. Isn't the weather nice? But Sohan also doesn't reply to her and keeps walking and she while standing behind, says to her fellow that, I guess he's busy, and the fellow replies, yeah. A man is sleeping on a wooden bed and is looking at the sky and asks, when will the rain come? Sohan who was passing nearby, replies to him rudely that, how would I know that? That man smiles and says, ho ho ho. Guess you wouldn't know it? Sohan is looking at him with confusion and is wondering, are they all idiots? While looking at the people in the surrounding, Sohan is thinking that, I feel like the elements of this place itself doesn't go well with me. The atmosphere here is really mysterious and strange. Let's just go back. It was a crazy thing to do, trying to infiltrate the Wudong sect alone. While looking at the Wudong mountain, Sohan says to himself that, they say Shaolin's the best in the north and Wudong is the best in the south, they truly live up to their reputation. Goodbye I've lost. Sohan is walking between the different flower beds and the fresh flowers are present everywhere and their aroma is also spread out in the air. Sohan is walking slowly through the fields when he sees a little praying mantis and it is also looking at him innocently. Then immediately, 
Sohan gets annoyed and says to the mantis that, you're the only one in this place that shows hostility towards me. After saying this, he was about to kill the mantis by placing his foot over it but stops and says to himself, forget it. What point is there in killing you? Then while sitting near that mantis, Sohan is looking at it and is wondering that, guess I got affected by the atmosphere of Wudong Mountain. Then he points his index finger towards the mantis, Sohan smiles and says to it, you're a mantis master? You're better than the Wudong sect. I'll specially bestow the nickname of Jianghu Mantis to you. Sohan is busy looking at the mantis when suddenly a man appears behind him and asks him while smiling, what are you looking at so intently? When Sohan hears someone's voice, turns around, looks at an old man and replies, I was looking at the praying mantis. Then that old man says to Sohan, you were looking at the praying mantis. People don't usually look so intently though. May I know that was on your mind? Sohan replies to him, I thought it looked valiant and gave it a name, Jianghu Mantis. After hearing the name, Jianghu Mantis, the old man laughs loudly and says, Jianghu Mantis? Interesting. Sohan is looking at him and wondering, what a weird old man. Then that old man goes near a flower bed and while looking at the flowers, he says, Jianghu Mantis, but Sohan is still busy, thinking that, I didn't even sense his presence until he was right behind me, who is he? Then looking at the red flowers, that old man says to Sohan, flowers are known as sweetbriar. Most of them are red, but occasionally there are those that are white, then he asks Sohan, what do you think they smell like? Sohan gets annoyed at his question and replies, I'm not sure. Don't all flowers smell similar? Then while touching one flower with his hand, he tells Sohan that, the scent of the sweetbriar is something only the sweetbriar has. Just as both flowers and human all have a unique scent. Sohan is listening to him quietly and then suddenly, a cool breeze starts blowing out. The petals of the sweetbriars are moving in the air, here and there. Both of them are standing there looking at each other's face constantly then that man smiles and says to Sohan, if you have no intent to have a fight with me, how about we just take a walk? Sohan smiles and replies to him, let's do that, and he also says, let's go. That old man takes him towards the forest and while passing through the trees, they see a row of ant is crossing their way. That old man bends a little, look at the ants and then jumps over them so they will not get hurt. Sohan is following him quietly and then while crossing a wooden bridge over the pond, that old man sprinkles some feathers in the water and Sohan is observing him silently. The sun is shining brightly in the sky and Sohan is walking behind him then that old man looks behind, at him and laughs loudly. Sohan gets offended and asks, why did you suddenly laugh? The old man replies to him that, it's so rare to see someone as out of place in the Wudong mountain as you. Sohan finds it a compliment and then replies to him, while passing him a smile, I think so too. Then that man says to him, you're quite unique. It's as if you came from outside of this world. Let's go somewhere that suits you a little more. This way. Sohan is still confused and is just blindly following him then finally after walking for a while, they reach their destination. It a beautiful waterfall with a sparkle white, fresh and clear water. The water coming down, gathers on the land in the form a tiny pond and both of them are standing near, looking at it. Then the old man says, columns of water flowing down in a powerful manner, with water droplets that splatter everywhere. The ripples that are caused because the columns of water crash onto the surface of the water. Aren't they similar to you? But he does not reply and is looking at the water, quietly. Then the old man asks him, you didn't kill the praying mantis. Why did you spare it? So Hun replies to him, because there's no reason to kill it. Then looking at the waterfall, the old man says, I see. It seems the praying mantis deserved to be spared more than the Jagal patriarch. So Hun looks at him for and then replies, indeed, as he was far worse than the praying mantis. Then the old man tells him that, Jagal Pyo was a unique man. He understood the power of literature more than anyone. Moreover, he was a hypocrite that acted like he wanted to uphold justice on the outside. You were able to kill him, while I would not be able to do the same so easily. Doing so would ultimately lead to a clash between the Wudang sect and Jagal clan. I'm in a slightly different position than you were. After hearing this, Sohan looks at him and says, I think I understand. Then the old man asks him another chance, have you seen the symbol of Taiji before? And Sohan replies, of course, the white and black symbol. 
Then that man says, in that case, I think our talk will go pretty smoothly. When the praying mantis would eat to other insects, the act of killing in order to survive would be seen as the black side. While when it stops killing once it's full would be the white side. If you killing J. Galpio is seen as the black side, then I suppose you sparing the lives of the rest of the J. Gal clan would be considered the white side. We could think of those acts as balance similar to the Taiji. If killing was the only option available, then the Taiji would be completely black. We call that the demonic path. If someone chose to seek out and kill all the praying mantis in my strolling path, then I'd have drawn my sword. That is the ultimate objective of martial arts. To get rid of those who go against the flow, that's also what the Wudong sect represents. J. Galpyo was a man who surprised me as he showed me how much damage words can do. However, it would have been more difficult for the Wudong sect to kill him than one may imagine. Just trying to kill that one person would have spiraled into the deaths of many others. Once that happened, the person who went against the flow wouldn't be J. Galpyo, but me. This is also the limitation of being an orthodox, but Sohan doesn't even reply to him and only says, hmm. Then the old man asks him a question that, are your masters doing well? He is shocked to hear the names of his masters and is wondering, he knows who my masters are. And then replies to him, I haven't seen them since I left the mountain. The old man smiles and says to Sohan that, I heard you're a special disciple to them. The venom demon hasn't killed anyone for twelve years now. For someone to change, it's quite amazing, isn't it? Sohan is extremely stunned and is wondering, how does he know so much? Just how much of the Jianghu does that old man keep an eye on? Then the old man looks at Sohan and tells him that, to your masters, you're the Taiji. One of them killed people while the other one saved people and you came back alive. You may think you were just trying to survive, but you meant more than that to those two. On a lesser scale, the venom demon had lost to the immortal physician. But if you look at it on a larger scale, you could be said to be the one who led the venom demon into the flow. After telling all this, he asks Sohan, do you understand the taiji and the flow a little more now? And he replies to him that, yes, I understand. Then the old man closes his eyes and tries to hear the voice of water and then continues, saying, Oti plucking out all the sweetbriar is also the flow. The birth and death of humans is also the flow. That also applies to the birth and death of an unknown grass bug. This is how all creation are living fairly within the flow. When an element of nature is left as it is, everything will run smoothly according to the flow and this is what we call harmony. It's to gather the flow and achieve harmony. In the end, Taiji, the flow, and harmony are one. Accepting all of that could be said to be the Tao. Sohan also closes his eyes and tries to remember all the people and events of the past and then feels something relaxing in his chest. Both of them were standing there, with their eyes closed and then the old man says to him happily that, as you continue to live your life, I hope from time to time you'll remember the taiji that we spoke of. That's both me asking a favor of you and also a present that I can give to you. Sohan greets him, saying, thank you. Then the old man smiles and says to Sohan that, now that you've seen me, you can consider it as having seen the Wudang sect. Sohan is passing through the jungle while jumping over the one tree to the other and then remembers about his discussion with that old man. That old humble man was Sword Immortal and while leaving, Sohan greeted him and said, Thank you for today, Sword Immortal. The Sword Immortal was also pleased to meet him and said to him, Sohan, it was nice meeting you. Let's meet again, and Sohan replies happily, Yes, sir. The cool breeze is blowing and the leaves of the trees are moving here and there in the air and Sohan stops for a while to get some fresh air. He is standing between the woods and is wondering while enjoying the fresh air, flowers are flowers, wine is wine and wudong is wudong. Sohan is very happy after meeting the sword immortal and then again starts jumping over the trees. He was moving between the woods when he feels someone's presence behind him and is wondering who they will be. A group of people are following him and they are holding the flags. On those flags, the name, Greenhound Stronghold, is written. Sohan looks at the flags and is thinking, the Greenhound Stronghold? They belong to the Green Wilderness Alliance. Are they trying to seek revenge against me because I annihilated the Green Forest Stronghold in the past? The people of the Greenhound attacks and throws little knives towards Sohan while following him but Sohan dodges them successfully. Sohan is wondering that, if I lure them into a place with a lot of people, 
then many innocent people will get hurt. I'll head to a place with no one around. Sohan heads towards an empty place and the people of the Greenhound stronghold are following him. Sohan was moving between the trees when he realizes that a lot of people are surrounding him and are hiding between the trees. Sohan is surrounded by the enemies from the three sides and they include the people of the Green Viper stronghold, Green Wolf stronghold and Green Tiger stronghold. When Sohan comes near them, they come out and starts following him. Sohan looks at them and is wondering, these bastards, they're taking turns pursuing me. Sohan gets annoyed and asks himself, what kind of taiji is this? What's the flow and harmony? The people of the Green Tiger stronghold are following him and loudly says from behind, Jean Sohan. Stop right there. Sohan is hiding behind the trees and is looking towards them and then they throw the arrows towards him and Sohan dodges them by jumping over those arrows. After jumping over the arrows, Sohan stands on a big branch of a tree and then looks behind at them and they are also standing on the different branches of the different trees. Then again Sohan starts moving towards an empty place and they are all following him and one of them says, he's over there. Why are the other says to his fellows, stay on his tail. Continuing moving, Sohan reaches an empty place and it is the end of the mountain and after that, there is cliff. Sohan is standing there and then takes out his sword and a lot of people are following him for the purpose of killing him. While removing the cover of the sword, Sohan is wondering, it's probably because there are times when the balance of Taiji isn't balanced. Then the people of the Green Tiger stronghold throw the arrows towards Sohan and he starts spinning his sword and blocks their attack. All of them are shocked to see his skills and then Sohan says to them, Green Wilderness Alliance leader, come out here yourself. A wild and strong wind starts blowing that everyone had to cover their ears in order to protect them. They all take out their swords for the attack and then one of them says, charge. And after hearing this, everyone starts heading towards Sohan for the attack. When Sohan sees them, he takes out his sword, saying, is your answer to drive your subordinates to their death? Sohan moves towards them like flash and starts killing them one by one. They are all getting injured and are dead, lying on the floor. Then again Sohan starts spinning, holding his sword and is killing them while spinning. The one who are alive, are shocked to see his skills. Then after killing the people at the front, Sohan attacks one subordinate from behind and kills him. One man from the Green Wolf stronghold, while holding his sword, loudly says, don't stand down. There's no way out in the back either. Then all of them looks behind where Sohan is busy attacking the subordinates. One of them says, damn it. While killing them one by one, Sohan is wondering that, if killing all of them is the black side of Taiji, then surviving and going to Chang'an would be the white side of Taiji. If the Green Wilderness Alliance destroying things around me is the black side, then making it such that they can't come at me again would be the white side. If I simply misunderstood the Sword Immortal's teaching and dyed Taiji black, then it can't be helped. Because the weight of the lives in the Green Wilderness Alliance that kidnaps children and turns them into slaves, is lighter than the weight of a single innocent life. A large number of subordinates are lying dead on the ground and Sohan is standing between them, covered in blood and is thinking about the concept of Taiji. After killing a large number of subordinates, Sohan is standing between them while holding the sword in his hand and the subordinates who are alive, are looking at him. The wild green troop leader is sitting behind, looking at the fight between his subordinates and Sohan. The wild green troop leader looks at the Sohan who is totally drenched in blood the troop leader is wondering, amazing. But he must be getting tired now. Then he raises his two fingers and orders his subordinates to attack again. The subordinates look the pointed fingers, gets confused but doesn't say anything and heads toward Sohan for the attack and Sohan looks at them with his pink poisonous eyes. Then Sohan runs towards them like a flash and starts killing them one by one and then suddenly, someone throws a net towards him and when Sohan looks at the net in the sky, he uses his sword and cuts off the net into different pieces. The subordinates are moving towards Sohan for the attack but Sohan, using his powers, also starts killing them one by one. The fight gets worse and Sohan starts cutting off the bodies of the subordinates into pieces. They are all stunned to see that but Sohan looking at their faces and expressions, smirks and says, die. Then again moving his swords in a specific manner, Sohan generates a wind and passes it towards them and the wind, full of poison, kills a large number of subordinates. Those who are alive are looking at Sohan who is extremely angry and the poison is coming out of his body. All of them are wondering, how are we supposed to defeat someone like him? 
Someone from the subordinates, says, we're no match for him, while the other asks, what about the troop leader? And the third one asks, why isn't he coming out to fight? The troop leader is sitting quietly and Sohan is looking at him. Then Sohan turns around and goes near the big rock and sits on it and all the subordinates along with the troop leader, are looking at him quietly. Sohan gets tired and sighs when Sword Immortal appears there and asks him, Sohan, wouldn't it be okay for you to run away now? You've killed quite a few today. How are you going to deal with the consequences after this? Sohan is sitting there, with his eyes closed when again the troops of the Green Alliance move towards him, saying, step aside. They are coming from the front and Sohan could see them but is still peacefully sitting on the rock. Then one of them says, Jean Sohan. And Sohan gets up and then says to Sword Immortal that, only a single path shall be executed here. Then taking out his swords, Sohan says, Annihilation, and looking at him, taking out his dual crescent blades, the Sword Immortal says to him, You're so stubborn. Sohan is extremely angry and using all his power and double blades, Sohan attacks them and then boom. There's a blast. Sohan again starts cutting off the bodies of the subordinates and their bodies are lying, chopped off on the ground and a lot of blood is coming out of their bodies. Someone's leg is separated from his body and someone's arm or even head has been cut off. The one who are alive are looking at the miserable condition of their fellows and then Sohan moves towards them and also kills them, one by one. There is a bloodbath and then again after killing a lot of people, Sohan goes and sits on that same rock. Sword Immortal appears there and is standing before Sohan, looking at his tired face. Then after a while, Sohan says, one can't simply walk on the path of flowers. There are times when one would step on a dead leaf or be drenched in rainwater. When it snows, our feet would be freezing cold as we stomp around to warm it up. On a night when one is drunk with their sword, even the sweetbriars will be sent flying away, for a person to only walk on the path of flowers, how can such a person understand the world's sadness and suffering? Then Sohan gets up while holding his dual crescent blades in his hands, looks into the sword immortal's eyes and says to him, I'll continue walking the black path. The sword immortal smiles at this and replies to Sohan, that's great thinking. While taking his dual crescent blades in his hands, Sohan moves towards the rest of the alive subordinates of the wild green troop leader with his pink poisonous eyes and angry face. All of them are also looking at him quietly and then standing before them, Sohan says to them, open up a path. They all opens up the path for him and at the end of the path, the wild green troop leader is sitting on the chair, placed on a carriage. Sohan is looking at the troop leader with his pink poisonous eyes and the wild green is also looking at the Sohan with red eyes. Sohan put back his blades and everyone in the surrounding is stunned to see that and wondering, he kept his weapon? Sohan starts heading towards the troop leader and when he reaches there, he jumps in the air and then lands on his carriage. The troop leader is stunned at his act and Sohan is looking at him quietly then Sohan asks him, what the hell do you do? The wild green troop leader asks angrily, what? Sohan bends and gets a little closer to him. Then, again asks him boldly, I ask you, what the hell do you do? The troop leader smiles mockingly and replies to Sohan, what the fuck are you talking about, you brat? Then Sohan stands up, looks at the troop leader and says, no matter how I look at you, you don't seem strong enough to take me on, why are you doing something this crazy? Did you think you'd be able to defeat me if you kept throwing your subordinates at me? The troop leader while hearing this, takes his weapon who is placed on the nearby table and while saying, shut up. Attack Sohan but Sohan blocks his attack by holding the weapon with his hand. The troop leader is extremely angry at this but Sohan gets angrier and the weapon he was holding, starts glowing red because of the poison in the Sohan's body. Then Sohan takes that weapon from him with greater force. Looking at this, the wild green troop leader is wondering, our internal energies are on totally different levels. Then Sohan holds him from his shirt and slaps him in his face with such a force that blood comes out of his mouth. Then again hits him on his other cheek and this time, again blood comes out. The troop leader is looking at him with injured face and then suddenly, a whole stream of blood starts coming out of his head and Sohan throws him on the ground. All the subordinates of the Wild Green are looking at their leader quietly and then Sohan sits on the chair of the Wild Green, while placing his one leg over the other, Sohan says to them, we're going to Shanyang. All of them are standing there, looking at Sohan and then he says, depart. All of them replies simultaneously, yes, sir. Then everyone starts following his carriage. 
A man comes near the dead body of the wild green troop leader and is looking at it while wondering, he's truly a treasure. The demon immortal really created something. He's totally different from the venom demon or the immortal physician. How unique, and then he laughs with a full smile and thinking about the Sohan, says, how interesting. At night, while heading towards the Shanyang, Sohan using his metal fan, spreads the poison in the environment and it killed a lot of the people. Then Sohan closes the fan, putting it back in his shirt, gets up and is now wondering that, I think there's around 30 people left. Those who aren't skilled in mobility arts have already fallen behind and dropped out of the group. Then removing the cover of the sword, Sohan comes down from the carriage and then moves towards the man who is sitting, leaning against the rock with his eyes closed. Looking at him, Sohan is thinking that, this is the guy who's the furthest away. Did he manage to last somehow with his internal energy? Then touching his outfit with his sword, Sohan assumes that, based on his outfit, he looks to be about a middle rank executive. While touching his coat, Sohan sees a letter which is stuck in his inner shirt. Sohan takes out the letter and starts reading it. It is written in the letter that, the gathering point will be the main traveling route between the Gale Demon League and Shanyang Demon League. If Jean Sohan mobilizes a huge number of troops, then kill his subordinates first. In the case that you lose him, gather at Shanyang and await the next order. Wild Green Troop Leader Dash After reading the letter, Sohan kills that man uses his sword and is wondering, there's a possibility that there's an encirclement awaiting at Shanyang too. A strange battle on the cliff, the situation that caused even the wild green troop leader to die. This battle of encirclement definitely has a different objective. Sohan used a sleeping powder so everyone will fell asleep and then he will kill them peacefully. Sohan starts killing them one by one. On man who is pretending to be asleep, opens his one eyes and looks at Sohan and is wondering, what a crazy bastard. I had a bad feeling from the moment we were told to camp in the wild out of nowhere, I was wondering why he used sleeping powder to put everyone to sleep. He immediately closes his eyes but Sohan already felt that someone was awake and looks behind at him but he is acting well and is lying without moving. The man is wondering, this is boring though. Sohan, are you intending to kill everyone? It feels like the fun will only start when you're at Chang'an though. Sohan kills someone and his blood also goes to that man's face. When he feels something on his face, he starts thinking again, stop it already. Jean Sohan, you murderous demon. You wicked disciple of an unforgivable villain. Trash. A cowardly bastard who can't fight fair. Damn it. He was thinking all this when he feels that Sohan is stand near him and attacks him, using his swords. So, he immediately opens his eyes and protects himself by holding the Sohan sword with his fingers and Sohan is looking at him quietly. He immediately gets up and stands at a little distance from him. Then he raises the palm of his hand in the air and throws some kind of blue power towards him which Sohan blocks, using his palm and then there is a clash between their powers. When Sohan left his masters and went to his hometown, then before leaving, the Venom Demon told him that, the Berserk Demon uses martial arts based on esoteric Buddhism. I've once shared a drink with him and he called his martial arts the unshakable Buddha merit. He considered the four great demons like his friends when I met him. He was someone whose thoughts you could never decipher. Anyway, unshakable Buddha refers to Bright King in esoteric Buddhism. He was crazy enough to let go of the opportunity to kill the great demoness and the sex demon, and Sohan was listening to the master quietly. Sohan is fighting with that man who was pretending to be asleep and woke up immediately and starts fighting. There is a clash between the powers of both of them and is destroying the things in the surroundings. Then that man says, annoying bastard, and then remove the bandages from his arm and he is very strong and powerful. Then also his shirt from the back gets torn and he removes his shirt. The Sohan is lying, fainted on a nearby object then that man says to Sohan, leader, what are you doing? That kind of trick won't work on me. Sohan sighs and then gets up and his clothes are also torn and that man is shocked to see the bruises on his body and is wondering that, oh. Those are some injuries. Then he smiles and says, how beautiful. Sohan also removes his shirt and then asks that guy, are you the berserk demon? That man replies, shouldn't you use honorifics? It's been a while since I last saw my adorable hubby. Your manners are, and while saying this, he attacks Sohan by using the power in his palm and Sohan also defends himself by blocking his attack. 
That guy attacked with such a great force that Sohan couldn't resist and fell apart and looking at him, he says, quite terrible. Leader, don't hold back. How long do you intend on hiding your powers? You must be stronger considering you've killed the great demoness and the sex demon. You're the embodiment of lies. Both of them are standing at a greater distance with each other and then Sohan says, the master said, but the berserk demon interrupts him, asking happily that, you talked about me? The pink poisonous light is surrounding the Sohan's body and the dual crescent blades are attached at the back. Then he replies to the berserk demon, indeed, the master said that, and then after saying this, Sohan takes out his blades and moves towards him for the attack and he also gets ready for the attack, again by using the powers in his hand. He brings his both hands closer and then creates a ball of power and then throws it towards Sohan but he dodges it. Sohan is using his dual crescent blades but the berserk demon is using his martial arts skills and both of them are fighting efficiently by using all of their might. Then Sohan uses the deep green moonlight skill and attacks the berserk demon with it but he uses his powers and blocks the attack. The berserk demon smiles mockingly and asks, is this all you can do? Sohan put back his swords and the guy are confused at this and asks him, what are you doing? But Sohan is thinking that, he has a lot of experience, but he's not as fast as the sex demon. If I focus on speed to tire him out and use the physical regeneration power I have. Then the guy again asks, I asked what you were doing, sleepyhead? Sohan is shocked to hear his nickname, looks at him with puzzled eyes and then asks, what? The guy smiles and replies, why are you so surprised? Your nickname is Sleepyhead if I recall correctly. So Han's eyes turn to pink and he asks him, how do you know that? The guy replies to him while smiling that, oh, your masters must have made some progress. You've got a strange glint to your eyes. So Han looks at him with confusion and asks, progress? And the berserk demon replies to him, the experiments they did on you. Venom demon referred to the suffering and efforts as a dreamlike immortality. After hearing this, Sohan is wondering, I knew the masters were trying to create immortality, but I didn't know the experiment had a name. Did he mean to ask if I had become immortal instead of calling me by my nickname? Then after a while, that one again says to Sohan, there's no way immortality is possible. I laughed so much when I heard about it. I'll check through you. I'll find out if I dissect you whether they succeeded or not. Saying this, he again attacks Sohan by using his powers but Sohan efficiently blocks the attack and the fight has been started between them again. Both of them are using their powers and skills to fight. Then Sohan dodges his attack by flying up in the air and while floating in the air, he smiles and says to the berserk demon that, berserk demon Sunbei, I don't think you'll be able to check with how slow you are. Or are you not giving it your all? The berserk demon also smiles at his question. Sohan smirks and asks the berserk demon, are you not giving it your all? The berserk demon smiles and counter-questions, asking, do you think so? And saying this, he attacks Sohan but in the meantime, Sohan dodges him successfully and they both have, completely destroyed the carriage. The berserk demon is trying his best to grab Sohan and comes near him but Sohan defends himself efficiently. Finally, while getting closer, he thinks, got him, but Sohan places his sword before him and there's a clash between their powers. A big hole has been created in the ground because of the intensity of the force. Sohan is holding his shoulder while looking at him and the berserk demon is extremely angry at this and is wondering, he's gonna endure it? Let's see how long he can last. And then both of them starts fighting while flying in the air. The berserk demon again uses his palm to attack but this time, Sohan also uses his hand to push him back. After pushing him, Sohan fuses and pretends that his hand is hurt and says to him, you're pretty strong. The berserk demon being stubborn, smiles and says, you rotten bastard. And then moves towards Sohan for the attack and Sohan is wondering that, he's definitely the best of the bunch. He's the strongest out of the four great demons. Sohan looks at him, smiles and says while fighting that, but berserk demon Sunbei, I almost didn't recognize you because your face is so ordinary looking. If I had to earn fame with that kind of face in the Jianghu, I would have also gone crazy. I'm not insulting you or anything. Never mind. It's nothing. The berserk demon is extremely angry and shouts, saying, won't you shut up? Both of them are talking casually while fighting and then again Sohan asks him, but why did it have to be the wild green troop? Was that on purpose? 
It's not like you're some bandit leader, and saying this, Sohan takes out his sword and attacks the berserk demon but he backflips and blocks his attack. Sohan is using different techniques to attack the berserk demon and he's thinking that, where I land, he. The berserk demon was wondering this when Sohan attacks him in segments and he, spins and blocks the attack. Sohan smirks and says to the berserk demon that, are you called the berserk demon because you jump around like a maniac? Sunbei, I've learned from you. Berserk replies to him, Sohan, if you don't cross the line, I'll let you live. No you place, before I rip your mouth open. Sohan replies to him politely while smiling, a berserk demon, you should stop being arrogant just because of your QI. Your threat's not really scary because still have that ordinary face. Hearing this, the berserk demon gets extremely angry and removes that fake cover from his face and then throws it on the ground, saying, enough with your PR, but Sohan interrupts him, saying, your face is very fucked. The berserk demon is extremely angry at his insult and moves towards Sohan, saying, I'll rip you apart. Sohan also heads towards him for the attack and then the berserk demon tries to grab Sohan from his hair, arm and shoulder but all in vain. As a result, there's another clash between their powers and now both of them are standing at a distance from each other. Then Berserk Demon says to Sohan, I told you to shut up, and Sohan being naughty, replies to him with his pink eyes that, I didn't say anything. Are you hearing things now too? Then Sohan greets him, saying, then my apologies. I shouldn't make fun of disabled people. The berserk demon is extremely annoyed at his acting and then taps his forehead with his hand, saying, this is not the way a martial artist should act. Didn't you hear from master? I like passionate aggressive fights. That's why I don't even fight with people who aren't on my level. So, you don't need to. The berserk demon was busy talking when he observes that Sohan is doing something filthy and he's stunned to see his back. Berserk is wondering that, what are you? Are you? Sohan was pissing while standing there and his back was towards the berserk demon. Then Sohan turns around, grabs his pants upward and asks, what did you just say? But the berserk demon is looking at him quietly and then again Sohan asks him, I asked what you said. You should answer my questions, berserk demon Sunbei. The berserk demon is annoyed at non-serious attitude of Sohan and says to him, you're out of your mind, and then Sohan says to him, let's be serious. Then the berserk demon asks, what? Then Sohan replies to him with utter seriousness that, the attitude of a martial artist. Shouldn't we be serious? If you were a proper martial artist, you wouldn't be pretending to be a part of the stupid wild green troop, you would have revealed your identity from the start and asked for a duel. You're not some three-year-old brat. You're old enough to know better, and then Sohan continues, asking, besides, how can the first of the four great demons be this unskilled? Even the random trash bastards I have wouldn't do something as petty as this. Hiding in someone else's force like some rat and provoking fights, you seem to be mistaken that you're committing some great evil because you're a part of the four great demons, but if your brain's functioning still, then think about it. Berserk demon Sunbei, you're a great demon, not some common villain minion, and the berserk demon is listening to him quietly with full concentration. Then Sohan continues, saying, I dominated the Chenyang unorthodox faction and the Chang'an unorthodox faction with just my skills. And what were you doing? Playing around with the wild green troop? Aren't they just a bunch of trash? Where were you? Somewhere to reminisce on your old glories? Or probably provoking fights between some sections? But not the Wudang sect or the Mount Hua sect. Why? Because they're strong. Am I wrong? I assume you would've just killed an opponent then ran off if you were caught in your little scheme and that's how you earned that name. That's the level you're at. What have you been doing with your life? The berserk demon has a cut near his one eyes and replies to the Sohan, you really just say anything that comes to mind. I've never come across someone like you before. I assume you'll just dodge if I were to charge at you anyway. Sohan immediately replies to him, of course. I compared my Qinggong skills and your heavy ass and concluded that we can duel for about 218 days. I still have a lot to tell you, so you can come at me whenever. The berserk demon replies to him boldly, I can just go kill all your subordinates instead, but hearing this, Sohan smiles and replies to him, you said yourself that you don't fight anyone that's not at your level but now you're gonna go kill my subordinates who are below your level? How amazing. Very much so. 
The berserk demon is getting annoyed at his insult but Sohan keeps going and says to him, I guess Chang'an will be the graveyard of the great demons. I killed both the great demoness and the sex demon in Chang'an. If you want to come too, then you're welcome. By the way, I'd be the first to arrive even if we leave at the same time. Have you considered that? No, you haven't. From now on, think before you open that beak of yours. After hearing this, Berserk Demon says, you, but Sohan interrupts him, asking, what? Then the Berserk Demon fuse and then sits on a rock. Then he says to Sohan, never mind, go. I'll just let you go today. Sohan is looking at him quietly so the Berserk Demon continues, saying, why? Do you feel like you're losing something by leaving, but fighting also doesn't get anywhere? After this, Sohan says, see you, and then turns around and the berserk demon is shocked to see him, leaving and is wondering, what? I thought he'd stay longer to insult me. Is he intending to kill the wild green troops forces again? Cruel bastard, he's definitely no ordinary man. Sohan sits on a horse and starts riding it. While leaving, Sohan is thinking that, the berserk demon has no choice but to come to Shanyang. Since he can't ride a horse, I'll be the first to arrive. Sohan reaches Shanyang at night and is now taking bath in a hot spring. There are bruises all over his body and he's relaxing after fighting with the berserk demon. Next morning, Sohan is walking through the street while holding the metallic fan in his hand and wondering, he should be getting here soon. Then Sohan sees the back of a man and he's the berserk demon. He is sitting there, eating noodles and looking at his back, Sohan closes his fan and is wondering that, of course. I'll make you pay for underestimating me. Sohan enters the inn where different people are sitting and eating their meals. While standing at back Sohan says to him, Whoa, berserk demon Sunbei, we meet again. Everyone sitting in the surrounding is shocked to hear the word, berserk demon, and then Sohan sits before him on a chair. One of the men sitting there, asks the other, the berserk demon. While the other asks, did he just say berserk demon? Sohan sits before him, looks at him, smiles and asks innocently that, berserk demon Sunbei. Why are you eating alone like some lonely old man? The berserk demon gets annoyed and asks angrily, what are you trying to do? Sohan replies to him, I just want to eat with you. We're close enough for that. Then Sohan loudly says to the waiter, get me a bowl of noodles and the most expensive drink, and he replies obediently, yes, sir. While eating, the berserk demon laughs and says to Sohan, are you trying to use poison or something? It won't work, Sohan. Hearing this, Sohan smirks and replies to him, Ah, Sunbei. I have standards. I wouldn't play around with shit like that. How can you be so petty as the head of the four great demons? Everyone sitting around is stunned again after hearing this and then everyone gets up and leaves the inn quietly. Both of them are looking into each other's eyes and then the berserk demon continues eating, saying, Crazy ass bastard. Sohan hits on a table with great force and then asks the waiter angrily, what are you doing? Hurry up. Because of the vibration of the table, berserk demon soup spills on his face and looking at him, Sohan says, my bad. Then while cleaning his mouth, the berserk demon says to him, all right, eat up. Let's have a fight after this. Sohan hits with a punch on the table and says, good idea. Let's have a duel like men after eating. The Shanyang Demon League would be great. The place looked spacious and nice. The noodle bowl of the berserk demon is splattered everywhere and he's looking angrily at the Sohan. Then Sohan smiles and says to him, oh, it's splattered everywhere. Do you want another bowl? I'm so sorry. The waiters bring noodles and drink for Sohan and while putting it on the table, says to Sohan, here are the noodles. We only have Baijiu, but Sohan interrupts him, saying, all right. That's the way to go. Sohan starts eating his noodles and while looking at him, the berserk demon is wondering that, I just arrived but he's had a bath and even slept. Could I beat him now? I haven't recovered as much as he has. Sohan pours a drink in his glass and starts drinking it and then put the glass on the table and then says to the berserk demon, stop staring. I'm losing my appetite. The berserk demon gets angry at this and then moves his arm toward Sohan for the attack thinking, this piece of shit. Sunbei reached out his hand and struck the table hardly and broke it. Sohan hit him with chopsticks on hand and said, I'm trying to eat here and you want to pick a fight? Sunbei said angrily, let's go, Sohan asked, where to? 
He replied, you're grave. So Hun stand up and said with stealing smile, let's do it, please lead the way. Sunbei walked out of the restaurant and So Hun followed him. So Hun thought, what that commotion, the news that the berserk demon is in Shanyang should have spread everywhere, I just need to buy time until my subordinates are nearby forces arrive here. He stand in the door and looked Sunbei confusingly because he jumped up. He looked him and followed him and jumped. Sunbei was jumping and thought, Jean Sohun, did you really think I would not know what you are up to? Sohun looked him confusingly. Sunbei thought, I won't let things go the way you want. He looked around to saw the Sohun but didn't saw him, he thought confusingly, where did he go? He continuously jumping on the roofs of the houses and thought, this works better, I'll use this time to rest that I in the house, Sunbei was laying on the bed, he looked very tired. Sunbei thought, I finally sleep a little, I have not slept or rested for two whole days straight because of him. Someone knocked the door, he looked at the angrily and said, who is it? No one answered and again knocked the door. Sunbei asked again, who the hell is it? I asked you, who are you? And put his hand on his head, voice came out of the door, let's have a drink. He heard the voice and thought, that's not Jean Sohan's voice though. Who it be? And asked, tell me who you are first before asking me to have a drink together. Voice came again, it's me, senior. Sunbei thought confusingly, senior? And asked angrily, Jean Sohan, what the hell are you trying to pull? You are now changing your voice to provoke me, Sohan smiled and said, drats, I got catch, you are truly quick-witted, berserk demon. Sunbei takes deep breath and said, quick-witted, my ass, we'll leave the drink for another time, Sohan called his name, berserk demon. He replied, yes. Sohan said again, let's have a drink. Sunbei replied angrily, these damn drinks. Jean Sohan, are you pulling me leg right now? Sohan asked with teasing smile, pulling your leg. My subordinates who have always respected you have come all the way from Chang'an, there's about 100 of them gathered here and they are making a fast to have a drink with you. They insisted on it even though I told them that you did not get to sleep and could be tired, Sunbei listened to him angrily and thought, Jean Sohan subordinates? The Chang'an unorthodox faction? And 100 of them have gathered here? He went to window and opened it and looked out but no one was outside, Sohan said, no one is outside of the building because they are all waiting on the first floor. Sunbei looked at the door. Sohan voice came out of the door, there's one guy named Go Siachuk, he holds his liquor quite well and also has a pretty stubborn personality. He developed the incapable net formation together with me previously to capture these sex demon, Sunbei asked him, so, you're threatening me right now? Using some unorthodox factions good for nothing inescapable net formation, Sohan replied, come on, we don't know that until we try. Just so you know, sex demon was faster than me but she still got catch. They both were looking at the door but Sohan with smile and Sunbei with anger. Sunbei said, alright, let's do it. I will destroy all those subordinates that you are so proud of. He punched on the wall and broke it. He jumped out if the broken wall. He turned angrily and looked in but it was empty. People standing in the street looked him shockly, Sunbei looked around and thought confusingly, what's this? Where are his subordinates? So Hun stand in the broken wall and said, berserk demon, how can you suddenly break the window and wall? Sunbei raised his head and looked him and thought, that punk really is pulling pranks again and said angrily, come down, let's fight, So Hun said with teasing smile, instead of doing that, let's have a drink. Sunbei raised his hand and said angrily, drink by your own fucking self and pulled power. The building cracks, peoples looked this shockly, Sohan came down and said, so hot tempered, I said, let's get a drink instead. All this dust, and waved a hand fan. Sohan asked him, why are you getting so angry? Sunbei was looking him angrily. Sohan asked again, did I say I want to fight? We just happen to be in the same place and keep turning into each other, so I thought we should grab a drink together. Sunbei turned his hand on his head in confusion and said, all right, fine. Let's have that damn drink together. Sohan said with smile, you're truly the best, senior. You finally understand my sincerity. At a restaurant, Sohan and Sunbei was sitting in front of each other in the hall and the hall was empty. Sohan poured wine and said, seriously, 
it's too hard to get a drink with you, Sunbei said, poison won't work on me so don't think of doing anything stupid and drank the wine, Sohan asked angrily, how many times have you just said that already? You're making the wine taste bad. And poured again wine. Sunbei listened him confusingly and drank it again and put the cup on table. Sunbei said angrily, Troop leader Jean, stop torturing me. Sohan looked at him confusingly and asked, Stop torturing you? I don't think I should be hearing those words from you, if you think this is torture, then what are all the heinous acts you've done so far? Sunbei looked him confusingly and takes deep breath and thought, What he's saying is true I guess. Two mans came in the restaurant, one of them said, It seems I was a little faster. Other asked me, Association leader Lim, didn't you depart way earlier than I did? Lim looked him and said, Association leader Go, being able to depart earlier is also a form of competence, Sunbei and Sohan looked at them. They greet them and Lim said, Troop leader, I Lim Hazung of Chenyang, arrived the earliest. Go also said, Troop leader, I was later than him, my apologies, Sohan looked at them and said, You guys did great, take a seat. They replied in one voice, Yes sir, they sat on the other table, Lim said, I told you, my feet's moved faster. Go replied, all right, let's just agree that's the case. Lim asked, come on, just agree that's the case, Sunbei was confused by all this mess. Suddenly, many mans came in the restaurant while talking with each other. One of them said, it seems Chen Yang unorthodox faction is better at mobility arts. Other said angrily, watch your words, there are no Chen Yang and Chen Yang sides. One also said, seriously, you sure talk a lot, your mouth is faster than your feet, they all greet in one form and group leader said, troop leader, apologies for being late. Sohan said with smile, great job coming here. Sunbei looking them confusingly. Again a group came in and greet him, troop leader, we're truly glad to see that you're safe. Sohan looked at them and said, good job everyone. Hall was full of them. Sunbei looked at him and thought, they're all martial masters of the unorthodox faction that I've heard of before, they're all here because of Jean Sohan, a girl came in wearing a heel and veil and having red eyes. She said, Troop leader, you look good. I guess you've been real comfortable. Sohan looked at her and said with smile, sit down. Sunbei looked at her and thought, I don't know who that woman is but she's a martial master, Sohan poured wine and said, Berserk demon, you dare mess with me? Sunbei looked at all the subordinates and said with smile, looks like I fell for it again, let's start now since everyone's gathered, half of your subordinates will be dying in this place, Sohan looked at him and said, please wait a moment, and poured wine again, Sunbei was confused by his actions. Sohan said, since this could be the last bottle of wine for one of us, should we have one last drink? Sunbei looked him angrily and stand up. He picked up a cup from the table and held it in his hand and said with smiley face, you guys have one cup each as well, it might be your last one after all. They all looked him angrily, Sohan pushed his chair and stand up and said, everyone, fill up your cups. They all stand up and raised their cups. Sohan said, berserk demon, bottoms up. Sunbei looked him confusingly and thought, I'm sure that half of the people here will die by my hands. He looked at their eyes and thought, but those eyes, they followed Jean Sohan from the bottom of the heart so far that he remembered Sohan words, what have you done despite having lived such a long life? He thought, I see, I've accomplished nothing so far, Jean Sohan. I'm so envious of you. Sunbei laughed at the situation and said, all of you are true men. I, berserk demon, praise all of you for your bravado, and drank wine, Sohan looked at him confusingly and said, our bravado, will keep going on until we die as a part of the unorthodox faction. He raised his cup and said, for bravado. They all looked at him with smiled and drank wine by saying, for bravado. Sohan and Sunbei broke the cups in their hands. Other subordinates also broke their cups. Sohan and Sunbei was looking at each other. Sunbei went out the restaurant and said, come out. They all came out from the restaurant. 
He was standing in the street while others standing in front of him. Sunbei looked at them and smiled. They were blocking his way. He smiled and said, small fries step aside. They were staring him. So Han said from inside, stand down, this will be a fight with the leaders. They said in one voice, yes, troop leader, and clear the way, Sunbei looking them confusingly and thought, even people like them are listening to Jean Sohan orders? Sohan said, we'll be at a loss if we die, and I didn't just send notification that he's here to only your own people. I think this fight will drag out for a little longer than usual. Lim said, understood. Sohan looked at them with side eye and said, the one who survives will be the villain, I want all of you to become villains. They replied, yes sir, in me voice filled with courage, Sohan came out if the restaurant and they followed him. He stand in front of the sun bay. They looked at each other aggressively and run towards for attack. They were blocking attacks and defending. Sunbei thought, he was dodging that while time and now he want to fight it out with palm strikes? He smiled and thought, I accept your challenge, they were continuously attacking and defending with their skills and powers, it looks like on one want to lose. Sohan subordinates were watching them confusingly, they both pushed each other by using one hand skill. Sohan made many illusion of himself and looked at Sunbei. Sunbei was also looking aggressive and filled with power. They both show their powers, Sohan run to attack him. Sunbei stopped his attack and hold his weapon in one hand and by other stopped his weapon to harm him, they both using their powers and abilities. Suddenly the girl robed in Sunbei neck and pulled him. Both girl and Sohan were using their powers. Sohan jumped up and kicked Sohan, girl also pulled towards him. Sohan fell down back. Sunbei held the robbed in his hand and pulled girl towards him. Sunbei said with smile, you're a disciple of the demoness? Girl saw him shockly. She suddenly used her skill and force to push him back. Sunbei looked this confusingly. Sohan stand up and run to attack him, Sunbei looked him and want to stop high attack but he used a skill and made a very difficult weapon and attacked him. Sunbei fell of, breaking through the roof, Sohan looked at the roof from the ground, his subordinates run towards him. Girl asked worriedly, troop leader, are you alright? He replied, yes, while he took some damage, it'll be a while before he goes down. Don't spread out too much, stick close to each other. They said, yes sir, Sohan said, all those who are confident in mobility arts, follow me, mad jumped. Lim and Go followed him, Sunbei was jumping over the roofs, his hand was bleeding badly, he thought, why am I running away? He remembered their fight and thought, that was a fight that I was enjoying quite a lot, so why did I run? He stopped and looked down. Suddenly he looked something strange, he thought confusingly, what that? The subordinates were standing on the roofs and said, berserk demon, stop right there. He looked at them shockly and thought, the Zhongnan three elders, what are they doing here? He started jumping and running away from them. Some followed him on the horse. One of the shouted, go after him. He looked down at them and thought confusingly, the hub alliance. Even those trash are here. Some people stopped his way and stand in front of him. He stopped and looked at them and thought, fortunately, Jean Sohan is nowhere to be seen and said, Zhongnan three elders, you imbecile trash dare come after him? I'll make the other two one I ended, they looked at him and took the sword from the sheath. One of them said, that won't be easy. Sunbei looked at someone with side eyes and said, Iron Cavalry Squad Captain, long time no see. A man sitting on horse replied, Same here, how did you land yourself in such trouble? I wasn't sure that I'd really encounter you after reading that letter, Sunbei thought confusingly, a letter, this must be Jean Sohan doing. He smiled and said, I have my own situations. He emitting his power and said, Come, they raised their swords and run towards him. Leader looked at them. Sohan was standing on a roof with his subordinates and watching them. Go asked Sohan, should we join them? He replied, no we'll wait and thought, this is what I was aiming for, after all. Sunbei was fighting with them and Sohan was watching them. Lim said, the berserk demon is fighting here, he must know that we're here though, Sohan said, he probably wants to show us. Sunbei was fighting with them and enjoying it. Sohan said, why he's truly capable of. The house were damaged and bodies of soldiers were scattered there. In many dead bodies, Sunbei was standing and many swords were stabbed in his back and he was breathing heavily. Blood was coming out of his body. Bodies were covered with blood. 
Captain was also sitting with the support of his dead horses. Sunbei looked at him and said, Iron Cavalry Squad Captain, you're making a face that tells me you weren't expecting this to happen. Sunbei came near to him and stand that he replied, I never imagined it, how could I know that we'd lose to a single person despite having so many of us? Isn't Jianghu a place where you can never know what the future holds? Sunbei laughed and said with smile, You're right Z that's the kind of place that the Jianghu is. Captain smiled and said, Please kill me. Sunbei said with smile, I'll be the one to choose whether I kill you or not. Captain asked confusingly, What? Sunbei didn't answer and walked, Captain shouted from behind, I said kill me. Sunbei said, You should return to the Hubage Alliance if you survive, you guys will fight the White Heaven Demonic Cult soon, Captain said, Stop right here, I'd you're not going to kill me, then stop right there. I'll kill you, and stand with the help of sword. Sunbei replied, I don't want to, I'm too sleepy, Captain asked, What? And thought, He's sleepy, and shouted looking him from behind, Crazy bastard, are you seriously fucking saying that? I said fight me. I end the night, blood fell in the flowing water and Sunbei was washing his blood. He was sitting on the bank of the canal. He felt someone presence and takes deep breath and said, never in my life have I ever met someone as terrible as you, and fell down, Sohan was standing behind him and called his name, Berserk Demon, if you're weary, you should just sleep. In the night, Sunbei was laying on the ground, he opened his eyes and stand up and looked at the fire. Sohan was burning wood and looked at him. He asked him, are you awake? Sunbei looked at him and questioned him instead of answering, why did you not kill me? Sohan looked at him and said, I'll decide whether to kill you or not. Sunbei remembered that the same words he said to Captain, he takes deep breath and asked, damn it, you were eavesdropping? Sohan smiled after listening his questions. Sunbei looked at him and thought, that just means he's had plenty of chances to kill me, and asked him, why didn't you help orthodox fashion? Sohan said holding the wood in his hand, because their alliance is hostile towards me, Hubi is in a bad state. Zhongnan lost three of their elders and the Zhuga clan's patriarch died. The subsidiary families of the Zhuga clan will soon fight over who will be the successor, Sunbei asked him, is the Wudang sect and Mount Hua sect the only ones left then? Sohan looked at him and replied, the Wudang sect won't clash with me, Sunbei asked, why not? He replied, I already met with the sword immortal, Sunbei asked again, how did you survive even though you met him? He's really powerful though. Sohan replied, it's not like I am one of the four great demons, Sunbei asked again, you're worse than us, aren't you? Sohan replied angrily, what did I do? I killed the sex demon and the great demoness. Sunbei looked him confusingly. He said again, I only killed those who deserve to die, the Wudang sect has done what I have done for as long as it can be remembered. While not all of the Wudang sect thinks the same way, the Sword Immortal does not differentiate between unorthodox faction, definition orthodox faction and the demonic faction. He only differentiates between those that should be killed and those that should not, if you were also someone that kills women and children, then I did have killed you already. Yet you did compare me to you lot. Sunbei looked at him and thought, he seriously has no manners, and said, that leaves just the Mount Hua sect then. Sohan said, well, I'll only know after I meet them. Sunbei said, all right, I'll ask again, why did you spare my life? Sohan said angrily, shut up, just make sure to answer my questions properly, understand your situation. Sunbei also replied angrily, do you think I'm afraid of death? If you are confident in your abilities, then let's have a go at it right now. I am confident that I can cut off at least one arm of yours, Sohan said, try it. Sunbei asked shockly, what? Sohan said, I said, try it. Sunbei started gathering his internal energy but can't, he thought worriedly, I can't gather my internal energy, Sohan stand up and said, berserk demon, get the grip off yourself. I will tell you what would happen if I really wanted to kill you. I did strip you naked and throw you in front of the doorsteps of an orthodox sect. Not in all places like the Mount Hua sect or the Wudang sect. Maybe some third-rate unknown sect or Hao clan. Or maybe just a martial academy. They did probably become pretty famous for killing the berserk demon, what do you think of that? Sunbei thought angrily, vicious bastard. Sohan came near to him and said again, if you don't want that to happen then take your own life here, I will spare the rumor that the berserk demon took his own life because he was scared of Jean Sohan after you die. It's the truth after all. 
Sunbei replied, it's not, Sohan smiled and said, even if it's and, it will become the truth because that's how just the world is like. Why are you acting like this despite knowing that fact? Sunbei flinched his fists and thought, how does he know what I hate the most? Is this how I lose? No, I have already lost. And asked, what's your question then? Sohan said, the White Heaven Demon Cult. Sunbei replied, the White Heaven Demonic Cult is formed by the flowers who worship Theon who was once known as the Absolute Ruler. They are people who trust in the cult leader who imitate the Absolute Rulers who ways of becoming stronger. The cult leader is probably the eighth generation now. If they choose to reappear in the Jianghu, then that means they have learned from their lessons from the past, Sohan asked, are they strong? Sunbei replied, how would I know? Sohan asked again, so, what will you do if a war with the white demonic cult breaks out? Simply observe? Sunbei replied, how would I know? Sohan said, stand in the vanguard. Sunbei asked angrily, what kind of bullshit is that? Sohan replied, if the White Heaven Demonic Cult, the South Yangtze River Forces or the Jianghu's strongest ten martial masters fight, I want you to be the vanguard leader, Sunbei asked, why would I do that? Sohan replied, I'm preparing a place to die for you. Sunbei said rudely, I'll find my own grave. Sohan looked him by side eye and asked, are you in any position of choose? Throw away, the identity of berserk demon here, I'll help you. Sunbei asked angrily, what do you mean by that? Sohan replied, I will use my subordinate to spread the rumors that Berserk Demon is dead. Human face masks are pretty useful, I have been able to hide my face from even my subordinates with it. The world known me as the leader of the Chenyang and Chenyang unorthodox faction. They also know me pretty well by now, they know my temperament, personality, cruel tendencies and how convening I am. However, for someone on the level of the Berserk Demon to be hidden within my forces, is something no one would be able to guess. So, what do you say? Would not it be fun to deceive the world with me, Sunbei looked him confusingly. He said again, I am someone who makes enemies everywhere in the world. It's also because I am a part of the unorthodox faction. So, if you stay beside me, you will be able to meet all sorts of martial masters in Jianghu, you will be able to fight them to your heart's content. If you keep fighting them, would not you die one day? Just as the berserk demon should die, Sunbei looked at him and said, you sure are going a long way to ask me to become your subordinate. Sohan looked at him. He went near him and shouted, just die here then. Sunbei looked him confusingly, Sohan said, no, no, it wouldn't be any fun to kill you, it'd definitely be more fun for both of us if you do what I said though. Sunbei looked at him and thought, he's seriously a complete psychopath. They both staring at each other, Sunbei out his hand on his head and asked, what about the antidote? Sohan smiled and replied, I will give you it when the time is right and I am not interested in what your real name is. Since your newfound life is thanks to me, I will decide your name too, you'll be called I.L. Seng, Sunbei asked angrily, what kind of a lousy name is that? Sohan replied Z it means, don't let this life go to waste. In the night, at a inn, a man asked another man angrily, do you think working in an inn is a joke? Man looked at him and didn't answer. Man with red hair shouted, why aren't you answering? Are you mute? He put the glass on table and fold his sleeves and said, this won't do, I might have been beaten up by association leader go a few times. Heavens above and below was written on his arm, the other man said, heaven above and below? Red hair man said, you're finally speaking and that's all you have to say, you must have a death wish, what about heavens above and below? Other man asked, are you saying you're above all? Red hair man said, what kind of stupid answer is that? Just clean the table, even when demoted, hierarchies still exist, other man asked again did you get demoted? Red hair man looked him angrily and made punch to hit him and said, what? How dare you speak casually to me? Other man didn't sacred by his action and looked him continuously. Red hair man said, seriously, I'm holding myself back because I might die if I create trouble here as well, and thought, but he hasn't blinked a single time during our whole conversation. Red hair man said, count yourself lucky, what's your name, other man replied, Illinois Seng, it seems I'm I.L. Seng. Red hair man asked angrily, it seems? Are you talking about someone else's name? You looking so fucking normal, yet you're trying to act big. I.L. Seng exhales breath and asked, what's your name? 
Red Hair Man asked angrily, what? And stared him. Seng was also staring him. He got nervous and replied, I'm Gu Sa. I'm someone who was received from troop leader Jean personally. It was originally just Gu Sa but after going through many near-death experiences, it means near death. Wait, if I combine your name with mine, it did mean escaping by a close shave, I get it now. He point finger towards him and said again, Troop leader Jean must have almost killed you, in any case, that means you're pretty strong and that means, and put his finger down on the table. Gu Sa was full of sweat and said, why is this so hard to clean off? Il Seng looked at him and thought, he's so talkative, he's someone who should have died multiple times already for that loud mouth of his, but he's done really well to survive up until now. Wait, escaping by a closed shave? Jean Sohan that bastard, did he put me here with him on purpose? What use is there in getting angry now? And asked Gu Sa, do you have any liquor? I need drink. Gu Sa was cleaning the table, looked at him and said, seriously, just because I'm being nice to you. Il Sang stared him. He changed his tune and said, your question is totally nonsensical. Of course, there's liquor. Why would an not have any? Gu Sa ran to fetch the wine, Gu Sa and Il Sang were sitting in front of each other. Gu Sa said, so I stopped in the sex demon's way and said this, hey bastard, you are the enemy of the grandma next door, he stopped right away at what I said. Though, he only stopped for a moment, after that he continued to run away. And so, I drove the final nail in. That grandma, she turned 80 years old 10 years ago and then these sex demons slowly turned around and looked at me with the death stare. That's when I realized it, I have gotten the sex demon to stop. I, Gu Sa, completed the finishing touch of our inescapable net trap that Il Sang was drinking wine and listening him. After listening his last words, Illinois Sang was started laughing loudly. Gu Sa looked at him and said with smile, I guess even you find the 80 years old grandma's part funny, that's when people would always burst out laughing that Il Sang fell down from chair and held his stomach and started laughing loudly. Gu Sa looked him confusingly and asked are you okay? Il Sang thought, do you sex demon? He was so obsessed with beautiful ladies but to fall at the moment of an 80-year-old grandma next door, what a pathetic end. Gu Sa looked at him and thought he's definitely not right in his mind, I knew he had strange eyes. Someone opened the door and came in, he looked at the Il Sang and said, I'm here to pass down a message from troop leader Jean, come if you enjoy hot springs. Il Sang looked at him. Gu Sa also looked at him and asked with smile, hot springs? He looked at Gu Sa and said, not you. I in the house, So Hun was sitting in the water bath, Illinois Seng stepped in the bath. So Hun looked at him and asked, how are your wounds? He replied, they healed a while back. So Hun said, what a sturdy body you have, they both sitting in the water with the support of rocks. Il Seng said, you sure have big balls? So Hun asked confusingly, what, Il Seng looked at him and asked, did you really feed me poison? My internal energy is recovering quickly. So Hun replied, you're so straightforward. You could have hidden the fact that you knew though. Il Sang said, answer my question. So Hun replied, let's just say I didn't poison you and as you can see, I'm alone here. I don't have any weapons either, would you like to fight me? Il Sang smiled and said, troop leader Jean, do you really not fear me? He replied, no, that's what I want to ask after landing yourself in that state because of me, do you not fear me? They both stared each other. Il Sang asked, so, that's how our conversation ends? He replied, yes, neither of us fares the other, that's the kind of man we were born as. Il Sang smiled and said, I see. Il Sang asked So Hun, troop leader Jean, why did you send me to that kind of place? So Hun looked at him and asked confusingly, that kind of place? He replied, to that and where's that Gu Sa guy is at, he looks like he did just from one of my punches, he keeps talking incessantly, and he tried to poke my eyes. I am thinking he must be crazy. In any case, he looked at me and said I look fucking ordinary and even talked casually to me, why did you send me to that place? So Hun said, that place is the most relaxed one and its location is pretty remote as well. Il Sang asked, what about this then? If you combine my name and his name, it didn't mean escaping by a close shave. Are you making fun of me? He replied, what would I get out of doing that? Since we are talking about Gu Sa, what do you think of him? Il Sang, he looks really weak, 
so I doubt he's being used to monitor me, seeing as how he runs his mouth off, I get why he got demoted. Sohan said, he's a very practical unorthodox martial artist. Ayel Seng looked at him and asked, a very practical unorthodox martial artist? Sohan replied, exactly, he acts meeks towards the strong. He only learned martial arts just enough to survive. Not only does he have a loud mouth, he'd talk a whole lot of nonsense if he gets scared. Ayel Seng asked, is that what a very practical unorthodox martial artist is like? He replied, even though he knows he's talking nonsense already, he still came to report to me on things like supporting the disciple of the sex demon. Ayel Seng said, he was boasting about getting a reward, so that's what it was for? Sohan said, that's not the full reason why I rewarded him, when he developed the inescapable net trap to catch the sex demon, I gave him a mission. To throw a short spare to change sex demon's route towards Chongmi Lake and then run away to a safe place to hide. But, in order to spur on his comrades, he kept going after the sex demon anyways. He even said all sorts of ridiculous nonsense to him. And in the end, he got the attention of the sex demon and bought me enough time, thanks to him, I was able to arrive on time. Il Sang said with smile, looks like he wasn't bluffing. So Hun said, at that moment, even Gu Sa was a part of the unorthodox faction. I cannot forget the expressions of the Chang'an unorthodox faction when I killed the sex demon. It was not just me trying to kill him, the whole Chang'an unorthodox faction had wanted to kill him. Even by their standards, the sex demon was someone who had to be killed no matter what, the level of one's martial arts did not matter in that decision to kill him. They were the unorthodox faction that I had imagined. Il Seng looked him confusingly and asked, are you saying that's the difference between you guys and me? He replied, you can interrupt it as you please, it seems you have understood it roughly. So, what I'm going to say now is the actual topic. Il Seng looked at him. So Hun said, another unorthodox martial artist has said he wants to meet with me. Il Seng asked, another unorthodox martial artist? He replied, I wanted to unite the Shangxi orthodox faction as well originally but they said they could not do so as they are busy dealing with the orthodox factions. These are guys who did not respond to my summons but want to meet with me. Il Seng asked, the Hanzhong unorthodox faction? So Hun replied, indeed, they are probably trying to show that they are the strongest Shangxi unorthodox faction. Asking for a meeting is just for formalities, it's so obvious what an orthodox faction would do, and they have limited people for the meeting to just ten people. Il Sang said with smile, ten people. I would not be surprised if the whole has the Hanzhong faction appears at the meeting location. Just as you said, the things that unorthodox trash do is utterly predictable. Traps, poisons, hidden weapons, I am sure they will be planning quite a few of those to use at the meeting location. But they are so pathetic, did they think you would not be expecting that? So Hun said, no, they probably think that I've caught on to those plans. Il Seng asked confusingly, what? So Hun said, they probably think I'll appear thinking that the meeting is a trap. Il Seng smiled and said, interesting. So Hun said, What's really interesting is they will be bringing more than ten people. Il Seng looked at him shockly and said, Don't tell me. Sohan looked at him and said, Let's go, just the two of us. We'll go by ourselves to the meeting with the Hanzhong unorthodox faction. Il Seng looked at him and thought, What is this lunatic talking about? And said, Look, troop leader Jean, instead of just the two of us going, wouldn't it be safer for you to go there alone? since I could reveal who I really am and kill you? So Hun looked at him confusingly and said, okay, we'll be going there together the. Il Seng looked at him and thought, this arrogant bastard, and asked, what do you intend to do to them after the meeting? He replied, if they are trash like the wild green troop, then they will be died by my hands. However, there if they are similar to my image of an unorthodox faction, then I will take them in. Il Seng asked confusingly, take them in? Is there really a need to do that? They are probably be only a handful of decent ones their door. He replied, I don't care about the level of my subordinate martial arts, there are people like Gu Sa and also people like Go Siajuk. There are people who improve and people who stopped improving, but someday when I stand up, whether it's in Chenyang, Chang'an or Hanzhong, there will be an unorthodox faction that will hold their swords with me, who cares if he's just a waiter or someone who works at a hot spring. Il Seng looked him confusingly. He said again, 
Berserk Demon, don't look at the world with the eyes of the Berserk Demon, you've already failed once. But I am not saying that you should become a part of the unorthodox or become my subordinate. Become a man that befits the meaning Al Sang and look at the world in the eyes of that man. Al Sang asked confusingly, become a man that befits the meaning Al Sang and look at the word in the eyes of that man? So Hun replied, exactly. Look at who are true men among the Hanzhong unorthodox faction, if there are any schemes, destroy it. If there's anyone that deserves to kill, kill them. And if you feel like it's no longer fun anymore and you wish to live as berserk demon again, you can live at that time. Il Seng looked at him and asked, you'll allow me to leave just like that? So Hun smiled and asked, is there anyone capable of holding you here? Il Seng inhales deeply and said, you're such a strange person. He replied, I'm aware. Il Seng stand up and looked at him and said, call me when you're ready to head for the meeting.